What's up? Hang on. There you go. There you go. <sighs> Got some new weed. Um, I haven't smoked in a couple of weeks, actually. Um, While well, I have been, um, while well, I have been under the influence for the last few BMNs, um, I haven't been high on weed. Um, so, new weed. Um, yeah, but I'm tired. My voice is rough. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and Cricks, uh, if you want to play that game, you have to get here before stream starts. Um, I'll, I'll give you the, the uh, elite tr gamer tricks. Um, you got to be here before stream starts. Yeah, so you just got to remember the schedule and get here at like 520, 515, sometimes even before that. But yeah, that'll get you there. Vivo is here at 516. Oh, I, f I wouldn't know, Sailor. Uh, Connor's Comfort. Correct. Connor's Comfort. Um. Um. Yeah, so apparently they're doing the fucking hippy dippy bullshit. Oh. I took one look at that screenshot that uh, Cupcake posted, um, and I realized like immediately why I can't do a panel. There were nine people on that screen. I need to be the center of attention. Um, sincerely, that I it was. Um, I, I was like, I can't get a word in over eight other people, right? Like that's that's too many people to have a conversation. You ever try like sit at a party, um, and the first comment was twenty four minutes ago, cricks. Yeah, it's too many cooks. Um, yeah, like you ever try to sit at a party and like the living room is full of people and like everybody's trying to talk. In the same conversation, you're like, I'm just gonna go to the kitchen and fucking talk to Bill. Right? Like, that's what that's like. I can't. It's not a conversation and it's not a proper debate. Dude, a debate, a debate team has like three people at most on it. I've seen four, but holy shit, does that not work? Um, ideally, one to two. So you can't tell me there's like nine independent debaters in that? Like, <laughs> The whole fucking concept is bunk. Fucking. Uh, do you know any other bundles of panties that aren't lace? Love these, but something a little softer and stretchier would be nice. Um, not off the top of my head, but we can find something, Karina. We can find something. Um, they mute people? Of course. Of course they do. They'd have to. They'd have to. It's functionally untenable. You'd have to mute people in that format. Um... That's how it goes having a large family, but always delves into chaos pretty fast. And that's not even talking politics. Hey, weather. You basically come to the, the Proudly Radical page. You go to the chat section, even before stream starts. And you can put comments and cricks. Um, Zippy. Thank you. So somebody knows my pain. Right? Like... <sighs> All of you as siblings don't understand the the burden that only children must bear. Do you have any idea what it's like to not for the world to not understand that you are the center of it? Right? 
this, this, this just, all of these people, these entire systems don't understand that I am the center of their world. And they refuse to acknowledge that. Do you know how much of a burden that is to bear for every only child in the world? Right? Um, it's the truth, though. It's the truth. That's how we feel. It's how all L only children feel. Like, we come up in this world, we're like, wait, we're not the center of this world? Mm, disagree. Um... <laughs> Yeah, hard disagree. <laughs> there you go, Crix. Um, yeah. But, you know, like I said, Vivo was here 14 minutes before stream started. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm not God? Hmm. Press X to doubt on that. Um... Maybe a little less only children running the world would be would be better. No, you just need more of us. There's too many siblings out there. You need, you need less of you people and more of us people. I don't know how that would fix stuff, but I feel like it would. And my feelings are the only feelings that matter in this formula. So, yeah. Um... I didn't devour my twin in utero to come into the world and share anything. Exactly. Um, it's weird being an only child. It really is. Um, it, it sort of fucks up your social expectations, for sure. Oh, jeez. I mean, wait, I mean, tagged multiple places. Um, yeah, Joe, I got no problem doing that. Um, oh, I may have that fucking cuckoo nut person on the air tonight. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the, the stream grows into. Um, I have this weird feeling. Dude, last night was low count. I have this feeling tonight's going to be low count. And that always makes me nervous. Um, hey, cat. Oh, just getting started. We are just talking about how um, the world um, doesn't conform to the only child standard of you all revolve around me. Uh, we were actually talking about uh, Dylan Burns' panel format and how there's nine people, and if you've ever been in a room, like in a living room in a party, and nine people are trying to have a conversation with each other, and you're like, I'm just going to go to the kitchen and talk to Bill because this is fucking, this just doesn't work. And <laughs> I, I lamented the fact that as an only child, the world doesn't uh, understand that they revolve around me, and it really, it really is problematic for the only children of the world. Um, but yeah. Um, a dude would be entertaining to have on air just saying I've seen his dreams me toad what's his what is he about I don't I've never checked him out I haven't done my homework um yeah what, what what's what's his my face when the ego doesn't control everything I know right um cat did you see the new sterner emote on the discord server there's a sterner emote on the discord server that I guarantee you'll love Yeah. I was like, fuck yeah. I'm like, if I'm going to do a Sterner emote, I'm doing a fucking ketamine molecule for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, Kaiser, it's a 3D model of the ke uh, ketamine molecule. Just colon, Sterner, colon will get you it automatically, or you can pull up the, the list, but yeah. Dude, that meme is too, it is. It's too fucking good. It may be the best anarchist meme. It may be the best anarchist meme. Like, straight up. Fucking Sterner just hitting you with a fish, yelling, yelling, I'm on ketamine, bitch! And then running off. It doesn't matter what the other two panels are. Like, that, that, that actually may be the funniest anarchist meme. Straight up. Um...
spiritual and cap voluntarist, possibly a flat earther as well. Wait, spiritual and cap voluntarist, possibly a fat earther is a flat earther as well. Oh, I don't know if I have the fucking energy for that shit. Me toad. Seriously? And this motherfucker wants on my air? I don't know. I might need to have Cat on the air to fucking pull some of the slack on that. Um, honestly, Cat, I think probably fucking, um, honestly, Cupcake was watching it. Um, we'll have to ask Cupcake. Um, but I have a feeling that, um, out of those names, um, Scott's not going to be talking much. Yeah. He's, he's small boy in, in big, big boy pool in that, in that name list. Um, I'm here, but now, but occupied. Give us, get just, hey, um, Cupcake, just give us an update with the fucking hippy dippy bullshit. If you're still watching it, like in the background, give us an update when you have time. No, no fucking rush. Um, Autumn is your favorite season. Oh, it depends where in the world I am during what time of the year I am there as to what season is my favorite season. Um, summer in Vermont is a glorious thing. Uh, the autumnal colors as well uh, in New England are second to none. Um, but January in the desert is a is a thing to behold as well when it's 78 and 82 degrees and i'm sunbathing and everybody else is covered in inches and feet of snow january in in the southwest is pretty amazing too <laughs> yeah zip is zip, it um fucking scott's on hippy dippy because scott's a fucking attention whore like he won't turn anything down He's, he's straight up. He won't turn anything down. Um, despite the fact that you couldn't get me to do a nine-person panel if you fucking put a gun to my head, I don't think. Um... Yeah, oh yeah, Excel. Dude, Haz is on there right now. Xander Hall's on there, Haz is on there, fucking, they got an ANCAP on there for fuck's sake even. Dude, they've got a fucking tanky, fucking an ANCAP, and Xander Hall. Like, I'm just saying, like, holy fuck, man. Could you have more annoying p uh, ideologies on your fucking panel at once? Like, all we need is a neoliberal who works for, uh, for works for the military industrial complex. We could round out this cursed fucking panel. Oh, Dippy, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> I didn't, I, I fucking, I had forgotten about that entire, that person entirely. Xander Hall is Xander Hall. And that cop that heals a lot. I stopped watching when I tuned into this stream. From the parts that I caught, it was a civil discussion about deplatforming and censorship and stuff. Infrared wasn't losing his shit, but trying to sound smart. And Scott got some points in, but it was pretty much evenly divided amongst the panelists, as far as I could tell. Thank you. Thank you, Cupcake. Doing, doing, doing the dirty work that none of us want to do. Um, it is cat. It is. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
<laughs> the channel is Dylan Burns TV. The purpose is clicks and money. The purpose is, is the purpose is money and clicks. I would get your order of operations correct there, Axel. The purpose is money. <laughs> All those motherfuckers, dude. That panel is grifters. That panel is grifters right now, like for real. Like that channel and that panel right now. Cat, I think he might hold it together. Yeah, I, the screenshot was something else when you were in there, though. Um, but yeah. You can be smart and be a grifter as well, Axel. It's, it's usually... It, they're usually one in the same. Um, it usually takes some intelligence to be a grifter. Yeah. Uh, good bit of sociopathy, good bit of psychopathy, good bit of intelligence, which usually goes along with the sociopathy, sociopathy and psychopathy. Make a good grifter. Hey, Eloy. Um... Douche, yes. I'll, I'll, gi I'll give. I'll give that. I'll give that. Yeah, not the same level of douche, but definitely um, equal or greater level of grift. Um, hide your pile levels, kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, Karina, for sure. Oh. Okay, ref. Um, Viva, I have no idea what the plan for today is. I may actually let a crazy person on my air, apparently. Um. No, that's, 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 hey, Jara. Um, Crix, that's, that's a fair, that's a fair assessment. Straight up. Um, from what little I know of Dylan Burns TV, it never gets anywhere or really accomplishes anything positive. Am I wrong? No. No, you're correct. That's basically Dylan Burns TV. Um, I don't feel he's crazy, but he has a lot of bad takes. Oh, uh, I mean, from what you typed in as a description, me Toad, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with crazy. Oh. I mean, you have to be at least, um, you have to be working at some level of functional deficit to be an ANCAP. Sorry, Scott. It's the truth. Um, yeah, no, Jar, I, I feel you. Um, sometime next year, I'm probably going to take a week off. Um, This, this Exel, I can agree with. This I can, this I can work with Exel, for sure. Yeah. We'll see what, uh, We'll see what Scott does with his channel when he fucking, like, if he finishes early, if he raids out to us or some shit like that. We'll see. Scott apparently fell asleep in his chair last night reading Bellamare. This is, oh, okay. So who wants to join, Cat? you got a minute? Who wants to join me for this back and forth? Because this is fucking, this is kind of goofy. And I want to bounce this off somebody. Um, but anybody else is, I, I just yell at Cat because I know I can yell at Cat to do it. Um, but like if anybody else wanted to join me, feel free. Oh, um, I think that functional deficits the desire to get rich in the future. I mean, it's, I don't think of, uh, yeah, 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 
So there you go. It's my thoughts on that one, Craigs. Um, I, I think I uh, I think I summed it up fairly nicely. Um, had to debate a bunch of twelve year olds an hour ago. Oh, Jara, fucking. Hmm. Um, it's cooling off enough for me to turn off my fan on the head, but I still haven't checked my audio quality. Lacking proper microphone. That's okay. Um. Alright. You can't oh yell at me. You're not my dad. Uh, Viva, are you sure? <laughs> um, if a coworker didn't just clock in super late and th uh, when I thought they weren't coming in, I'd say yes. Hey, Karina, it is what it is. So Scott fell asleep in his chair last night reading Bill and Mare. And um, mm. I, I, did a, um, I did a reading of the preface from the Anarcho Anarchist Structural Manifesto last night. Um, and fucking also talked about the uh, techno capitalist feudalism, uh, which fucking Delamere basically just says, you know what? I think I'm done. I'm just gonna fucking burn the bridges, um, and says a bunch of Why shit. Why not? You know? And fucking Scott sends me a goddamn message last night uh, before he fell asleep in his chair reading Delamere, saying, "I'm 20 pages into the techno capitalist feudalism, and I think I agree with him." I'm like, "You do realize he hates you, right?" <laughs> Like, you realize he hates everything about you, right? Like, literally, he outlines that there is no way to keep capitalism, the capitalist logic in check, and the only way to deal with it is to destroy it. I think Scott's just confused. Like, like literally outright says that in the Structuralist anim uh, uh, Anarchist uh, Structural Anarchist Manifesto, that there is no way to reform or rectify the capitalist logic, and the only route forward is to destroy it. <laughs> like it's like he hates you he hates everything about you the fact that you can't get a, 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 a anarchist lens of analysis applied to capitalism means he would scream at you in his classroom probably like this this is fundamental to his to his uh, uh, his analysis is that capitalism is poison and if you allow an amount in then it will take over there is no way about that because it is it utilizes fundamental mechanisms of the human psyche that it's taking advantage of that that human nature and as such it will encroach and so like and he's like dude i fucking i think i agree with this guy i'm 20 pages in and he fucking sends me a message this afternoon saying i fell asleep in my chair reading bella mayor last night i was so into it Squee. Nice. Thank you for okay, the, thank you for the follow. To be fair. One fucking one year, yeah, Squee. To be fair, cat. To be fair. I haven't read Bellamare, so I'm missing a fuckload of context here, so you know. Um well, I mean Kai basically just explained it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, still still nice to have the source material on hand though. Well, True. it's it's all in the library. <laughs> yeah. I'm just lazy. Um, but techno capitalist feudalism is like that fucking thick. Um uh, about Fabian Liberty, Master Mustard Pot. Um, Depot. Deep. Ah, uh, well, eh. yeah, Depot. Um, I mean, I haven't read Bellamare's te uh, Technocracy book, but um, I've consumed a lot of other books and media and information about our world and contemporary life to know about that technocracy like i'm gonna read that book but i kind of already know what it's talking about it um let's see the use of force is to be precise, structural, and directed at the systems of capitalism, namely the capitalist modes of production, cons consumption, and distribution. Demolition is a must before reconstruction can begin. Be but, clear. But can't, yeah, right? Like, it, it's not like he's mincing words. He's, he's very clear in his opinion about capitalism. And it's like, yeah, no. Well, can we have just a little capitalism? No, motherfucker. You can't have a little capitalism. <laughs> None. None whatsoever. Yeah, he's very explicit. And in techno-capitalist feudalism, he's even more explicit. Like, <clears throat> shit that violates TOS explicit. Yeah. 
Yeah, you skipped that one part. I did. I When I was reading from Structuralist An Anarchist Manifesto's preface last night, I was like, I'm just going to skip this paragraph. Just, yeah. you, you know. <laughs> because... Well. Um, yeah, it's like, how do you agree with him, Scott? <laughs> he hates you. <laughs> I, I said, like, I'm, I'm tempted because I'm, I'm one of the people that can, like, he, he accepted me on his fucking, uh, on his Twitter. Like, he, he okayed me wow. so I can DM him. Well, and maybe, maybe now is not the time to ridicule. I was, I was He's like, coming around. I was literally tempted to fucking send Bella Mara fucking <laughs> DM on Twitter and say, and caps are reading you and they like you. <laughs> you know that might that might be like the worst case scenario because i might be reading it and thinking you know what he's right but i like it like i, I like how technocratically uh all consuming capitalism can become given the um, right amount of time going full ad mac um cricks thank you for the thank you for the bezos bucks thank you for the daddy bezos money uh, i fucking love you and so glad i've met you in this community heart twitch unity love emote something like that nice. um yeah um yeah i was i was sincerely tempted to send bellamare a fucking dm and be like heads up <laughs> and caps have discovered you <laughs> well you know maybe maybe he's coming around um i doubt it yeah i doubt it too He's a straight-up yeah. poppy, and so it's like, he's like all in. I I think that probably more than anything else. You know, um, never lose hope. Fucking, if anything, like, yeah, like, he's... he's oh, God. <laughs> shout-out, uh, Scott gave you a shout-out on the panel, so you know how to thank or blame him for potential traffic coming away. No, uh, we, we had planned on that. Fucking, uh, Laquitas, thank you f for the follow. Um, Scott had asked me about it, and I told him, do it. Like straight up do it, um, Angie. What was the shout out? What was the format? Um, because the no, we got a shit on him. The ag the agreed upon format was that uh, if you have questions um, about anarchism, then contact Kai over at Proudly Radical. He's the, the expert sort of territory. Um, I can say let's go Argentina. And I mean, did you not think that? Did you were you being uh, were you being racist in your assumptions that the white boy wouldn't know what putas means? It, you know, to be fair, there are just some like patriotic phrases in Latin American countries where you just kind of insult the country. Like, uh, like for example, with like Mexico, like real common thing to say is "Viva México, cabrones!" It's just that sort of dumb bullshit. Say viva, viva la Mexico, cabron. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And besides, um, I'm I'm just very pale Hispanic. Um, <laughs> um totally a thing. I swear. Um, See, the funny thing is that as we joke, you probably do have a little bit flown around in there somewhere. Somewhere, a little bit of everything. Um, but, you know, I'm sure the Spaniards got, got around to, you know, my, uh, That's what my whore ancestors got around to fucking the Spaniard here and there. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, chinga tu, tu madre. Um, yeah. it was along the lines of, I had this conversation with Proudly Radical whether the right versus the left's ability to debate, loosely quoted, but another point is referencing. Yeah. Uh, left can't de uh, the uh, the left can't argue the right can't debate. So is that Chad not coming? Oh, I haven't actually let him. Like we're not going to gang up on him, but like you know, I haven't given him the okay yet. Oh right, gotcha. Well, I I wouldn't. It's not tonight. I'm not sober. Feel it. Um. Oh no! Is now I'm going to have to read about feudalism. Chinga tu madre. Is that a national saying? I mean, it is. Kinda. I tried to decolonize my genes, but I don't have access to CRISPR. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Sin City, more like Transgression Town. Uh, my fucking ancestors got around, man. My, uh, well, at least my maternal side. My maternal uh, ancestors had a good time. My paternal side were boring fucking Germans. Um, Amazing. <laughs> 
but my uh, my maternal side was like, you know, fucking look at this amazing new land with all of these exciting new penises in them. Let's fuck. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So they got around a bit. Right, uh, right can't think, left can't meme. Eh. The left's getting better about memeing these days. Yeah. It's not quite the yeah. same, but... They're getting better. Um, you're a chair! Hey, Adam. Um, yeah, Caboose, have you seen right-wing memes? I, that's, that's That was my hesitancy. It wasn't that the left is bad at it. it, was that I don't think the right's that good at it. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of it's just like super lazy comedy. Insert slur here. Insert like violent thing that happens, but pretend to don't care. It's like ninety percent of right wing memes. It's just you know, how can I be like a sociopath, but like justify it by like having a slightly funny tone while saying it? The right has two memes and just tells them over and over again. Yeah, it, yeah. It, Adam, attack helicopter. That's one right. of the memes. Or like, yeah, or just insert any like play on a slur here. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the right's good at memeing. Um, but per Scott and I's conversation, it is, it, 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 the, the left cannot argue. Um, they can debate their asses off. Do not get me wrong. In structured formats, in proper debate, the left can fucking own. They can own. They can wipe the. Wins. They can wipe the fucking floor with right wingers, like ten times out of ten. But that's a structured academic style debate. When it comes to performative argument online, they're useless. The right wipes the floor with them every time. It, it's it's ridiculous to see somebody right. like fucking Lauren Southern, who is dumb as dumb can be, absolutely <laughs> mop the floor with people because they don't understand that it's not debate. That it is actually an argument. It's a fucking street brawl. Right. And or on the you... other end of the spectrum, a lot of people just... There's a lot of lefties that think that they, since they have like academic knowledge, they can kind of just make shit up on the fly and just not have to argue in any sort of like good faith. So that's the other problem that we run into. It's either A, they're too over in like a academic academia or they're too under spec and like actually being able to like perform in front of a crowd uh is that a they go low we go high kind of thing that causes that wait a second <sighs> yes actually while, not ironically well yeah. i have yet i'm gonna drop off because my discord's acting up okay god damn man yeah, yeah is this shit again like i can hear you then i can't for like 30 seconds and you're back it's yeah gotcha all right man um I know one controversial individual who breaks the mold. Um, Wait, who? Who cave? Um, that's why I only do debates on the edge of a ditch, said Adam. God damn, man. Um, I wish you were watching this debate and doing live commentary so I didn't have to use all these monitors. Uh, Angie, uh, uh, Vosh said cave. Vosh is a rhetorician. He is also a sociologist, though. Is he really? Yeah, he has a, he has a degree in sociology. Um, I was um one of my favorite uh, game streamers is a geologist. <laughs> what the fuck? Straight up, uh, sp <laughs> shout out to Splattercat Gaming. Uh, Splatty nice. Splatty is the master of the band. Um, his banter is second to none. Honestly, he's the fucking master of the banter. Um, and yeah, he's a trained geologist. <laughs> That's a good meme. Yeah. Yeah, so when he goes off on like some crafting games and shit, like he'll he'll like all of a sudden like just take a fucking right turn and start like you're like holy shit, man! Like he's he's actually discuss like yeah, oh yeah, he gets into it and he's like actually they've ordered this incorrectly. What it would be is you know it's like oh damn. <laughs> I bet you Minecraft just makes him want to blow his fucking brains out. Yeah, it's it's funny to fucking hear him when he gets into geologist mode. Uh. Uh, That's me with, like, fighting in any game. I just, like, part of me is just, like, silently dying inside whenever there's any hand-to-hand -hand combat in any game. But, like, you know, what are you going to do? Hadouken! What? Um, <laughs> you know, you know, actually, you know, I'll go to Bat for Street Fighter. When they want to create a fighter that's, like, based in a single martial art, they're actually pretty good about, like, transferring moves that you'd see in real life over. Now, to be clear, 
fl flaming fireballs are not part of like Shotokan karate, but you well, know, I've there's, there's like he I've has been, like a sidekick, a nice little It's all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about Absolver? Says Wither. I actually really like Absolver. My only problem with it is that it like um, it makes. It has this false assumption that just because it's in a martial art, everything is effective. But like, purely from like how well they get the form down, how like accurately represented the moves are, it's pretty decent. I will say some of the moves are a little bit like exaggerated just for effect, and it can look kind of sloppy like when you're looking at the animations. But when it's all flowing together, it looks pretty sweet. Um, I think it might actually be on the list. Let me check. No, it isn't. But I'll put it on the list. It's on the list, Angie. Okay. To be fair, Rev, it's not even chi either. It's the the literal translation of the word Hadouken is like wave motion fist. So what you're looking at is like super quick vibrations just being thrown across the, the screen. I'm 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 creating pressure waves in the air with my magic god speed. Pretty much, yeah. Um Oh, but yeah. Yeah, it's, well, I know um, the guy you're talking about, Jarbing. I think he's uh, remember the tags, if I'm not mistaken, something to that effect. Yes, yeah, it is, uh, Joe. Yeah, bad movie now, dude. Anytime you see this shirt, you got the Breen on. Of course. Um, I was actually talking to the weed chick uh, about it as we were waiting right. because the the fucking Connor's comfort was like they didn't move it in inventory and they had to fucking take time to move it over or some shit so we got to talking and I'm like she's like so what are you doing tonight I'm like actually the weed is for bad movie night she's like Wait, bad movie night I'm like yeah and I explained it to her and she's like oh my god we should do that here in the shop nice Okay. And, and of How course, we think... started talking about Breen, and she's like, "I'm like, yeah, he's a Vegas, uh, she's a, he's a Vegas resident." She's like, "Oh my god, I have to look him up." And I'm like, "I'm spreading the gospel oh of Breen and Bad Movie Night." Yeah, straight up. <laughs> nice. How do we come and kill a, ma and a man flat out, right? If if you can somehow create vibrations that are so insanely fast that they are like visible in the air, yeah, you're probably doing something that would like eviscerate a person if it ever made contact with them. I mean, it would certainly disrupt the cardiac pattern. Yeah. It, it, it would cause a it would cause uh, cause a um, altered rhythm, for sure. Yeah. Um, Radical vet or proud? Vet. There's a bunch of those to be fair, Darbing. They all kind of like they all kind of like flow, flow together at some point or another. Um, this this, this bot's at it again. The hoss you know fucking thing. Here, here's the here's the veteran meta on on uh, Twitch. Wear like like some sort of like fitted camo cap. Have a f American flag in the background. Have a nice like fitted like uh like dark tan T-shirt that's like real nice and like form fitting on you. Have a, like a shitty goatee and like some weird uh what are they called like motorcycle glasses like just just some fucking wraparounds and basically. A constantly virtue signal about how you care about the freedom for individual people, but anytime mi minorities or any, uh, or anything that might be like deviant from like your standard like cis white male comes up, and then you can like slightly shit on them. Um, that's like that's every veteran channel on Twitch. Dude, I was fucking I was driving today, fucking doing the rounds and shit, and um, I was listening to XM comedy, um, yeah. and fucking i made the mistake of turning it on to fucking kevin hart's channel oh god i'm like i'm trying to f think about i'm like which one was he um and fucking dl hughley was on and the first words i heard out of his mouth were gay marriage oh no and i'm like hmm, all right let's hear it you know they say gay marriage is a sin, but so is uh, um, so is gluttony and greed. But I don't hear them talking about that. You put too many hot dogs in your mouth, or too many hot dogs in your mouth, it's still a sin either way. It's like, oh, okay, so you haven't redeemed gay marriage in your mind. What you've done is just seen the hypocrisy in other people, but you still see it as an invalid form of marriage, and it shouldn't be done. Gay sex is a sin, we, so that's why we should let them get married. Nothing ends sex more uh, quicker than marriage. 
Mm, boomer humor. <laughs> I don't actually like to fuck my wife either. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I let him get maybe 45 seconds into the bit. I was like, changing the channel to over to Raw Dog. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Name a more iconic couple. Uh, fucking black community and gay men. Oh, God. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, I was like, immediately, I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, made me, made me think of the fucking veterans shitting on fucking minorities. <sighs> Dryer Bing, I'm telling you, dude. Every fucking veteran on Twitch acts the exact same way. Yeah, like, Cat didn't describe anybody in particular. He just described Twitch veteran streamers. Yeah. Um, that's just, that's a generic, yeah. That's the meta. Why do poly relationships seem fun as fuck? I mean, they don't. Because you've never been in one. Yeah, they, they're not for me. Um, dude. I've been in one. It's, it's, you have to have a staggering amount of self-confidence to make them work that, like, just most people don't possess. You kind of, like, as... It's almost kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? Like... Be broken? Oh, it, it's <laughs> almost like a... It's almost paradoxical, but, like, you almost have to, like, not give a fuck about the other people in the relationships to actually make it work. That actually is pretty accurate. Cave, it was it was XM radio, so it was satellite radio. It was commercial, like, paid-for radio. Um, so, like, I can hear people talk about fucking penises and cunts and shit like that right like it's it's xm radio um and as for an aux cord um i have bluetooth <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah um is polyamory the same thing as just having multiple partners I, I mean it can be that's like one type of polyamorous relationship there's a bunch of different types but like generally speaking what defines a polyamorous relationship is that everyone consensually kind of agrees to like be in well the polycule like for example like cheating isn't polyamory because the parties there's some party that's being burned here that isn't fucking you know that isn't being informed so as long as everybody fucking as long as everyone's consenting everybody knows what the fuck's going on there are you know pre-discussed boundaries that's a polyamorous relationship It's or it it's could be bullshit. like an open thing where like it's you, bullshit. you know, it's a whole fucking thing. <laughs> um, homie, don't share. Um, eh. uh, but yeah, um, that dude, that end episode of fucking sensate ends in a giant fucking polyamorous orgy. Nice. Yeah. Like straight up, like the very final scene that they cut out on the final shot is a thick, fucking rubber rainbow dildo strap on with body fluids on it god damn yes like it's like i literally that end scene i'm fucking i'm sitting here with fucking earbuds in watching this shit i'm like i didn't even put it on the tv i watched the whole thing on the fucking computer and i'm fucking sitting here and I, they hit it and i'm like holy shit we're doing this like we're, holy shit we're fucking actually like we're really fucking doing this like holy right. fuck fuck we're doing this yeah the the end sequence of the last sunset episode is just a giant polyamorous orgy like God damn. yeah um whether uh if i had to guess it would be the partner of nomi i forget her fucking her name um, but it could have been Nomi's body fluids as well. It's going to be one of them because the, the strap on belongs to Nomi and her partner. So it's going to be one of them. Um, so that's, that's who's body fluids in actuality. I'm hoping it's fucking like stagecraft, <laughs> nice. but it is the Wachowski sisters after all. I don't know how fucking method they had their actors get. Um, don't know. Um, you walked into a leftist stream. Get used to a Big Ben. Yeah, that's just, you know. There's just there's there's just a higher bar of degeneracy whenever you're in like a leftist space. Do you do you do you, do you, do you see this Big Ben? Like I, I literally try and warn people. It's a giant rainbow 
Degen animated logo in the corner. Better be able to hang. Yeah. Um. A uh, Chris wants an amazing. Oh yeah, sure, no problem. Amazing, amazing. Uh, give you two. He um, sustains my life source. There is a leftist vet channel and left flank vets, right? Will auto. I uh, forgot its name. They don't wear aviators glasses or whatever, but they are called. Not how good, the, not how good they are for real, but the few things I saw from them, they are, they are what they say. Holy fuck, Willata. I don't know. I saw, I, I, I've watched a little bit of it, but I don't know. They, they, they seem like, I mean, for one, they believe in left unity, so that sets off red flags in my head. And for <laughs> two, it's just like, a lot of their opinions just kind of seem, I don't know, like kind of surface level, like leftist twitch. Like they were, I know a few of them were like real big on like the burn your bus train, and it seems like, I don't know, it seems Ugh. like they're all over the place, like ideologically, and I think that could be kind of ir irresponsible. Uh, Wallada, the end of season two is a two and a half hour episode that was filmed after the cancellation of Sensei, so you kind of have to like it. It happened like a couple, like a year or two after the end of the actual uh, series, so you have to like usually view it separately, um, and. Um, <clears throat> It's it's culmination orgy is uh, <laughs> memorable. It's very well shot. It's not explicit, but it's very well shot. Um, it, it's you know yeah, it's very well done. Uh, let's see. Last I had heard, um, Dgen is synonymous with honesty or integrity, in my opinion. <laughs> um, the last you know I'll I'll bite that bullet. Sure. Uh, it, dude, if you're willing to own it, like, yeah, right? Like, that's a certain vibe. Um, the last I'd heard from Life, Left Flank Vets is that they were falling apart because of the supposedly transphobic take from one of their members. Yeah, that's, that's, I remember that. that that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at is like, they're all over the fucking place. It's like, uh, ideologically, like, one minute you're talking to a liberal, one you're talking, next minute you're talking to a fucking commie, next minute you're talking to an anarchist. And like, the only like similar thread here is that they're like left. They're left wing fucking vets. And that's kind of the problem is once you mix different levels of like progressiveness, only trouble is abound. Oh, all right. take that. Take the ankle brace off. Oh, come on. Get, get, get off. <laughs> off, I say. I mean, look, whether I'm not going to turn, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the fucking mouth. Oh. You know, they just. <laughs> If, if if they if they can help with like some genuine like action in the real world then fuck it i i'm not complaining it's just you know if the if the cart crashes and burns as it were we know why oh, what is september 18th i mean other than the day i get uh get my prince albert done is, is this like another like trump's coming back meme probably chasing gasm what's what's september 18th <laughs> um Cricks, eh, maybe. Um, I don't fucking know, Zippy. I I only followed them. I only follow like a couple of members on Twitter, and like I occasionally saw clips here and there. It just seems like it just seems like that like fucking channels like all over the fucking place. Protest in Washington, Trump stuff. So new oh, well, new Trump stuff. New Trump stuff. Yeah. Oh, nice, Voodoo's. Um, right. my dead dad's B-Day says Anya. <laughs> oh, God. Um. I, have any of y'all actually watched that fucking speech that you did, the one where he, like, uh, like, uh, announced that he took the vaccine? Because, like, I oh. think it's kind of strange that, like, the vaccine was the only thing, like, being talked about. Because, like, he was like pretty much just waxing poetic about how much more of a warmonger he would have been had he been in Biden's position. That shit was crazy. Dude, the fucking um the speech about the the Confederates and how like we, um we could have used a general like Robert E. Lee for Afghanistan. Right. It's like you do you he doesn't, does he? Hmm, okay. Oh. 
Like he, he doesn't, does he not? No, he doesn't, does he? Holy shit. This guy doesn't know. <laughs> like, I don't think he realizes. I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't understand. Like, they lost, it's bro. Fucking, <laughs> it's fucking crazy as shit. At some point, you just got to give him the boomer pass and just move the fuck on. It's like, bro, they lost. Um, His dementia is getting real bad, huh? Yeah, it is. It really is. Um, whether there's fucking, there's like one of Scott's fucking nice. emotes. I like that emote. Dude, I find the black and yellow obnoxious. I actually like it a lot. All I, I just, all I hear is that stupid fucking song in my head. Dude, I grew up on that song. The fucking song is fucking, I almost, I almost dropped the fucking, the horrid slur. <laughs> That's a uh, song is shit. It's like okay, that. It's like fuck. that fucking G five song or whatever the fuck the fuck uh, one is too about the plane that flying it. over or whatever. That era of music was really weird. Uh, Kubu says it's my favorite color scheme and it's associated with fucking right wing capitalists. Dude, I, I'm 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 with you, Kubu. So it's like one of the better. It's like one of the better like color uh, color palettes that could have been picked. Ugh. Um, Wither, I, I know lo roughly where you are, Wither. I'll hunt you down. Yeah. Um. I don't fucking know what song, Zippy. Somebody fucking help me out. What's the fucking shitty song about the G5? I don't know that one. I um, just know it has, like, a mention to Lean before Lean was, like, super mainstream. So, aside from that, I don't G know. Like a G6? Also, I'm... Yeah, I, I actually, I was about to say, it's like a G6, not a G5. Whatever. what Whatever generation of fucking Lear aircraft they're talking about in it. Oh, and it is, it's, the, the song is literally called Like a G6 by Dev. There you go. Like a G6. Whatever. Far East Movement. Correction. Oh, okay. That's, that's the artist. Yeah. For, Far East Movement featuring the cataracts dev like a G6. Yeah, for the there you go, fuckers Jack. that don't know, G is short for Gulf Stream. It's a, it's a model of Learjet, private aircraft. Um, generally a few million, but you can spec them out into the 25, 35 million easily. Um, yeah. You don't just... Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Wither, that's right. I don't know where roughly where you are. I know exactly where you are. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can literally just show up on his doorstep. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where roughly where you are. I know exactly where you are. Uh, <laughs> my bad. Um... Oh, uh, I don't listen to shit like that. Yeah, Rev, neither do I. Dude, I'm gonna have to get a new camera mount doing that like that. Um, uh, did I see Matrix trailer? Um, Anya just said, did I see Matrix trailer? Did you? Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know, Anya. You're gonna have to tell me that one. Um, no, I didn't. I did not see the uh, the Matrix trailer because I don't give a shit about the Matrix movie. Um, I saw the first one. We did this last night. I saw the first one. I don't give a shit about the second one or the third one or the fourth one. I don't need to know how the tale of, uh, of cyber Jesus raps. I know how the tale of cyber Jesus raps. Um, I mean, unless they pull some magic twist and they break the fucking model. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the hero's journey is a pretty well known story writing format seeing as every single story mankind has ever written basically adheres to the format um the monomyth is pretty well known um yes oh wow jesus died for our sins or you know to save us all in the third one right let me guess the fourth one is called resurrection oh it is oh wow who would have guessed that 
So the fourth, the fourth Cyber Jesus movie is literally called Resurre- Resurrection. Mm, shocking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like it's, it's literally the mono myth. Um. Millions of people can watch it. Millions of people watched the fucking Star Wars like prequels too. I saw the first one. I checked out of the the franchise entirely. I have not seen the Mandalorian. I have not seen fucking any of the newest movies either. I didn't see episode two or three. Um, you can actually avoid seeing this shit. Like you, you can just say no. Um, I haven't seen basically most of the Marvel movies either. Um, you can you can just you can opt out. It's it is totally a thing. You can not watch the trailer. You can not see the movie. You, you it's it's entirely doable. I promise. And Kai will be doing that. It's good to be plugged into the cultural zeitgeist, though. Memes will do that for me. The Reddit. No, that's actually fair. Yeah, the front page of Reddit will handle that for me. I don't. I don't need to see this shit. I'll. I'll see the thing that the people want to talk about, and I'll know that out of like meme context. I'm good. Anya, what does that even mean? A movie liberal. I. I don't get it. Baby Yoda is cute though. Didn't see anything either. Uh, you know. He even had the Jesus look in it. Of course he did. Of course he did. But despite, like, look, I've fucking, I've said this before, and um, despite fucking the Wachowski sisters saying that it's a, that it's some sort of parable about being trans and whatever, it's the monomyth. I'm sorry. It's literally Jesus. Like, I'm sure they project their own journey onto it, as you are free to do as film creators, but... They, they literally had him like in the Jesus pose at one point and he sacrificed himself for the good of all of the, the entities within the matrix, right? Like it's Jesus. It's Jesus. I'm trying to, I mean, that's the thing is I'm trying to figure out like, where does that go into being trans? I fucking who, who I don't, I don't but let them have it. Like they're free. It's their fucking movie. They can say whatever the fuck they want, but the rest of us who have seen it are like, yeah, that's cyber Jesus y'all. Sorry. Um. Hey, Mossy. What the fuck? Um. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> My uh, desert radiology calling to remind you of your scheduled appointment on Tuesday at 10 p.m. Seriously, they've got my MRI scheduled at 10 p.m. God damn, why? I because that's fucking like that was just that. Fuck it. Yeah. Um Eh. I'll see. Eh. Um I'm a strict as Australia said, I'm a strict movie and cap. Um I love Marvel movies. I know, I know. Cancel me now, Mississippi. Um, Australia, I have no fucking idea, actually, how late they are. Uh, they're open. Um, but, yeah, the Marvel movies are literally a checklist. They're a checklist. There's no creativity involved in the Marvel universe. Not at this like, point. They all kind of just bleed together, huh? Yeah, they're the same movie. Like, they're, they're literally the same movie. They're formulaic as fuck. Yeah. Um, introduce hero origin or like a group origin or whatever the fuck introduce some like uh, some fucking just a weird entity that they need to like battle some people battle maybe some people die here let's allude to the sequel that will link up with this other with this other marvel like franchise and then we'll leave a couple of like easter eggs and shit scattered throughout some shots that alludes to other collaborations that may have happened in the future. Boom, done. I, I, you know, it's 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 all just in the weird hero worship, the weird fucking hero worship. That that dude, dude that's that's it's straight out kind of a. It's authoritarian as fuck yeah. when you like break down. Like, no, that's some of the straight out of off of like Umberto's checklist territory. 
Like it, it's it's fucking weird as shit when you start looking at it. You're like, mm, what's that going to do to a generation of kids? No, I'm I. You can you can miss me with the Marvel stuff. Um, it's also pretty individualistic. Oh, it's a lot of stuff, but none of it really good. <laughs> Um. Yeah, you see, I saw that about fucking Spider-Man's now the most valuable uh, uh fucking hero property in existence. Spider-Man. Really? Yeah, Spider-Man has made more money than everything now. Superman, Batman, fucking Spider-Man is the most valuable superhero property. That's actually kind of surprising to me. I I don't really get it. Oh, fuck. Did I take a screen? Oh, yes, I did. Um, the only thing I glorify is Dorito Taco, and that's only when I'm not sober. Um, young, quippy, wholesome bean, Spider-Man number one. Um, you know, whatever. I, honestly, it never spoke to me. Spider-Man was never a thing that spoke to me in any way, shape, or form. You know, I will say he is probably like the least shitty of like the the hero cast. He's like just like at his core, he's just like some nerdy dude who wants to help. That's probably why he's boring as fuck. I mean, that is exactly it. But you know, that's kind of what makes him kind of the ideal that's hero. Why they had to, really that's why they had flaws to, in his character. It, well, that's why they had to create the like into the Spider Verse to actually create some interesting Spider Man. Right. Like, the, like, dude, this dude's boring as fuck. Can we get like right. a black chick Spider-Man or something? Like who who wants this like plain vanilla white teenager who's just kind of a dork all the time? Let's get right. some let's get some Terry Crews up in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Uh, uh. Hey, 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 there can be a female Spider-Man. It doesn't need to be a female Spider-Woman. <laughs> um, no black female Spider-Woman, though. Um, Spider-Man. It's it's female Spider-Man. The, the man is not signifying gender. It's just part of the title. <laughs> it's Spider-Man. <laughs> it's just part of it. Whether you whether you are a woman or a man or you ident you identify as neither, the title comes with the job. You are Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Spider Man is a disillusioned anarchist. I wouldn't even say that. I think he's mm. just some guy who wants to help and doesn't really give a fuck about what system he's in. Because he doesn't he doesn't really act politically, and he does work pretty heavily with like the NYPD. You know. It depends just, which iteration of Spider-Man you're dealing with. That is true. Yeah. This is the conversation for that sort of stuff always is like, who's Spider-Man? Um, yeah. I, I, I fuck, fuck superheroes. Fuck the superhero. It's like fantasy. I honestly, the concept of a superhero is fucking terrifying. Yeah, it's a nightmare scenario. I mean, it would kind of like instantly invalidate anarchism as an ideology, wouldn't it? It would invalidate almost all ideologies outside of like... Fascism? Might, like might makes right. Yeah. Because, I mean, look, here's <clears throat> like this effectively invincible being that could wipe us out in like half a second. Yeah. You know what? What? Why wouldn't we like kind of submit to its will? <laughs> yeah, it it basically nullifies everything outside of some sort of totalitarian doctrine, near instantly. Right. Superman, especially. I mean, that's the thing, especially if there is like intelligence in some of these superheroes. Like, there's fucking Batman with like being like literally one of the most intelligent beings to ever live. Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of fucking stupid not to listen to him consistently. 
with whatever advice he has to give on how to run shit. Um. Yeah. No. It's it's uh, the concept entirely. I mean, is they're they're all strongman characters, right? Like, I mean, Aquaman is a fucking king. Batman is a billionaire who fucking is the smartest guy apparently ever. Superman can fucking turn your planet around, your entire planet's orbit in in reverse if he so chooses, right? Like, this is, are you fucking around? Like, you know, Captain Marvel could, like, blink the planet out of existence. She's such a Mary Sue. Uh, Dark Phoenix could do the same, like, literally destroy the planet. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, the Flash can move, like, over, like, I don't know, s- like some ridiculous science-y number times faster than the speed of light. Oh well, yeah, wasn't yeah. It like, once, wasn't once, it like septillion, like septillion times once, faster. Once once he speed accesses the the speed dimension or the speeds uh, the the speed force, um, like yeah, he can literally disrupt the nature of the like quantum interconnections of our universe and shit. Like he can it, functionally affect the fabric of existence. Uh, yeah like it's like are you kidding me yeah and well power creep is a problem with all of these stories this is why you have to kill these fuckers you have to kill uh, create alternative universes and you have to end these stories but the fact that they're too profitable you can't end these stories so power creep is a motherfucker like none of these people started off like this none of them started this way that's just where they ended up because power creep it's it's a very real problem in writing fiction and if you write long enough inevitably what happens is your character is capable of everything it's just how it works and so like shut these fuckers down like start some new characters but yeah yeah the day superman came back to life hulk destroyed entire dimensions um yeah like show invincible is amazing i was like son of superman story goes on wild after uh i've seen it zomo i watched i watched the first season um eh. Shreya, can you give us the brass tax on how fucking could, could, could you give us the brass tax on like who who was mind controlled and like what why tankies would like them in winter soldier soldier Apparently, there are a whole multitude of Spider-Man abusing his power, uh, Karina. So you can stop standing fucking Spider-Man right now. Yeah. Um, there's there's literal lists of the abuses of power and the basic murders that Spider-Man has committed over the years. So, you know, oh, no. Oh, shit. Wither, Wither, give us the brass taxes. Has finally lost it. Um, yeah, like S- Spider-Man is just as much guilty as any of them. Fucking Spider-Man can accidentally punch people's heads off. Yeah. Um, kicking people from the tops of buildings generally kills people. I mean, swinging people around with like web that's basically as strong as titanium, just fucking, you know, upwards of like 80 to 70 miles per hour, slamming them into concrete. Yeah. Like, not a fun time. <laughs> he's a murderer. He's a murderer. Probably more than Batman, frankly. I mean, I mean, yeah, he beats the fuck out of like random goons whenever he's in them fight scenes. And I refuse to believe that some dude who just got webbed up and like slammed against a wall is like surviving that without at least like several shattered ribs. I'm actually, you know, now that I think about it, if I'm not mistaken, that is actually like a, um, the subject of like one comic where like, uh, I think Spider-Man actually gets like sued 
by like someone that he injured while fighting them as like in the capacity of like his hero work. Um, uh, Cupcake said there's in lore controversy over whether Spider-Man killed his first girlfriend when he tried to save her from f uh, f uh, falling with a web. Her neck snapped. Yeah, there's also another one where he basically like irradiates her by fucking her, and that one's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, dude, they're all all superheroes. They're horrible, horrible things. Every last one of them. There's not a good one. There's no like measured like oh well he's better than no. The entire concept. They're all horrible. The only reason why they're good is because the writer wants them to be. Uh, so, hey there, sweet. That's what the show The Boys is about. Um, yeah, I saw the first season. I'm good with the first season. I don't need to see I really the need to get around to watching it. Um, I like the Joker from when Jack Nicholson. Um, my favorite, um, Batman is Ter Terry McGinnis from Batman Beyond. That's, that's, that's my favorite Batman. Um, that's probably my favorite iteration of a superhero franchise even. Um, is the Batman Beyond portion. Mary Jane dies in her later years due to radioactive sperm. Yes. Yeah, that, that's the one that I was talking about. Um, best Joker is Mark Hamill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, animated Joker. Animated Joker. Best animated Joker is Mark Hamill. Best on screen um, Joker is Heath Ledger. Yes, Rev. That was the futuristic cartoon one. That was the super cyberpunky futuristic. Bruce Wayne is now an old man. Terry McGinnis takes over the role as Batman. The suit is like nano fiber technology and shit like that at that point, and it's fucking cool as shit. And Terry will kill a motherfucker. He murders the Joker. Straight up. The Joker like looks at him and goes, "You can't kill me. The Batman doesn't kill. Uh, doesn't kill." And he, he looks at him and says, "You've been telling this, me this entire time. I'm not Batman." And he fucking yeah. lets him die. God damn. Yeah. He did the entire fucking movie. The entire movie. Um, because it was an animated movie from Batman Beyond. The entire movie, fucking, basically, Joker embedded his DNA in one of the fucking Bat Boys in some way, shape, or form, and comes back using like a cybernetic implant and takes over and reforms his DNA and stuff like that. And he spends the entire fucking movie telling Terry McGinnis that you're not the real Batman. You're not the real Batman. You're not the real Batman. And when it comes down to it, he's like the sat uh, fucking Wayne Industries fucking like defense satellite is just destroying entire sections of the fucking town and heading towards the building. And the Joker's pinned. And he's like, aren't you going to save me? He's like, no. He's like, but you have to, you're, you're Batman. He's like, you've been telling me this entire time. I'm not Batman. And he fucking turns around and walks out and lets that's the, some, yeah, that's some monkey paw shit right there. Yep. Yeah. I was like, yes. Like I, I legitimately was like that. Yeah. Fuck you. You're dead. Um, Ledger and Nicholson for grandiose Joker. No, it's it's Ledger, dude. I remember living through that. Like Heath Ledger, the dude from Knight's Tale. This is the worst. This is the worst choice for the Joker ever. This is the worst choice for the Joker ever. Holy shit! He's the fucking. You chose the that fucking pretty boy from Knight's Tale, and that first trailer dropped, and everybody's fucking, everybody's fucking, uh, fuck, uh, opinion changed. It's like. Oh, we got that wrong. This is going to be a fucking thing, ain't it? Best Joker. Best on-screen Joker, period. Dude, Ledger nailed that character. Um, You know, I will say, though, I do like the different take that, like, Phoenix brought to the role. It's not this, it, like, it's not even trying to be the same. It's just, you know, a different type of insanity. It's uh, a very, like, a Anya, a I love one. that you referred to Joaquin Phoenix as River Phoenix's brother. Ah. I, 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 if you're from that era, um, dude, it's a shame River didn't make it. But it was kind of easy to see that he might not. He's one of those types. 
And you're like, mm, he might not make it that far. Um, but yeah. New Joker is supposed to be a different dimension or some bullshit. I don't, I don't know, Rev. It makes sense. Because like the, the way, because it doesn't really seem as like superheroed up as it were. And there's no mention of other superheroes as it is. You know. Anya, there is, yeah. It may, may yeah. Possibly, yeah. Um, River may still be alive if it weren't for Johnny Depp. That is theoretically possible, yeah. Um, Depp may have dropped the ball trying to cover his ass on that one. And River died of an overdose as a result. Um, uh, Swede, I'm in that category. Um, I've heard good things about Ro Robert Pattinson as like a, a non-Twilight actor. Like apparently Twilight's just a shit script. So there's nothing that you can do about that. Um, but him working opposite of, was it Willem Dafoe? Um very good things were said um, about Pattinson as an actor. Um, and he's in that category of sort of sleeper. He, he may be able to put in a really good performance. And so I'm, I'm interested to see what he puts up as well. Um, I don't think he's going to have the, the, I don't know, would it gravitas? I don't, it's not gravitas that I'm looking for, but sort of the unhinged that Ledger managed to bring to Joker. Um, cause I think Joker should be unhinged. I think that that's, that's a necessary element to the character. Um, and if you downplay that, then I don't know, it doesn't read as well. Um, Rage is being induced over the statue topic, apparently. Mm. I mean, who gives a shit? On, on whose side is what I'm curious about. Like who, gives, like, who gives a fuck about the statue? Yeah, what, what moron is giving a shit about that? Hey, Fina. Ledger did have a lot of potential. Yeah, Ledger had a lot of good years ahead of him. For sure. Uh, the lighthouse, yes, Estrella. That was that was the one where fucking Ledger, uh, not Ledger, um, Pattinson, caught my attention. That like he acted his nuts off on that one. He he put up a good performance on all sides, says Wither. Nice. Um. From the stands and the historians and the rebels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is this is why Dylan Burns TV hippy dippy debates things are fucking worthless. I mean, it's like a panel just seems like such a fucking horrific way to discuss issues, you know? It, because like, it just is kind of intrinsically. Yeah, because it is. <laughs> like it, it's, it is in yeah, it is yeah, in. There's no way. There's no way for one person to fully flush out their perspective unless they're given like just complete free reign to speak for like ten minutes at a time, you know? Yeah. No, I. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, Buddhist. When people are raging more over some statue than homelessness and starving people, yeah, fuck off. Uh, we came up with, I came up with that one last night. That's uh, the that's the new anarchist uh, touch grass. Make a sandwich, go make a sandwich, man. Fucking well, what about the meta ethical analysis? Go make a sandwich. Or I also like I also like the soup kitchen thing. You know, pour a bowl of soup. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Like, dude. They're starving people. No. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> Sorry. You've lost you've lost the plot already. Um What a weird question, Axel. What's the question? Why do you Kai, why do you stream? Do you have a goal or do you get something out of this? Exol, you need to go back and listen to Misery Likes Company. You got to go listen to an entire, like, I don't know, how many episodes of fucking podcasting. 
to get that you know, I, to truly get that answer you know i have yet to actually like take the dive on like that deep channel lore yeah and the only one who really knows it is jay jay knows it jay went to episode zero and listened in order the entire back yeah. catalog yeah, yeah. jay right. jay jay can fucking do some like introspection on kai um but i feel like i have a good enough picture the long and short of it is if i didn't i'd probably put a bullet in my brain yeah that's about what i figured <laughs> yeah that's that's i mean you know i i could get into a lot of fucking angles and depths and shit like that but truth of the matter is at the end of the day yeah i'd probably fucking put a bullet in my brain if i didn't um we as a society went from the first flight to the moon landing in 66 years. We don't make sure everyone is fed because we as a society think uh, uh, some for other means less for me. Oh, yeah, we think some for other means less for me, says Swede. Um, nah, you're, you're, you're fine, Axel. It was just apropos of nothing. <laughs> We're sitting here talking about who would make the best joke, and you're like, Kai, why do you stream? <laughs> It's like fucking one of those left field ones. Because you motherfuckers don't know what anarchism is, and I'm sick and tired of, uh, of fucking the kids running around not teaching people properly. So if I'm going to stream to keep my sanity, I might as well teach you something while I'm at it. There you go. Um... teach Hassan what anarchism is. I mean, if Hassan wants to have me on as a guest, I'll do that. Straight up. He needs that lesson, apparently. There's a bunch he's, of people. He's like a whole... He's like all over the fucking place. Of course he does. I'm sure he, I'm sure he has a weird thing against anarchists because anarchists would critique the fuck out of him. I'm sure his position is, like, basically permeable to anarchist critique. It's like a wet paper tissue that we could walk through. <laughs> so, um, generally authoritarians find us intolerable as well because our critiques are the uh, panacea to their fucking toxin. It's, it's funny that um, the people who can take you down the easiest generally become your most um, vehement enemies. They're the ones you detest the most. Also, Rev said, also Burns' use, use of the word hippie offends me. <laughs> I, you know, Burns has like a weird, like a really weird sense of patriotism. And I don't know how to feel about it. Mm. Hassan is a sock dim. If you're falling for that, I don't know what to tell you. Especially as a fellow lefty. What is he actually? Yeah, he's probably like a communist. Uh. He's waved the red flag before. So, you know. I don't know how to interpret that question with her. Uh, Karina said, I'm surprised how defensive he got over his house, and now he kind of has a chip on his shoulder. Well, that's his fault, then. <laughs> you know, I, he can he can cry about it and wipe his tears with all the fucking money he's making. Yeah, like, maybe don't spend three and a half million dollars on your house. Right. I mean, it's not like anybody held a gun to his head. Bruh. Right. Three and a half million dollars. You could have fucking set up a streaming. We, we covered this. You could have fucking built a fucking entirely new community somewhere and uplifted it, uh, uh, uplifted a community and brought in fiber and created a streamer hub for three and a half million dollars. I mean, it's like, what, like, what do you like? Realistically speaking, why do you need a mansion? If I, like, like, ge like genuinely, it's like, hey, look, just put down like 500,000 on like a decent house that'll appreciate in value depending on the market that you're buying in. And then you could fund 
so much bullshit with the rest. Yeah. Like, there's there's nothing wrong with having, like, a great house, but, like, at some point, it's like, look, dude, you gotta funnel some of this money towards, like, actual activism. Or you're just here for the, or you're just here for the cash. He brought that criticism on himself. Sorry. Um, and yeah, Wither, I, I, I don't, like, if you want to reword that question, Wither, I don't fucking know. That's what I'm getting at, Estrella. He could have moved, like, to some other state outside of California and bought, like, a house that is of similar luxury for, like, fucking, like, a third of the price. Dude, for <laughs> for that price, okay, so for that price, I could have gotten him, uh, for about five fifty. I'd have gotten him 65 acres, pristine, with, like, rivers and maybe a pond and a well, um, two stories, five bedrooms, three and a half baths in Vermont, no problem. Yeah. He's like, he is the definition of like a champagne socialist. Mm -hmm. And anyone denying it is fucking stupid. Yeah, it, it's sorry. Like, I, well, I had to be in West Hollywood. No, you didn't. You didn't. You, yeah. you, well, can afford, you can afford a flight out there every like, I don't know, like every other. I don't know how often he actually needs to be in like, a, you know, L.A. for whatever reason. But like he can afford the flights whenever he wants them. Hmm. I'm sorry. He opened himself up to all those criticisms. Fuck him. If he's got a chip on his shoulder about it, well, then carry the chip. In Omaha, 500k buys you 4,000 square feet on a, on a full acre. Hmm. Um, I listened to him say he could uh, he could have moved to Las Vegas, but he didn't want to, so get over it. There you go. There's his answer. <laughs> That's a good meme on you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just put me down, man. Um... Oh shit. Oh. Well, I just tuned into the fucking stream. They're chimping out. Of course they are. Yeah. Good job, Dylan. Way to hold moderation. I don't think the, sh the champagne socialist argument is that valid of a cri criticism for any leftist, not just Hassan. How come? Um. Exol. I have three and a half million dollars that I have to spend. I spent three and a half million dollars all on the house. I could have spent five hundred and fifty thousand dollars on the house, gotten everything I needed to continue doing what I do, and spent two hundred uh, two million fucking nine hundred and uh, nine hundred and fifty thousand on community development and projects. How is that yeah, not a like valid criticism? Yeah, it's like he could have he could have funded a bunch of co ops. He could contribute to like. Uh, you know the the founding of businesses within marginalized communities he could contribute to like funds for like affordable health care for certain you know th for mutual aid projects he could fucking like he could fucking fund like a super pack and just let those people like handle the money like there's a fuckload of places where that money could have been a very valuable resource for people that needed it and he just put it in a house in west hollywood yeah Fucking West Hollywood of all fucking places. An, you know? over like, an oversaturated, overdeveloped real estate market that is right, uh, that is already exploited uh, using investment and commodity techniques. Come on. Like it's not like even a like if he fucking if he spent like three mil on like some uber luxurious place in like fucking I don't know like uh, Cricks. I don't know. Give me give, Cricks. Give me give me like some fucking place on the sticks. We know you know, he, at least we know, he's, we know he's got a mortgage. But he could have gotten the mortgage elsewhere. And you can also just pay your mortgage off in advance. You could just make a big fucking payment and just, you know, get the rest of that out of the way. That's what I'm fucking saying, sweet. He could have... That, that's, that's what Kai was getting at, is that he could have, like, straight up funded a propaganda network on Twitch. He, uh, he, he only paid... He only put 700000 down. He put twenty, so you know, yeah, yeah. He put twenty percent down. Oh, he only put about seven hundred thousand down up front, did he? Only. Yeah. 
Oh my god, I'm just saying, like, a, a decent streaming PC, assuming you can get the parts at MSRP, though, that'll run you, like, I don't know, like, 13, 1300 to, like, fucking, to, he, like, 1600. He could have created, fucking, he could have revitalized a community. Yeah, fucking straight up. He could have, we could have had, like, we could have had, like, 70 decent, like, Twitch, like, careers just started overnight with, like, proper microphones and like graphics and shit and like you know he, he, they could have he could have set them up with like fiber internet if he really wanted to yeah fuck him like there's no there's no like intrinsically speaking there's nothing wrong with like getting a decent house for yourself like that that's like unarguable if you I'm, have the I'm, resources the and you're foundation able to spend of my argument of is literally he could have spent five hundred thousand dollars apparently cash that he had in hand by the way with two hundred thousand dollars left over um okay. buying a like 60 acres in pristine vermont with fucking five bedrooms, three and a half baths, rivers, fucking a pond, um, like back 40 of fucking woods and shit. He could have created a nature uh, conservancy on the on the property. He could have created a space for uh, ecologists and environmentalists to to a uh, be activists. He could have used that extra two hundred thousand dollars to bring fiber into the fucking property and start and used his next month's fucking income from his subs alone, creating a streamer setup the likes of which he could have brought leftists from all over into to guest in like fuck off like fuck off <laughs> he wanted to he he did it because he's a fucking bougie motherfucker who wanted to be in west hollywood with his mansion which he has every right to be but he doesn't have that right to then talk the shit he does yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is he's always wearing shit that says eat the rich and, you know, constantly virtue singling about all this other shit, but it's like, you know, does he contribute to any mutual aid funds? No. Does he contribute, does, has he shown up to any protests or drawn any attention to them in any meaningful way? No. Has he, has he fucking paid off anyone's bail that's been arrested at said protests? No. Has he fucking funded anything for, like, homeless people? No. He's a like, he, yeah, he is just, it's not even that he's a hypocrite, it's just that he doesn't do anything outside of, like, being a surface-level propagandist. Which, I mean, good for him. Fine. Good that he can make as much money as he does doing it. He's but, a grifter. Yeah. He's a grifter. And Let's... he is probably a net benefit being a grifter. Like, look, I'd rather have someone like Hassan as opposed to, I don't know, fucking Ben Shapiro. Like, if Ben Shapiro was as fucking big as he, like, if if Ben Shapiro was as big on Twitch as Hassan is, I don't know if I'd actually even fucking be on this platform. Because, like, holy fuck, that would be terrible. But, you know? I mean, but let's not get it twisted. He is a grifter. Yeah. He's in it for and personal gain. <laughs> yeah, he's in it for personal gain. Um... I mean, that's the thing is that when asked about like, because there ha there are people that have brought up the criticism like, hey, you could have spent less money in a house and put some of that towards like mutual aid. And his like response to that by and large has been, I don't really feel like doing it. Cool. <laughs> um, I mean, there is an argument to be made there with her that Destiny has done more than him. Dude, he fucking he's he's actually like Destiny. He gets was, people like, in the responsible streets for those two senators getting elected. Yeah, like there's a lot of data backing up that he was like a substantial force in those elections. Yeah, Destiny actually gets feet in the streets. Yeah, Hassan is just a grifter. He claims to donate a lot and said no matter how much he did it, it would never be enough. He needs to put his face on those donations. <laughs> He needs and he needs to like he needs to bring people towards whatever activist efforts he's actually fucking you know, he, funneling yeah, I'm towards. sorry like when you there's there's a certain point where you just stop donating to faceless fucking entities like that and you start focusing if you've got enough to revitalize a community you need to revitalize a community right like this is this is like people make fun of fucking Oprah and shit for the shit she did in Africa but the truth of the matter is is she did it right. Right? Like, oh, Oprah opened a school for, for girls in Africa. Yeah, motherfucker. You know what a school for for girls that have been historically taken advantage of and shat upon by an entire culture and society and continent and fucking can do to revitalize an entire region? That's that's targeted activism. That's, that's how you do it smart. 
That's a fucking billionaire using their money wisely. Fucking, yeah, you know what? I'm going to revitalize a region, one region at a time. I could spread my money out over the Democratic Party or super PACs or some shit, and it's a drop in the bucket. Or I could say, you know what? I'm going to fix this place. Sure, there's lots of places like it that need fixed, but I'm going to fix this place. I'm going to create a model. I'm going to show that it can be done. I'm going to do it. And he didn't. He bought himself a fucking McMansion in West Hollywood instead. So fuck him. And that's the thing is like if he he because he's he's kind of stolen like the co-op talking point from Bosch as of recently. And it's just like, dude, fund some fucking co-ops in like L.A. There's a bunch that would be like super open to just random funding. Be an angel investor. Just say, fuck it. Here's a here's a community that needs some fucking business here. Fucking good luck. I hope I didn't just throw that money to the wind. Um, yeah, uh, Swede pointed out that LeBron in his school in Ohio is like that too. Yeah, yeah. Like you can you can revitalize an entire fucking neighborhood, an entire region, an, an entire neighborhood, a town, a region, depending on what you have. And Son said, "Nah, I'm good. I just want to make mansion in West Hollywood." So I mean, again, that's his right to do. But let's not act like fucking Hassan's on team. He's not. Lance did that co-op thing. Well, good for him. I still, I still, you know, I still have oh. some opinions on the surf. Dolly Part, Do we do not, we do not mention Dolly Parton's name in the same fucking breath as we mention Hassan's name. Okay, let's just yeah. not even. Dolly Parton is a goddamn angel on earth, and has revitalized and taught no. Dolly Parton is one of the best people walking amongst us. Um, and fucking, you know, and Hassan's a fucking grifter. So let's just get that straight. Yeah, Dolly's a goddamn saint. Straight up, Rev. Um... Uh, rapper Akon built up whole African cities. Yeah. It can be done. Yeah. Um, oh no, Craig. It's just, you know, fucking Australia brought up the fact that Dolly Parton is better than him. She has a ton of programs. Yes. Dolly Parton is, Dolly Parton is a hundred percent superior to Hassan. <laughs> like in every way, shape and form. Dolly Parton is a better human being for sure. Dolly Parton has brought, like, Dolly Parton has actually affected global literacy light, uh, rates. Okay? The world is more literate because Dolly Parton exists. Entire regions of the South have economic, like, tangible economic uh, improvements because Dolly Parton exists. All right, she has uplifted entire regions of this country. She has affected global literacy rates. Hassan is a grifter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, if he's going to use the donation defense, at least tell us what organization you're donating to. Do an interview if it's an important cause. Like, here, I'm donating to, I don't know, this fucking union fund or some shit. Here's a person to come on and talk on my show. I'll interview him for like two hours and a half. Here's their socials. Here's where you can donate. Here's where you can join. Blah, blah, blah. Just if you're going to use the donation defense, give like a proper platform to said places that you're donating to. But he doesn't. He doesn't yeah, do no, Crix, that. it's, that's, that's why. Yeah, he's famous because of the Young Turks. Yeah, that's it. He, he, is, he has lived his whole life off of the teat that is uh, the Young Turks. That's it. Jenk. That's it. Jenk is the reason he's famous. Well, that, there is that too, Glazy. He is pretty hot. I, I mean, he, he's he's. I wouldn't kick him out of bed. He's a good looking man, but I don't. I don't hot. It's a little he, far. he needs. He needs to fucking stop skipping leg day. I think. I think hot's a bit of a stretch, but. He's a good looking. I'll bite, he's a good I'll looking bite man. that bullet. He's a good looking. I, I will bite. I will bite the shit out of that bullet. Uh, Viva! Apparently, his legs are fucking smaller than his arms. 
They are. Google them. <clears throat> Google like a full body Hassan pick. They're 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 actually kind of staggeringly small. Oh, the actually that. Okay. Um, if you're gonna make money covering a protest, a portion of that money should go to the people's bail. I agree. Yeah, hundred percent. Now no, there should be a bail fund that like people collectively like put together and then just fucking you know the second I, they can put it just they just can, uh, FYI out. doing that fucking rant right there um shed 11 people <laughs> fucking Hassan viewers man 11 <laughs> fucking people dropped because I fucking Every time. tore Hassan yeah people are fucking man they are <clears throat> interesting interesting People fucking stan Hassan. Yeah, I watched that fucking number. Like, just... Whoop. Fuck Hassan, he's a grifter. And we're out. Yep. Um, oh, Jesus Excel, Christ. Axel, Excel, I agree with what you're saying principally. And none of us are saying that he has to, like, give away all of his wealth. What we are saying is that, like... Five hundred fifty thousand dollars on a house on a house that he could buy with this. Because the thing is, we have to realize that he's in a position where he has seven hundred thousand in cash that he just puts down instantly. Get yourself a fucking five hundred fifty thousand dollar house. He could buy it instantly. Fucking sign that dotted line and then just roll with the rest of the money towards like towards like uh whatever the whatever the fuck he wants to put it towards. I mean, two hundred fucking two hundred thousand, like, hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand dollars given to like a, a local food not bombs would create a food program that would feed homeless people, children, the elderly for like a couple of generations. He could it's fix fun. he could fix like the the food desert issue in an entire region by donating that to the correct group. Cuz I mean that's the thing is like when what like cuz the thing is that if you can't live in a $350,000 house you have some fucking problems. You need to hire like a you need to hire a, hire like a fucking team of financial advisors if you can't survive in that environment. You know? Um a $200,000 endowment to Food Not Bombs would provide $10,000 per year in perpetuity, said Sweet. Yeah. You ever seen what Food Not Bombs does with no money? I mean literally no money. Dumpster diving alone. FNB feeds the homeless. All right? Without any money. Just sheer volunteerism. And fucking legwork. $10,000 in perpetuity to one particular Food Not Bombs or, uh, like uh, chapter. They could do amazing things. Fuck us on. Yeah. Um. Yes, Wither. Yeah. It does. <laughs> that that's 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 the, that's what we're getting on Hassan's ass about. Is like living in a five hundred thousand dollar home just isn't a bad ex like life experience a life uh, experience. It just isn't. Fucking that that is that is a fucking home that people throughout most of humanity couldn't have even fucking imagined you know at some point you have to you have to you have to cut off the dopamine treadmill and turn down the notches a little bit what you got swede i only popped on for a couple seconds to because i didn't want to type this whole thing out but uh there's a popular thing with angel investors called a charitable remainder trust where you can say drop your entire wealth on so say you got a hundred million dollars it gets invested, you get the income for the rest of your life that comes off of it, and when you die, it gets reverted to whatever charities you put together. So, you know, Hassan could have easily have done this, put 700000 down, lived off thirty five grand a year off of that, and then whatever else he's making with the Young Turks, and then on top of all that, been able to buy a house of what he just did, and, and then create a system where the charities can either borrow against or wait until he passes to use that type of funds. It's a it's a really pretty cool thing. <laughs> and again, he's a grifter. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, Sweet just fucking drops knowledge and demonstrates how, like, yeah, 
No, he spent three and a half. He's he spent three and a half million dollars on a fucking West Hollywood McMansion because his ego, his because his dopamine receptors demanded it. That's all. And that's actually one of the ways that people recommend uh, lottery winners to protect themselves is that you, if you have the entire single payment paid out to a charitable remainder trust, it goes a tax free. So you get the whole thing and then it gets invested and you get all the income off of it. Now, if anybody comes to you and tries to scam you or whatever, you can be like, well, I can't get at the money because it's literally in an irrevocable trust. You, once you donate that money, it's there. You can't touch it. So it also protects the fortune and everything else like that as well. And then you're also knowing that you're funding a charity on top of that. Yeah, we've got a couple of things in the in the trust. Yeah, I've told people before, like you got to do trusts are a hell of a legal construct, poor or rich alike. Trusts are a hell of a legal construct and very powerful tools to have in your tool belt. Um, all right. So anyway, I just didn't want to type all that out. No, that's right. <laughs> um, what was it called again? Charitable Remainder Trust. There you go. Thank you, sweet. Um, yeah, I, uh, fuck him. Fuck him. That's I, I, I got nothing more than that. I mean, at first I was, um, you know, I had questions, but now that I, I like when this topic first came up weeks ago, I had questions. I was like, well, I need more context. I don't know the thing. Now I've got all the context I need. The dude's a fucking grifter. Fuck him. How many <laughs> subs does he have on Twitch? It's something like in the thousands, right? No, more than that. Like tens of thousands? Yes. Jesus, fuck. Um, a lot of fucking income. Jesus. Does he have a Patreon and shit on top of it? Of course he does. God damn. Um, of course he fucking does. He's got 27,974 subs. Ooh, buddy. And he gets donos on top of it, too. So, so he, makes, he makes $70,000 a month off of his subs alone. Let's Jesus. let's Fuck. be um let's be let's be conservative and say that his donos his biddies are probably half of that. So let's just say he adds another thirty five thousand to that, um and then he's probably got a Patreon. Let's just be super conservative and say he's making seventy five hundred off of that. He's probably making somewhere north of one hundred and ten thousand dollars a month. Fuck him. <laughs> he is the definition of a champagne socialist. <sighs> and Swede says he bakes all that playing other people's content on his show and eating food into a mic. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, it's like, it's not like he's constantly platforming other leftists and shit. It's not like he's constantly like talking about like political issues and policy and how to engage with the system it's not like he's he's just like some like real handsome dude that's like kind of funny and can fucking you know just stretch out like a youtube reaction video um viva has pointed out that don't forget about his youtube channel with eighty thousand or so subs uh, eighty thousand to six hundred thousand subs so let's just let's just double that he's probably making 220 to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month Right. So, you know, but he needed his three point five million dollar McMansion in West Hollywood for reasons, y'all. For reasons, but don't don't worry, he's helping. Mm hmm. Fuck that guy. I like I like how Friday night like stream just devolved into shitting on Hassan. Hey, why not? Fuck him. It's like it's no, it feels good. I like it. Hmm. Apparently, they're still on fucking uh, statues. God damn! I, I was watching a little bit on Fabian on fucking uh, on Scott's stream, but like, like, holy shit, are these people just like 
there's just no charisma on this panel at all. No. Dude, like I said, they got a fucking tanky and ANCAP and Xander Hall. I mean, fucking, I mean, fucking Haz isn't, I, I'm mainly here just to see if Haz is going to chimp out, but like he's no. ironically enough, one of the most chill here. He smoked, Full a fucking, stop. he smoked a joint before this one. Yeah. I like how he's unironically doing like the Chad profile pose though, like half the time. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, fuck, fuck that panel. Fuck, fuck panels in general. Um, <sighs> Yes, uh, zippy chimp out. Yes, <laughs> fucking. Um, it's a, it, it is a racist term. I'll bite that bullet. It originated on 4chan. Fucking sue me. But he does literally start screeching. <laughs> he literally, he ho he literally does. He hops up, starts pacing back and forth, huffing and screeching. Like I'm sorry, it is animalistic in what he does. I I know. I'm just saying there is a problematic connotation with the phrase "chimping out," and I will bite that bullet. I just don't give a fuck. Uh, Swede Dylan Burns TV, hippy yeah. dippy panel. It's it's multiple. Okay, to be fair, it's multiple topics. Statue is just one of them. Another one was like, is Lauren Southern like bad for the world or something? It, or like, is Lauren Southern go uh, good or bad? I forget which one that, that yeah. directed it, but is Lauren Southern good for the Twitch platform? And then like third is like, I actually don't remember what the last topic was. I don't really give a fuck. I dude, dude, dude fucking is a shit panel. Um. Viva, I mean, Scott's take on it was she's good because she, this is, I didn't, I didn't correct him when he fucking put this forward because I don't, honestly, like, I like Scott, but I don't like arguing with Scott because he's just wrong. I'm sorry. He's wrong on most things. He says shit and it's just like, no, bro. Like, I wish the vaccine worked, but uh, it just doesn't. It's like, okay, Scott. Just shut the fuck up, man. You're just wrong on shit. Like, you know, and he was like, uh, his take on it was, well, she would give a, she would be a lightning rod for leftists and it would give leftists on Twitch, you know, something to argue against or argue about and stop your infighting. And I didn't, like, I didn't have the heart to, like, point out to Scott, like, in no way, shape or form would that stop leftist infighting. Yeah, it just, it I heard him say that, and it's just like, dude, you have a really idealistic view of how the left engages with shit online. Like, they were online. in fight. They were in in fighting long before Lauren Southern, they and were, they will in fight long after. They were in fighting long before the internet. <laughs> like, yes, leftist in fighting there were, there is were as literal old as leftism Nazis out in the wild, and Stalin still found it fit to hunt anarchists in Russia. Yeah, I'm sorry, son. <laughs> leftist. That's just Leftist infighting is as is traditional for leftists as leftism. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a part of it. It goes with it. It, it. it it I would if I were to argue, if I were to analyze, I would say it's a natural offshoot of our um, analytical nature and the academic nature of leftism. Is that a lot of it is born of deep philosophical thinking and academia, and it's sort of that scientific process of you know a constantly embattled ideas. Um, yeah. And so yeah, it, it, it is a it natural with, outgrowth. Like, yeah, I was, I was about to say, like, <clears throat> it kind of it kind of fits with, like, how a lot of its origins can be found with, like, Hegelian study. Yeah. You know? I, I, I think that's just a natural byproduct of leftism. Um, yeah. and, but, you know, to, to, to think that Lauren Southern <laughs> could bring leftist unity to the platform is just the, like, shows that he doesn't understand leftism. Like Dude, I was, I was having a discussion with him on a stream the other day about like immigration, and it is fucking wild. Where his mind goes sometimes, like to justify like some of his beliefs. No. So it's... it started out with like, you know, obviously I'm in support of immigration because like you know generally speaking good for the economy and that like we we do need cheap labor, blah blah blah, and like at some point down the line he we're going he starts like going on about this talking point where like. The reason why immigration is bad is because it siphons away like high IQ individuals away from like impoverished countries to, you know, just some fucking insane shit like that. And it's like, dude, aren't, aren't, aren't you supposed to be like scared of like manual labor coming into the country? Like, why are we bringing up high IQ individuals? Like, what, what the, what, what are you talking about? It just, he just fucking goes off on these tangents and we're talking about like things that are like completely like off the track.
Yeah, rip. Like, oh yeah, no, like oh, unironic brain drain. Even yeah. though we're talking about like migrant farmers, <laughs> like I said, like he's just wrong about most things. I like the dude, um, but I mean, he's he's an ANCAP. <laughs> talking about illegal immigrants on top of it, Rev. Illegal immigrants. Oh uh, yes, really. You yes, know? definitely the ones who you know um, would normally get an Einstein visa. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um. Oh God. Um, what? 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 I there's not going to be one of those zippy. That's a, that's a big and <clears throat> yeah. Let me Putin check the says list. That the left represents weakness no matter the geography. Wait, what? Um, Apparently, Putin said that about the left. Oh, so Putin doesn't like Stalin. Got it. Oh right. <laughs> um. No, there's not going to be one that qualifies that in the list, um, Zippy. But when an anarchist was on trial before other leftists. Um, <laughs> this book is so problematic. These state <laughs> these these statements that they make are just so fucking like I turn to a page randomly and there's fucking like I can't even talk about what this guy's laughing about in court. Um but <laughs> you know, it's like fucking anarchist, man. Um Oh yeah, fucking I'm not gonna read fucking Malatista fucking I mean that's like ninety pages. Right. That motherfucker's getting tried. He's like, oh, well, while I'm here, <laughs> here's my manifesto. <laughs> uh, while you have a minute, Your Honor. <laughs> um, let's see. You know what, though? Um, okay, Zippy, I'll give you a reading. I can't, I can't fit those qualifications, Zippy, but I, I will give you a reading from Defiance, and it's one I've been meaning to read for a minute. <clears throat> it's, it's one of the shorter ones. Um, it's Abby Hoffman. Um, if you guys don't know who Abby Hoffman is, then I mean, Jesus fucking do some reading <laughs> um i mean it, you know um abby hoffman was an anarchist activist in the 60, late 60s and 70s in america um got involved with the black panther party uh, uh bobby seal i think um was the sort of associate there um but hoffman was uh let me try and find what hoffman was up on um, conspiracy, um, inciting a riot, um, a few other things. Um, Hoffman appeared in court in costume, in judge's robes. <laughs> Abby showed up to court in, in judge's robes. Because, why not? Fuck him. Um, Abby was a character. Um, here, here's here's Abby's fucking profile photo. And um, fucking if you can't see what's written on, on his forehead, it's uh, fuck. Fuck is like penciled in on his forehead. Um, here is his statement. <clears throat> what? what? Um, here's his statement before the court. I feel like I've spent 15 years watching John Daly shows about history. You are there. It's sort of like taking LSD, which I recommend to you, Judge. I know a good dealer in Florida. I could fix you up. Mr. Foran, the prosecutor, says we are evil men, and I suppose this is sort of a compliment. He says that we're unpatriotic. I don't know. That kind of has some jingoistic ring. I suppose I'm not patriotic. But he says we're un-American. I don't feel un-American. I feel very American. I said it's not that the yippies hate America. It's that they feel that the American dream has been betrayed. That's my attitude. I know these guys on the wall. I know them better than you, I feel. I know Adams. I mean, I know all the Adams. 
They grew up 20 miles from my home in Massachusetts. I played with Sam Adams on the Concord Bridge. I was there when Paul Revere rode right up his uh, up on his motorcycle and said, the pigs are coming, the pigs are coming, right into Lexington. I was there. I know the Adams. Sam Adams was an evil man. Thomas Jefferson? Thomas Jefferson called for a revolution every 10 years. Thomas Jefferson had an agrarian reform program that made Mao look like a liberal. I know Thomas Jefferson. Hamilton? Well, I didn't dig the Federalists. Maybe he deserved to have his brains blown out. <laughs> Washington? Washington grew pot. He called it hemp. It was called hemp then. He was probably a pothead. Abraham Lincoln? There was another one. In 1861, Abraham Lincoln is in his inaugural address said, and I quote, When the people shall grow weary of their constitutional right to amend the government, they shall exert their revolutionary right to dismember and overthrow the government. If Abraham Lincoln had given that speech in Lincoln Park, he would be on trial right here in this courtroom because that is an insightful speech. That is the speech intended to create a riot. I don't even know what a riot is. I thought a riot was fun. Riot means you laugh. <laughs> this is a riot. They call it a riot. I didn't want to meet. Uh, I didn't want to be that serious. I suppose uh, it was supposed to be funny. I tried to be. I mean, but it was sad last night. I mean, uh, I'm not made to be a martyr. I tried to find uh, sign up a few years, but I went down there. They ran out of nails. What was I gonna do? So I ended up being funny. It wasn't funny last night sitting in a prison cell, a five by eight room with no light in the room. I could have written a whole book last night. Nothing. No light in the room, man. Bed bugs all over. They bite. I haven't eaten in six days, by the way. I'm not on a hunger strike. You can call it that. It's just that the food stinks and I can't eat it. Well, we said it was like Alice in Wonderland coming in. Now I feel like it's Alice in 1984 because I've lived through the winter of injustice in this trial. And it's fitting if you went to the South and fought for voter registration, got arrested and beaten 11 or 12 times on those dusty roads for no bread. It's also fitting that if you be arrested and tried under the Civil Rights Act, that's the way it works. Just want to say one more thing. People. I guess that's what we're charged with. When they decide to go from one state to another of mind, when they decide to fly that route, I hope they go youth fair, no matter what their age. I'll see you in Florida, Julie. Talking to the judge. Abby Hoffman, everybody. He was a character. Um, he, 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 he had open contempt for the entire proceeding. To be fair, some of that did feel like just distilled insanity. He did a lot of acid. <laughs> he he did. Don't even deny it. Just bite the bullet. Yeah, he did a lot of acid. Um, but I mean, he also had open contempt for the process. Like I said, he showed up as as a, in judges' robes for fuck's sake. <laughs> like fuck all of this. <laughs> uh, Caboose, no, you did not. Uh, but you did just miss a reading from Abby Hoffman's uh, uh, statement to the court, which is it's fucking delicious. Um, it, Rev, um, yeah, um, you can, I mean, these are easily, like, searchable terms. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to... Um, There you go. Oh, there we go. Um, all right. I suppose we should talk to Kukunut because I told him that I might talk to him tonight. I, I'm not sure if I'm ready, but, you know, <sighs> great things weren't done while people were ready. I heard a really good one the other day. Um, somebody's grandmother taught him it. Um, she said, um, it's not lying if they don't have a right to know the truth. God damn. I was like, Grandma's fucking down. I, uh, I saw that. I was like, that's some fucking wisdom. It's not lying if they don't have the right to know the truth. Like, Grandma did some shit. Right. <laughs> Grandma did some shit. Um. All right.
Um, could a lawyer theoretically draw this up as a no, no, Australia? That would be, I mean, that would almost be cause for disbarment. Are tankies always molding or mauled, uh, says Glazy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, generally. Yeah. 90, 95% of the time. Yeah. Sort of, it's sort of their brand. <laughs> hey, Butchcraft. Um, Oh, so we have to figure out what the second movie for Bad Movie Night tonight is. We got fucking, we got one of the Breens. We got the final Breen. We got um, fucking Twisted Pair up tonight. for. Um, uh, but then we got room for another one. Um, Viva, like literally like all of existence. Yeah, like every day. Every day I feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's like a shitty like Middle Easter like movie about the Middle East on Netflix. We'll see if I can find it. That might be a fun one. Just um, there is um, <clears throat> there's a couple I've got fucking like in the in the queue. Uh, there there's always just options. Like, we've got a list actually. Um, oh, Viva, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sure you don't want to put it in the chat, but if you want to DM it to me and tell me what's up, Viva, and, like, dump your soul. Um, but I'm sorry, you feel like... Like, if you feel like crying right now, Viva, cry. Like, yeah, no one's got to judge you. Yeah, like, seriously, that's 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 one of those things that fucking... I, I, I absolutely hate about, like, Western society um, and Eastern. Dude, fucking, what is it with human beings? fucking most like a good portion of humanity is that way that just fucking like oh you fucking repress the crack dude like it's there for a reason you feel better after you cry right it is an emotive release it's 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 there for a reason if you feel like crying man cry get it out nah just a lot of stupid <laughs> shit oh man uh feel it it, what fucking bushcraft you clearly don't know the, the the program he said band of brothers defiance is a good movie yeah um it's called bad movie night um <laughs> the so other direction bushcraft other direction um all right coconut give me a count hey. give me a count to five so i could get your volume level volume level straight sure. please one two three four five that'll do Thank you, Connor. Your microphone is beautiful, by the way. Uh, thank you. Um, also, the, the the arm is a yellow tech Mika. Um, I'm sorry. The arm. The yeah. The, the arm. The arm is just as expensive as the microphone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have that yet. <laughs> yeah, the the arm is a, is a Mika made by Yellow Tech. Uh, if you look them up, they're a German company. Um, yeah, like you did you you look at like it's you've just like this is a microphone stand. Like why does it cost this much? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like that. Uh they make for like radio stations and shit like that. Yeah. Um you got a nice radio voice for this. Uh, <laughs> is my mic okay? I'm not using my external mic uh for Discord. I'm using my headset. Now you're fine. Okay. <laughs> Making uh, sure. Remember the SD cards I fried? Uh, seems like uh, this two were where I had the two. I had two safety copies of two and a half months of code. <gasps> you mind if I be right back for a second? Yeah. So like I'm ready because I'm do what you gotta go do. bathroom. I've been streaming for a while already. <laughs> do what you got to so do. I just want um, to take a break. Viva, you just lost two and a half months of code. Oh, Viva. Yeah, that'll do it. Viva. I, now is not the time, but I mean, Viva. I, man. 
I'd, like I, I'm, time to I'm get like drunk. Up just thinking about time it. to I'd get fucking, drunk. I despise coding to like the f with the fiber of my fucking being. Time, <laughs> time to get drunk, Viva. There's, no, there's, fuck it. yeah, like there's. That's just that's time to get drunk. There's yeah. no fixing it. There's no recover. Like just, just get drunk and cry. <laughs> yeah, get drunk. Worry about it later. Yeah, like there's no point. Oh, fuck that, man. That's why you back up the backups of the backups of the backups. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 very much that if you if you don't if you have two, you have one, three, two, you know the the rule. Uh, yeah, if you've got if you've got one, you've got none. If you've got two, you've got one. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, Especially if you're a prolific coder, like two and a half months could be, I mean, thousands and thousands of lines of code. Oh my God, Viva. <laughs> was it for, was it for the project I think it's for Viva or was it for something else? Because if it's for the project, I'm thinking. Yes. Oh, man. Viva. Fuck. Look, I ain't, I ain't going to fucking call you out, Viva. Um, but let's just say that project could literally, like... It would change people's lives. I'm not understating that. Um, that project would change people's lives. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to give too much away about Viva because Viva plays a lot of stuff close to the vest. Um, but Viva's involved in, like, industry and stuff that, like, literally can make a difference in people's lives who have disabilities and medical handicaps and stuff like that that project literally could like be the difference between somebody being like in a depressive state because of their physical bullshit and them having abilities that they wouldn't otherwise have that's yeah fuck viva i'm sorry man that that fucking blows <sighs> off-site backups viva off-site backups. Use them. Uh, um, yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. And it's not like I have time with so many people doing the same thing. It's just a rush who was first. Yeah, no, Viva. Like, yeah, there is there is a rush to market on that one, too. There's a crunch on that. I I got nothing for you, man, but fucking sympathy and compassion. That's that's brutal. That's fucking brutal. Uh, the only thing I suggest is that like those SD cards might be recoverable, but you'd have to spend a buck and send them to a, a data rack. On track, I'm sure has European service, for sure. Um just depends how much it's worth to you guys what nope one literally exploded never mind god damn i've seen them recover um i mean a, a floppy from a house fire before but <clears throat> yeah um also kids um always check your um <laughs> your spec adapter for your electronics. <laughs> See what your I input voltage and amperage are and what your output amperage and voltage are. <laughs> Just, you know, one of those things, if you're working on those sorts of projects, um, boys and girls and our NB friends. Um, so I don't know anything about you, Coconut. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so if you want, I could do a guess a little introduction for everybody if you like. Yeah, that'd be useful for, I mean, I suppose them too, but me mainly. 
Sure. Uh, yeah, and I'm always willing to talk on or off stream. Doesn't matter to me. Like I said, I, I know we didn't. That's the only thing that we didn't know about. Um, so I'm a content creator. I produce video content. I'm also like on a network that like restreams my stream on certain days where I guess you can say I have a show, but you know, it's just a live stream. I'm more interactive. A lot of other people do presentations on there. Everybody has different types of content, but ultimately we're all are anarchists. Um, I guess if you want to use that word, it depends. Uh, do you consider definition. yourself a capitalist? Um, I don't use those terms usually. No. Mm. Um, so yeah, I don't usually use those terms, but um, I don't, I do think they're, they're also just faulty just by the nature of using those, but, and if you want, I could explain on that, but, at the, but I do want to define anarchy first of all, right? Since that's like the point of what I think really ties us together. And I think that's, it's essential to find common ground, I would assume. So anarchy, we can break it down in Greek, uh, and archon means no rulers. Yeah, and my, that's all it my, means. My channel doesn't need that. What do you mean? My my people already know all this, so okay. Like cool. it, like we we we, no, that's good. we know what anarchists are. Our suspicion is that you're not an anarchist; is that you're a capitalist. Okay. Well, wait. What made you think that I'm a capitalist? Because only, uh, one person was familiar with you and described you as a potential ancap. Oh, okay. Who's that? Maybe don't, I know who that is. I don't need to name check anybody. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I don't. I don't ever call myself that, and I barely even call myself an anarchist. So, but that's technically what we are. Um, and I say we because like there's hundreds of people in the network and outside of it. And Gus is one of those people. Um, he's one of the people who was in voice chat. It's up to you if you want to bring him here. But I said in the chat, he's just if you ever wanted like a third party in case like you know everything anything goes off skew whatever. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Having uh, I know you have another person on mic with us too. They could always. Hello. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, Gus could also provide more perspective. There's a lot of other people with these perspectives. And in, in particular, um, if you want me to just cut to the chase, usually what we talk about is natural law, morality. And I, and I did talk about that. Like, I did make a message about it in your chat. And you were like, oh, natural law. <laughs> and I know you had, like, a little face. You're like, what? what? That I know maybe you've heard of it before. Or maybe you, you don't like that you, that term being used. But I, I can explain it, of course, because of it has gone through many different alterations over time. Um, and I'm used to doing that with a lot of people that I meet. And I'm always willing to share resources. The number one thing I want people to do um, anywhere uh, who are listening to this is look into the knowledge yourself. I mean, I have tons of resources, study guides, books, transcripts, presentations for everybody to learn anything about this. And I have no problem sharing that with them. So they, they can look at, into it for themselves. They don't have to take my word for it. You know, the last thing I want is somebody believing what I say, you know, I'm going to try my best through my perspective to understand the truth as we may call it. Um, but I'm only one person and there's many people with many different ways of delivering the same knowledge through different terms um, and different words. So don't get tricked by, you know, some of the words we might use, such as like natural law, for example, when they represent ideas that are deeper, that philosophically ground our understanding of true anarchism is what, you know, I like to call it if when I use the word real anarchism, because there are, let's face it, a lot of the reason why I started with that introduction is because there are a lot of anarchists who don't always break it down for people and say anarchon just means no rulers it doesn't mean chaos because the first assumption a lot of people make is oh my gosh chaos and all this stuff right and you're probably used to hearing that because <laughs> i mean i hope probably most of your community might be aware of that but because when we use that word it's like that's what people assume but that has nothing to do with its actual definition so i like to define things i like to break things down and when it comes to all these different concepts that's something that um we like to do is break everything down so um, I'm not sure with any pre, uh, questions or presupposition, uh, you know, um, any like superstition, superstitions you have about this or anything um, that gets in your way when it comes to this idea of natural law um, or morality. Um, but those ideas are all intertwined here when it comes to understanding our natural rights. So, you know, and maybe you don't see natural rights as a thing. I'd have to get your perspective on all that. And if you want to share, feel free. And don't worry. Um, I know some people in my chat said, like, you like to get heated with certain things. Get as heated as you like. I don't really care. <laughs> Be yourself. Um, it doesn't bother me. Do you. Um, you can get as heated as you want with me. It's not, it'll be fine. 
No, I just hold people's feet to the fire. Good. Good, yeah. So mm -hmm. if you want to do that with me, go ahead. But, like, I'm not here to debate. Like, I just want to tell you right up front, it's not my intention. If anything, I just want to deliver knowledge to people and have them look into it for themselves. I'm not here to say I'm proven. I'm right. I got all the answers. Trust me. Like I said, it's not about that. It's not about my ego or anything like that. Tell me about yourself, coconuts. Okay. <laughs> You've well, just done seven minutes I, not answering my question. I'm Who are you? Creator. What the fuck are you? What, I, of course, I we're, we're, all being, content, I, we're all content. We're all content creators, man. At the end of the day, where are you from? What you? What do you? What's your deal? What are you about? Or what do you do in your I day to day? That's true. I mean, I'm from, I'm who from are the you US, as a person? Eastern U.S. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm from the Eastern U.S. I'm a health coach. I, I studied nutrition and all that, too. Um, I kind of tie in a lot of those ideas as well into healing the body, healing the world as I see it. Um, there's, there's a lot of different perspectives on all that. I do like to have, I guess you could say, philosophical conversations. Um, but I do want to look at the simple things because I believe that is where the most truth could be found um, in just observing that, well, nature is the answer. You know, like we are to understand the world around us and understand how we can best harmonize with that world. What is the optimal world? What is the most sustainable world? And truthfully, that is a world of anarchy, but you know, it is really simply the state of nature. It's, it's simply the, the way of the world that it's meant to be that humans were destined for through freedom, through all the ages, through the Declaration of Independence in America, declar you know, saying these are your natural rights. Um, there was a step toward freedom. It wasn't all the way understanding freedom. It didn't get to statism, right? Statism, I think we can maybe both recognize as the problem. I'm not sure if you agree, but um, that is mainly one of the one of the problems. And there's, of course, psychological conditions underlying that whole ideology, that whole belief system, that whole religion, ultimately, the, the religion of authority, of uh, money and in science and in even new age religion essentially you know thinking you could just meditate away all your problems so and and this might frighten some people um some of my words hopefully not that's not ever my intention is to ever offend anybody I just want to make that clear um i'm simply sharing my perspectives upon all this and like i said i encourage people to look into it um i know i'm sorry i'm not talking so much about myself but i don't like to talk about myself because there isn't really much to say about myself like what i like to go outside i appreciate nature you could probably tell from talking to me um but i don't know much about you either and uh if you want to share about yourself i always uh watch you and i see you're always in some sort of political comments conversation and i don't know much about you either um but you can share as much as you'd like as well um i'm who who in chat wants to do kai's bio I'm an open book pretty much to my community, so um, most of them know basically everything about me. <laughs> um, Caboose, he's gay! Um, <laughs> we all are, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> fucking uh, uh, Cupcake with Kai as a gun expert. Um, can shoot a moving target from 200 uh, yards. Uh, Kai is a sex maniac, ex grifter, ex coder. Um, Fuck it. <laughs> um, how many tabs do I have open? Well, how many windows? How many tabs on how many? I bet windows? I have more. I. That's that's a, that's a good comp uh, competition right there. I, I bet I have more tabs open. I would prefer to manage my memory uh, well. I come from IT. <laughs> Um, so the concept of keeping uh, 150 tabs open is just poor memory management that I could be allocating to other things. <laughs> um, my cat's got eight rolling. Um, yeah. On, let's see, on the left-hand window, I have seven tabs. Uh, I've got one tab on Firefox at present. I've got four tabs on that window. I've got... You see, this uh, is how six, you're describing seven, yourself. Eight, I don't nine, know what else to say either. <laughs> Twelve tabs. Well, I got asked a question. Uh, one tab on that and one tab on that. Um, how do you feel about men wearing skirts? Swede wants to know. <laughs> well, sure, why not? If you, if you want to do that with your life, I mean, sure, why not? Do whatever you wish you want to do as long as you don't harm anybody or violate another person's property in any way, yeah. shape, or form, then you're good. <laughs> I am. Do you find it positive? Do you find it positive? Cat asked. Yeah. What do you mean positive? Like, 
good? What do you mean? Yeah, like, is, is it a good thing? Is it morally neutral? I'm neutral to it. It's passive. I don't really care. Have you People ever, can do have you ever worn a skirt? It's irrelevant what my opinion is of what someone else should do. <laughs> Dude, come on, man. It's Friday. After this show, we are all going to get fucking high and watch bad movies. Fucking turn it off, man. Turn it off. What, Learn to me? turn it off. Yeah, like, have you ever worn a skirt? <laughs> uh i have actually i did a drag show there we uh, go now we're getting to know each other yeah dude heck yeah uh yeah i did it for uh one of my animals was was dying and like there was this uh veterinary place that was doing a drag show and so i offered myself to do it for the sake of the fact they saved my dog rock the fuck on <laughs> that's that's based as shit that's fucking uh, that's something we can touch at least yeah um i wear nearly exclusively skirts these days because they're far more... I, I live in the desert. They're, it just makes sense. It's Hot, functionally dude. useful. Hot. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no. I'm, I, gr I grew up in Vermont. Um, I fucking have lived all over this country. I've traveled all over this country. I've, uh, I grew up in IT. My mom put me in front of a mainframe terminal at age four. Um, by 14, I was doing custom programming. By 25, I was an independent I, uh, IT consultant in the Las Vegas Valley, servicing large fucking clients. That's basically my entire career history right there. Um, nice. I started wow. uh, I started listening to, my mom had me listening to fucking Guthrie's and shit like that. Um, also, mm -hmm. like in the car around like age four, singing along to Alice's Restaurant. I was anti-authoritarian before I knew there was even authority. Um, I, uh, I grew up in sort of the rave punk scene with a mind on the internet and in technology. So I was bound to stumble into anarchistic philosophy one way or the other. Um, by, um, my late teen years, I'm firmly just an anarchist in my early twenties. I'm an Occupy organizer. Um, I have participated in black block actions and direct actions of various sorts and types that we don't get into specifics because that's basic OPSEC. Um, I suffer from progressive small fiber neuropathy. Um, that's the short version of it. It's idiopathic progressive small fiber polyneuropathy uh, would be the long form version of that. Um, and so I live every day in pain. Um, by 28, that starts kicking in. By about 32, I'm burned out of IT. Um, and a few years ago, I decided that I needed to do a podcast because I needed to scream into the void. And I started doing that. And I built up a community on Podbean Network. And it's how I met some of the OGs, including Kat, who's on the line with you right now. Um, and huh? through that process, I learned that... <clears throat> I should go back to anarchistic education and I should start doing that since um, I came at it the correct way, I, uh, I, as I say, um, because I think the theory heads are problematic. Um, I think yeah. that you I think the ones that come from the streets and then become theory. Uh, theory heads are the version of anarchists that do the most good because, um, as Kat likes to say, s fucking scoop some soup, um, or as I say, go make a fucking sandwich. Um, philosophical conversation doesn't feed the homeless. Um, right. And so that is sort of the biography, as it were. There's a lot more in that, as people alluded to. <laughs> um, I used to teach firearms classes as a teenager. My family is heavily schooled. Awesome in that arena uh and very well connected to elements of that um yeah. and so that cool. is an That's awesome dude. element of my childhood as well um but yes uh my cam is out of focus uh for uh for me it focuses on breen uh <laughs> uh the man the myth the legend the messiah himself neil breen um <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, what burned me out? Capitalism. Whether business, um, business burned me out. Okay. I st I still love and adore technology. Um, I still yeah. build stuff and have projects constantly. Um, but the fact and the matter is, is that business sucks. Um, I hated charging people. <clears throat> I hated I hated the contract side of it. Yeah. You wanted to be able to do what you wanted to do, right? Just have more freedom in that regards. Um, Is that correct? I just stopped. I hate take it, talking about money. 
Yeah, I, find well, it, I agree. I find the entire topic um, gauche. Thank goodness. And unpalatable. Thank goodness. Oh my gosh, thank goodness. Because, yeah, I mean, right off the bat, you see, I have a motto that I live by, and, you know, I also started, like, a movement and stuff. Sorry I didn't mention all that. And, I, I mean, you just kind of learn as you kind of, I guess, get to know me. <laughs> Sorry I didn't come out with an awesome intro like you did, but that was awesome. Seriously, good job. Um, and you went through a lot, so great to see um, that you've built up a community, though. That's really awesome, um, the way it sounds. It's awesome. Um, and... But like my, one of my mottos, what I was saying is it's called nature is the answer, right? So I don't, I'm not a fan of money. It's man-made, you know, I'm not a fan of man-made laws. It's all government. It's all fake. It's, frankly, it's just what a set of buildings, a set of people, See, they're people like I you and I. I don't believe nature is the answer. I'm a transhumanist. Okay. Well, and that's, that's fine. As long as you don't impose your will on other people, then we have authority, right? We have statism. So it doesn't matter, you know, what somebody wants in an anarchic world, they can manifest what they desire. All that matters is that we are free. And so we can desire what we seek to desire within our own lives, upon our own will of choice. <laughs> Cupcake. Um. So yeah, I mean, I, it's not like an issue with me. It may, personally, it may, but like, it's not going to concern me. In the grand scheme of things, if you're not saying, oh my gosh, this must be done, and Pe this has to be people, done, and by threat of violence. People you know what I mean? But if you want, that you if might you be an agree with that, then you, you present knowledge, right? You share why you want that, and then if people understand it and they agree with it, then they'll do it. The truth rises above in a free world. That's the beautiful thing. Nowadays, we have censorship, you know, taking out certain people's views, especially these type of views that are very anti-authoritarian, you know, anti-establishment, the, the very idea of the establishment and having that authority there. So that compromises them at the very root, which is why I tackle it. It's because I want true freedom. And I'm assuming you also want true freedom, right? Uh, well, For creating common ground? If you... It's Friday, man. Define true... Oh, I'm sorry. Define, <laughs> you, define, you like define to have more fun on truth, I'm sorry, I didn't know. It Define true <laughs> freedom. Yeah. True freedom means including the possibility of chaos. It includes all things because chaos is a teacher wrongdoings will always be committed. The question is, how do we limit its manifestation or reduce its manifestation? And thus, that's where we question the existence of government, because it's always, you know, by the people who claim we're for the common good, we're by the common people. And they're the ones that actually cause millions of deaths annually called, called democide, the number one cause of unnatural death, right? And we saw that in World War II, and that was the result of order following. It was the result of statism. That right there is what gets rid of our freedoms. True freedom is to understand that you own yourself and that no one has the right to rule over you. There's no such thing as that right. You have the right to, to what you want to do, what you want to put in your own body, what you want to do with your own life. That, that goes for everything, right? But it doesn't mean that necessarily, you know, what you're going to do is necessarily right or wrong. Um, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's got to be... There is knowledge behind it. There's got to be knowledge behind it. We can't just go about our leaves just believing, oh, this won't hurt me, this won't do anything. There is knowledge behind it. That's why I said, like, with your transhumanist view, that's fine. Even though I personally disagree, it's not a big deal because you present knowledge to the table. I present knowledge to the people. People decide for themselves what they want to do with their own body, their own property, and everybody's happy. There's no promise because nobody's imposing their will on someone else and saying, you have to obey by threat of violence, blah, 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 right? So, <laughs> um... I have fun with this. I know maybe it's like super serious because, you know, I guess it can be for certain people, but I, I for me, just talking about it, I, I don't have a problem with it because it, for me, it's spiritually enlightening. It's saying, hey, you know, you own yourself and no one owns you and you don't have the right to own anyone else. You know, I, I own me, you own you. Very simple. And I think most people understand that, but then putting that into application is like, oh, well, uh, we employ the government. They're our servant. We can pay them. And it's like, it's not voluntary. You never gave your consent. And it's still, like, by the very nature of it, it's immoral. Uh, because it's it's always a monopoly on violence. I got a question. Sure. And we can How define you... government, too, and all that, but... Yeah, I'm sorry. That was like very broad statements, but uh, yeah, well, that's kind of something I want to narrow down on because a sure. lot of what you're stating seems to be like in relation to like trying to avoid <laughs> like, of violence. So yeah, I think Gus just told me he's trying to have fun. Chill. <laughs> sorry. Uh, well, I was yeah, yeah. I was just gonna ask like, how do you define violence then? Like, what, where is the limit there? 
Well, violence as in violation, you have to violate somebody's rights. Whoa. <laughs> oh, sorry. My dad came in here. Yeah, I, I know what transhumanism is. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, uh, what do you say? How do you define violence? Yeah. Um, sorry, my dad distracted me. So, yeah, um, violation of somebody's rights, like I said, somebody's pr form of property. Your rights are a form of property. Your life is a form of property. Your freedom is a form of property. Um, and anytime, anytime a wrongdoing is committed, a victim is created, um, a theft, some sort of theft is taking place. So you, by talking about violence, I have to talk about wrongdoing because violence in the case of murder is the taking of somebody's life, right? So it's stealing their life from them, their own rightful possession. So, um, you can go into every form of wrongdoing, um, under natural law in this regard so you don't have to use these terms and you don't have to say you know this is how you definitively know rights because you can understand this through a common sense basis too right you don't have to understand it through this like i guess you can say legalese or whatever you want to call it but it's common sense most people don't want to murder other people they know it's instinctively inherently wrong so um you know we are supposed to be on the same page with that but yet people will let it be done by government and that's where the question comes in it's like how come you won't murder someone else, but yet you'll let government do it? And just because you're order following, does that abdicate your responsibility to carrying out the action that was still wrong? Say, oh, I was just following orders. Just because you were following orders does not make the action any better than it was previously, right? It, it's inherently that action is wrong to commit violence on someone else. And by the way, we have to we have to dis disassociate violence from force in this regard. We're just simply um, the non-aggression principle with the self-defense principle. I don't harm you, and I defend myself. Everybody has the right, inherent right, to defend themselves against an aggressor, somebody who is trying to commit violence against them and violate their rights. You have every right in the world to defend your rights against those who seek to destroy those rights by committing a wrong on you. That's why we define rights by understanding right versus wrong, morality. And like I said, you don't have to see it necessarily through the most objective, legally standard to understand it's more so just common sense or karma or the golden rule or the you know law of cause and effect or moral law or the many other terms that it goes by. <laughs> and sorry if I... Um, I know Gus is saying I'm probably talking too much too, but I like to explain things in depth and hopefully you don't mind that. I'm used to creating videos, so I'm used to talking like crazy. I you know it's, it's all right. See, the reason why I ask you this is because, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna rustle Kai's jimmies here, but I, I'm, you know, I, I ascribe to a strain of anarchism known as egoism. Are you familiar? Ego egoism? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've heard of that. Um, yeah. Not have you exactly sure? Have you read any Sterner? Uh, who is it? Sterner? Max Sterner. Max he was Sterner, a no. how yeah, he was a he not. was a German philosopher who was around in the same period that Marx was. He was part of the Young Hegelians. You know that would be Marx, Engels. Um, who else was part of it? Basically, a bunch of like German philosophers who were like very dedicated to the study of Hegel and like you know the whole mm -hmm. you know synthesis, like all that theory and all that bullshit. And right. Sterner was one of the first to break away from said group and basically kind of reject Hegelian dialectics. So, to cut a, to cut a lot of the fluff off, Sterner, if I had to summarize his philosophy in like one in one sentence, it would basically be the person who, when asked if there is no God, everything is permissible. Sterner would be the person that says yes. He is a complete amoralist, someone who rejects like pretty much like all social constructs like by their foundational level, because mm -hmm. he believes that essentially um, ideas of culture, ideas of like certain constructs that we ascribe to things like gender, religion, the state, so on mm -hmm. and so forth, are things that people don't truly consent to because we're born into a society that is always constantly putting these things onto us. Right. Thus, the goal of the egoist is to reject what he call what you know these things, and, and he calls them essentially the specters of the mind, because they're not really things that you ascribe to. They're not really things that you truly believed in. They were put on you. You never really you never really consented to them, so you should reject them, and thus create, you know, essentially let your own ego, you know, your sense of self, kind of manifest what you wanted to be absent of those influences. So, okay. because of that, since I ascribe to this theory of, like, anarchism, 
I'm not really like a big fan of like appealing to nature or appealing to like these rights. So I'm just trying to figure out like where does the core of like how you justify these rights well as being right like how, how does that like what, what's the thought process how, like what's the epistemological basis behind that the thought process behind knowing that something is right versus wrong no 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 like rights because you appeal because you stated that the way that you define violence is like the violation of your rights so how mm -hmm. do rights come about and how do we prove them how do we like are they a tangible thing? Are they like a moral axiom? Like what's the, how, do, born how do we with get you. deeper there? They're born with you. Like, you know how it says in the Declaration of Independence, it says you're born with unalienable rights type of scenario. It's universal. It's eternal. It's immutable. It's not created by man. So right off the bat, and by the way, I'm, you know, I'm against all types of organized religion. This has nothing to do with religion in that regards okay yeah, it doesn't make me this or that it's just understanding that morality does not necessarily have to come from religion and it doesn't it really doesn't have to there's a science behind morality that can are be you a seen moral as absolutist? And other ideas yeah are you a moral absolutist um well i'm not sure what you mean by that term absolutist if you're meaning like oh well there's a certain right versus wrong is that what you mean I'm just typing. Um, it's the uh, uh, it basically that there there is intrinsically right and wrong. Yeah, yeah, like like you're a deontologist, basically. Well, we can't define rights, nor can we really define a lot of things, um, any sort of form of natural justice without that foundation. So yeah, that would be you're a necessary a moral absolutist. foundation. Hmm. Okay. Um. Housekeeping, housekeeping. Uh, 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 Tino, to, uh, Tino Tomasi, thank you for the sub f uh, a while ago. Um, and Mad Scientist, fucking look at that. Eight months. Look, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Bezos bucks, uh, Mad so Scientist. If, if So let me get this straight, though. So if, if I'm a moral absolutist, then do you agree with that or no? No. Okay, so then you are a moral relativist. I guess we can both right. use those terms. Well, that, that's the thing is we got the scale. Kai is a right. moral relativist. I am a more. I'm an amoralist. I don't believe in morals. Yeah. Okay. I would say yeah. it's a subjective con uh, construct. And yeah, Cat would say, which is what the, the Satanic would, Church says. Cat would say that yeah. fucking fuck the construct. Yeah, pretty much. Are you aware that? I mean, and just this is just a fun fact, right? For people who want to research. Do you know what the Church of Satan, like, their main ethics are? Yeah, in, like, are, we talking probably, about, like, an, are we talking about Anton LaVey? Or yes. Like the, the, oh, Anton okay. LaVey, no, the, other the one. Church of Satan from New York. They have a website. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're interesting. They are kind of, like, I wouldn't call them anarchic, but, like, a lot of, like, what they kind of push towards, like, has a... The way that they question, like, Christianity as, like, foundations kind of, like, uh, has some anarchistic leanings that I find really interesting. I think they're pushing for the exact opposite, and I can explain why. Um, because it is, and this is where, and there is a lot of problems with ego, and that has to be talked out about too, I'm sure, but I'm not like here to go into all those specifics, but, um, and maybe, you know, you're not, you're not saying, well, we should embrace ego all the way and just follow whatever we think is right. Um, but it's, and it's also, it's another way to look at it is like, as long as you don't suppress your conscience because i use conscience rather than ego to sort of represent the i the exercise of right versus wrong are right? you like to decide are you familiar with yeah? spirit science um and well you can consider this a spiritual science natural law within itself since there are laws that are universal and immutable and eternal right so they would be invisible and they would be everlasting they would be spiritual um because since they govern everywhere all the time you can make that connection if you want. Um, but come yeah, I, I never really used that word spiritual before, but I've come to understand maybe I have some <laughs> aspects of that. Um, but but yeah, I... Uh, what was I trying to get at before that? You uh, So the Satanic Bible, yeah. So they have the Satanic Bible. It's like their book. And if you look at the Church of Satan, you look right on their website, you go to their section with FAQ. Like the first thing that it says is we believe in a subjective morality. And they want to embrace instinct as much as possible. You follow your instinct. Do whatever your instinct tells you to do. Very animalistic. Not yeah. very high order, high consciousness, you know, brain thinking with the neocortex. 
and using our conscience to decide right versus wrong. It's rather just follow your instinct, sort of a left brain in, in a sense uh, of, of dominance in, when you look at the science for left versus right brain. And I know some people might refute that, but regardless of that, even just looking at the ideas within it. So, and, and I know people will try to refute every little word I say. The idea is for people to look into it. Like, because people don't know about natural law. Nobody was taught it in schools or anything like that. You know, they're taught the, they taught maybe Americanism, which is just another form of statism. And it's still a form of man's law. And like the constitution gives you rights. It's a piece of paper. What are you talking about? So man gives rights to other human beings. And that's how you get the idea of I get to rule over you. Is it's because man creates rights. Man creates right and wrong. So I could just choose whatever I want to do and justify it by the means of, as if enough people believe it, then we can do it. But no, when I say, you know, right and wrong are objective in nature, in this sense, is like understanding, well, it doesn't matter what man says, and man isn't God, why should man try to be God? And that's where Satanism comes in to say, reject God, be God yourself. You know, that's what Satanism, that's the core of what that ideology pushes, and you can look at their own text for that, and I just encourage people to look into it for themselves. It's very interesting, for sure. Hume, and, um, Hume's guillotine. Yeah. Hmm? Hume's guillotine. Um, is that another text? It, it's, it's, uh, it's a criticism um, made by ethicists who make normative claims about what ought to be. Um, it's, okay. it's a thought experiment. Um, now, I also it's did an, a video it, on it's appeal an, to nature, by it, the way. It's an is-ought problem. Um, and yeah, we ha I, we, we I have, did a video on that. Well, Hume's guillotine. Like, <laughs> I mean, this is... Swede literally wants to come on and, like, have at you with it. Um, he's, he's champing at the bit. Um, how do we test that these morals exist? So I get that question a lot, for, especially from like this Twitch side of the world, and there is a level of intuition that's involved here. So, so like, right you're relying bat, on sorry, the, I can't give you all you're the You're relying on the, the instinct because, that you criticize the Leveists for utilizing. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it and say, okay, well, there is objective morality, or you can look at it and say, well, as long as no one's conscience is being pushed upon another conscience and everybody is using their own conscience, then we're fine. Right, because the whole idea of statism is that certain people's wills are being imposed upon others. So um, you can look at it through either lens, and they both kind of line up essentially to the same thing, which is that you own yourself. So, I, like I said, you don't have to view it like that, but it is one way to view it, and it provides you a very solid foundation. Now, where's the proof for it? Well, there is something called the trivium. There's something called the um, there's different principles, hermetic principles in nature through which these laws are expressed. Um, and you can look up, you know, the hermetic principles. Um, you can look up into karma, how long are it's you been really around, gonna, and all are you the really different gonna forms throw, of natural law are you really that represent gonna be morality. Are you really going to toss the thrice born at me? We're going to bring Hermes Trismegistus into this conversation? Well, it's all connected because this is all occultism, right? This is I, laws that are hidden that people don't know about. So you bringing them to light to say, hey, here are laws that you might have never considered, but they're always at work in understanding right versus wrong, and we've always been destined to understand it. Like, since the beginning of time, there's people always talking about, well, you know, your behavior has consequences, objective consequences in nature. And that is, that's the basis to this, is these laws govern do you your actions. Do you consider yourself an alchemist? That's what makes it different. Do you consider yourself a modern-day alchemist? I know people talk about alchemy, but like I said, I don't really, I don't know about the, all those terms, but... I know if I can probably how do you not know sure. those I, I feel like that's a dodge how do you not know those terms if you're studied in uh, I know, I know in the thrice alchemy, born but, then how do you not know that alchemy is the spiritual uh, is the uh, physical practice balanced against the hermetic practices I mean I know that alchemy is there and all my friends talk about alchemy all the time I just know I just don't use the term I'm saying I don't say I'm an alchemist that's all I'm saying um do you, like, do, you classi do you classify me, yourself as a hermeticist? I don't. I, I don't classify myself as anything. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> um, are you well schooled? Are you well schooled in hermetics? And uh, do they found? Uh, do they found a significant portion of your beliefs? Um, well, no, I think it's very interesting. It's not significant for me personally, but it is significant when you look into these laws a, a lot. 
Um, personally, I like to go by more of um, the, the more common sense perspective. Although I talk a lot about natural law, you don't have to use it. And I keep saying that because like, it's just, you don't have to. I, I, I made the point for conscience, which isn't the same necessarily as instinct because you're still basing it on some sort of intention that's there to say, hey, it's inherently wrong for me to harm somebody. Do you believe you in, know, whether do you believe in you the law, law of attraction? Or objective, if we can agree that it's wrong to murder someone, then I'm okay with that. Cool, awesome. <laughs> Do you believe in the law of attraction? Well, this is the law of attraction, too. There you go, Rev. That's just for you, Rev. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, like, it goes by hundreds of names. I'm not kidding. I actually have a video about the history of natural law. I mean, the amount of times they've used different names to describe objective morals in nature, even if you can't understand them exactly as, like, oh, here's the scientific proof, here's a paper, not necessarily to describe the act of conscience or high-order thinking or intuition. If it's more of a spiritual science, it's not going to be easy to find scientific literature on it, but rather, maybe you have to ask yourself that question as an individual, as a human being. So, I, I do think there is a level of personal connection to this, and not so much science. Because so scientism then, is a religion within itself. So then, I have a question then. Sure. Would you would you reject me as as being an anarchist because I don't ascribe to any of this on any level? Any of what? Any of what you've basically just talked about for like the past thirty minutes? Well, for, like I don't. It, I don't without, it, no, it's not that I reject you. I'm not going to reject anybody, but I don't think that um, the argument for being an anarchist and manifesting those conditions will be as as impactful as they can without having a grounding foundation and some level of tapestry and intention within the universe to say hey this is anarchy is natural to say that it's all around us and it's simply a matter of reality coming to understand that by understanding ourselves and our environment that is something that I, I see as essential to this process. So um, take as it as you wish. I'm not going to tell you what you are or what you should do. Take it as you wish um, on this matter. But I do think that it will provide a really grounded foundation for achieving what we want. Because if we all want freedom here, we all agree we want true freedom and understand that that means the possibility of chaos. That means, you know, things happening that are bad, but the statism myth is gone from society. Um, how do you get rid of that? There has to be some sort of foundation of morals, whether it's objective or, um, like I said, through the conscience. And there... Yeah, we can say something? No, Estrella just got me. <laughs> like, Estrella okay. just got me. Yeah, it... Awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, I have so many videos about all this, too. And For it's sure. like, I'm not the best person to speak on everything, I don't think. But I try my best. Um, and I'm like the youngest person in the network, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's a lot of people who are way older than me talking about this stuff. Um, and they have books and texts and materials like out of this mind. If you want evidence, I mean, goodness gracious. Um, Gus, some of these people go out of their way. Gus, give me a count to five so I can Howdy. check so I can check your volume. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Thank you kindly. Nice. Um, first, before we go any further my yeah. my magical library collection is ordered in the uh, just north of uh, it's 12838 texts and books i am well studied and schooled in the uh, in the alchemy and hermetics and spiritual sciences of some of these things that you're talking about no i don't believe in them i find them an interesting topic to study due to the ramifications and influence they have within certain schools of western philosophy Gus, two sentences. I want to see what you can do with it. So what's the question? No, no. You said, uh, you literally said, this is why I wanted to come on. I can explain what I mean in like two sentences. <laughs> give me two sentences. Just give me anything on anything. Give me two sentences. I want to see what you can put up. Okay. This is going to be on the spiritual aspect of anarchy of how I uh, got into it. Okay. I started it out as a basic bitch and cap, right? And then I figured, wow, okay, so the money is the money aspect is a very corrupting part. That works. So I started meditating more. And uh, found my way from there and found more content creators that 
would go along with yeah um oh yeah uh, sorry um someone walked in okay um I find it interesting to see the the the, the new agers uh, having latched on to uh, Anna. Yeah, new age. It, well, sorry, that's yes. Um, for I'm not a fan of it either. We have presentations about it exposing the new most, age deceptions. For most, yes, for most people, I, I'm sorry. The yes, I both understand, understand, and overstand what you're meaning. Oh. This linguistic exercise, uh, uh, masturbatory exercise in the repronunciation of conscience and, and anarchy, and I'm I'm familiar with this. I've been down this road mm. before, okay. and it ends up it usually flat Earth and like space travel denial territory for all intents and purposes. Um, it makes most of my community who have deep schoolings in, you know, levels of PhD and these sorts of things intensely uncomfortable, uh, to, to say the very least. We've got an economist, uh, and finance expert that literally wants to just go to town with the philosophy conversation with you right now. Um, and I'm just sort of holding a lot of them at bay. Um... But see, we can do this all years long. It would take forever. I have videos on this stuff. There's a reason why I produce videos, why I'm writing a book and all this stuff. You can bring them on. People, I'm willing to talk to them. Because people, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you want. But the thing is, it's just, if their intention is to just cause a debate, like I said, I'm personally, I'm not in for that because I just want to share the ideas because I know people who care about it will look into it. And if there's validity to it, then they will understand it and they will apply it within their lives. If they don't see validity to it, so be it. But I will be honest with you, I do think our, the ideas that we're sharing with you, natural law and such, will be growing immensely in the coming years. And the new age yeah, I'm the scared because I feel like you're right. Um, <laughs> you've still yet to define natural law. Well, okay, so I said it's golden rule, it's all these things. So then if I want to go further with that... No, I want, Gus, laws... I want to give Gus huh? a shot at it. Sure, good. Okay. <laughs> you can look at it in a very simple way as deontological ethics deontological however you want to pronounce it I that's a, it's a very close it's very close in how they apply thank so, you thank you guys i like i guess the next question there would then be why do you reject like what would be your foundational problem with like utilitarian ethics because utility doesn't always uh Starting starting out things with utility doesn't always uh, lead to the best outcome for everybody. And it leads to classism, capitalism, communism, always a ruling class if you have utilitarianism. And no one has a right to rule other people or tell them what to do. But then I guess the question would be... If deontol... Because the thing is that like deontological ethics have also been used to justify authoritarianism. We can look towards the crusade or really any sort of like religious persecution. Mm -hmm. We can look towards like, I mean, we can look towards like, for example, the English empire. They used a lot of deontological ethics, you know, justifying what they did. You know, they used like, bits and pieces kind of, well, I guess the best way I can put it is out of context to justify what they did. No true Scotsman. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I was going to get at is that like, I guess if I'm going to take the mantle for utilitarian ethics is that my biggest problem with the ontological ethics is that it takes the problems of utilitarianism, but kind of enshrines them with some sort of like objective standard. Like I think like, because the thing is that like ultimately utilitarianism and the ontological ethics ultimately falls upon like, it falls down to the individual person who ascribes to either of these moral uh ethic systems to actually define what is like what what provides the most utility or deontologically what is right or wrong so the thing is that like anyone theoretically could justify anything with either of the two systems would and you harm someone yes what happened? yes yeah i'll bite i'll you bite would? the bullet yeah i would are you shitting me there's <laughs> uh, there's a whole host of reasons that you might harm someone yeah. not in the case of self-defense what for Oh, so you you, never... you consider self defense right. not harm? It isn't because of I again I, I discerned divorce from violence and self defense and the non aggression principles. 
Right, but this is kind of what I'm getting at, is that, like, this is the problem of deontological ethics, is that, like, Religions anyone have always find... been there for control. Religions are separate from this idea, and I want to make that really clear. Um, it, it's like, I know people have used these ideas for control, like, even, like, National Socialists and everyone in the past, like, the natural laws claim this, and natural laws this and that. But, like, looking at the foundation of what we're talking about is, yeah, there is some sort of level of objective morality in nature because laws govern everything in nature, everything in the world. There has to be a law for that of behavior. How do you And we weren't taught that in schools on purpose. Uh, how, about, you know, how about this? If you can bite this bullet, I'll take it. Sure. So, you believe in property rights, right? So, like, stealing is bad or whatever, and you can defend yourself. Yeah. If need. So yeah, if I claim that a piece, so if I claim that a blade of grass was my property, and I had it, it was it was in my hand, somebody took it from me. Would you be okay with me just like turning that dude into red mist? Well, first of all, I, he can't take I it from you unless you defended sure. it. <laughs> like oh. you, if if he took it out of you, you already last lost your defense of that object that you picked up with your own labor. <laughs> So, like, if he already has it, then the jig is up. You know what I mean? Oh, so well, I'm wait, not so, allowed to defend myself. So, wait, 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 wait. Hang well, on. You can, but Hang then on. they wouldn't take the grass, right? They wouldn't have taken it first. You would have so, prevented them from taking it. So, what? if you don't nail down your property successfully, I have the right to steal it? Not necessarily. No, not at all. Listen, you got to use your common sense in this, right? Like, I, you guys know Sorry, even that's not I'm right. Confused. Well, well, see, but the reason why I'm getting at this is this is why I reject the ontological ethics. I think that ultimately, I think it's important to have like varying degrees of like what is well actually like proper for a situation. I don't think that actions are moral by virtue of their morality. I think everything needs to be justified. Everything need we need to have a, a conversation about what leads us to believe in that this is an ethical action. And because of that, I reject things like natural law and fucking, you know, natural rights and such because, well, those are also human constructions. Well, I think we can... Because it would be wrong to, to harm someone. I mean, is it why? is it hard to know that why? hurting someone why? is wrong? Why? Why? Yeah, why? Because it's common sense. No. No, it's not. What if I... Well, well, that's my thing, is that, like, personally, I don't actually have a lot of, like... And, you know, you could call me a sociopath for this, but, like, I just... I don't really like i don't feel bad hurting people i do muay thai for fun i fucking you know i've spent a large portion of my life just well that's doing different it's consensual yeah it's consensual but it's still violence it's still hurting people i can very i could maim people in the gym you're not stealing and, uh, their consent you're not you know it's you still, still haven't given different. me why yeah, it's why like, it's why it's objectively wrong can, can i interject one thing in oh, here please go for it swede yeah. You cannot use words such as murder, harm, or whatever because they are descriptive in the fact that you are intending to use them to basically lump immorality into that. You have to. You can't use murder. You have to use killing. You can't use stealing. You have to use taking. So you have to back away from these words that have inherent descriptive power of immorality in them. I think most people know what I mean when I say it, but I know you can get super specific. I understand where you're coming from. There are people like Larkin Rose who don't say natural law once or objective morality, but can still deliver the same exact understanding of these concepts. And are you familiar with Larkin Rose? Because he has a great book called The Most Dangerous Superstition. He does make distinctions between like murder and killing because that is a distinction that people do make. I'm aware of those like I type of scenarios. You still like, have not, a personally, legal I'm not super that picky. we invented to describe a type of killing that we as a society have said we don't allow murder yeah. by itself is it doesn't mean anything without killing existing all that matters mm -hmm. is that there's I'm an still individual when, being where is this common sense they derived from themselves and that's not violated and that would be a form of violence where where is common sense derived from conscience but okay, where is conscience derived from? Where's conscience? Con it, break it down, consciere, oh, to God. know together. We, we know together. We Except know we our don't. rights together. Isn't that kind of circular? It is. It's basic circular logic. It, it's okay. this is this What's is not something that we actually. This isn't actually something that we know. It's something that societies at different times in different places and different people have disagreed on fundamentally. And you are making an objectivist claim about it. 
You there say it is a tangible en- entity with it, it is a tangible, touchable fucking concept within our world, and the fact of all of human history disproves you. That and we mean all of history. common sense is literally one of the major fallacies. What is what is wait what history? I'm sorry, I'm willing to learn all of uh, all of history? human history. The the reasons for committing violence against another human being have been shifted, adjusted, and changed depending on culture, time, place, and people. Of course, yes, but that's, then there that's is like... no universal construct of common sense that we can uh, we can appeal to in this instance. We all have the ability of conscience. It's human. It's human ability. But we don't all have. But it. here's the deal. But here's we the don't deal. all know, have. Now, no, now any, any psychologist, any psychologist who has studied antisocial personality disorders would tell you that we don't all contain this ability, and we all have varying degrees of characteristic of traits. <laughs> that uh, are you shitting me? Well, I don't know. It's just listen. I know scientism is a problem too. It's a religion. Have you so- ever met a narcissist? Yes. Have you uh, ever so met a sociopath? Met a sociopath? Have you ever met a v- truly violent criminal? Um, I, I guess it would depend on what you mean by truly violent. Have but... you met a murderer? No. Okay, then. All right. So super sheltered. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't think so. uh, we're I? not all that way. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> there, we're not all that way. I know you have this, like, fucking, like, willows and dreams and fairyland rainbows and cakes version uh-huh. of humanity going on, but we're not all that right. way. Of we There not. are some sincerely fucking broken people, and we all exist on a spectrum. I know, but that doesn't justify murder. Like, nothing can justify No, what I'm pointing murder. out— You can't use the word murder. You cannot use it. Strike well, that from your case. I mean, what, listen, I'm, listen, listen. what I'm pointing I, out is there something? is no objectivist version of these morals that you are appealing to. All right, listen. It is I subjective. Said, what did I say? I didn't want to debate, and I promise you I didn't want to debate. Not because I'm like cowering away, but because I didn't come here with resources or anything. Like, I want people to just look into it. If you care about it, look into it. If you don't, you don't. I have books, I have presentations. Like, we don't do this stuff out of nothing with no basis to it and it's like talk tell it to like the guy that's been doing this for over 30 years i've only been doing it for only five (laughs) you know and it's like i really i told you i'm not the best person to do it and i admit that and i have to say this all the time because i i realize the common sense like i'm just here to deliver it and that's it like because it's not being shown to people do put do most people think about objective morality and understand natural law and use it and actually define right versus wrong and actually define these principles most people don't put them all together in the tapestry that they are. So somebody has to be able to do that. And that's all I want to do is say, hey, here uh, it goes. But you haven't Check been able out. to do that. Well, I'm well because you're asking me questions, but it's regardless of me. It's it's like, look at the uh, knowledge for yourself. Use your own intuition. I do see that there is a conscience and there's an intuition. And I don't necessarily need science to prove it because you have the free will choice. I to, would to, to ask, choose I what would you want to do in your you life. Think- Do you think every action taken has an inherent moral or immoral take to it? Well, it would depend on the specific, yeah, and the specific action. No, no, every. Well, it's either it's right or it's wrong, right? Most rights, or any right, any action is right if it's not wrong. It's just that, it's it's just like that, right? Being gay. It's fine. It's not harming anyone. Your choice for yourself. Okay. But can't it be amoral? What do you mean amoral? How is it good or bad? How is it right? Yeah, I didn't or... say it was good or bad. I well, said you how can. Is it, you how can is just it right do it. Or it's wrong? not. It's irrelevant because it's... anything that is right is already present. You're born with your rights. Remember, they're not given to you. No, 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 no. I asked you if everything has an immoral or moral stance to it. And yeah, and I said no because you're born with your rights. So rights are already given. Only violations could who, be made. Who to gave them. them to you? But you have to understand that. 
So that's why, actually, you don't even need to understand objective morality. All you need to understand is the nature of moral relativism. Every leader in history, every status leader, believes that they can delegate rights to someone else and decide what is right and wrong for the general public. <laughs> and every person who follows that leader says, oh, they have the right to rule over me, no questions asked, because there is no underlying basis that I own myself and I can prove it with this grounded system of right and wrong. No, because there, they don't there, there understand objective morality. Plenty of, there have been plenty of authoritarians that have made claims to objective objective morality yeah well because they thought they had the right to rule otherwise i mean it's all about keeping their authority in place of course they're going to create a system in place that keeps people in the pants of them this one says hey you're completely free so, so what's just wrong with it, it just it depends it wrong who's doing wielding the objective the regards, morality what's okay. wrong with saying hey it's, it's wrong to murder someone because that's all we're doing right we're all all we're doing is saying hey it's wrong to do this to someone because saying it's wrong to murder someone is double speak. It's saying it. I'm twice. not saying that this should be imposed upon everyone. I'm spreading this knowledge. No, 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 no. You, you're not understanding me. Saying it's wrong to murder someone is saying it's wrong twice. Because murder he's saying implies what wrong. he means is what he's saying. It's wrong to kill somebody unjustly. Unjustly, Unjust, being unjustly like, is the same thing. You cannot add that descriptor. Yeah, mur you, murder you on have, it. You murder. Have to, you have to say. So, is All there such a thing as wrong. justice? I would posit no, but I don't. I don't think we're there yet. So there's no justice. Yeah, see, we, we're on totally different ends. That's okay. But listen, I would consider you guys not real anarchists by the definitions that I use, only because you have no foundation. Well, no, 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 rights. no. But everyone else yeah. in here is a moral relativist. I'm, I'm, I am an amoralist. No, we're on a objectivist. Yeah. Who, okay. Under well, under one. under what theory of uh, of anarchism do you study? I mean. You can say natural law, or you can say Larkin yeah, you Rose, keep, you and keep, all you his keep stuff. saying that. Do you have simple, any regular... schooling in anarchist theory what? whatsoever? I don't use isms. Um, what was the question? What theory? Yeah. Meaning, like, are you an and cat and calm, oh, etc.? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't use any. Do you, like a, do you a under school of thought? Do you understand Ugh. anarchism as a philosophical lens of analysis? No. no. Do you do you have any experience in utilizing it as an operating modality for action in the field? Uh, that is, that sounds way too broad. I don't like that because I see anarchy as simply reality. That's it. So you're not an anarchist. According to your definitions, no, but according to my definitions, you're also not an anarchist. So we obviously have disagreements, and that's okay. But that's why I said people have to decide for themselves. I knew this we'd run into this. But this is why it's like, hey, here's a knowledge. Check it out. You make your own decision. Guys, yeah, NITA.ONE, you have a website. You're using a prescriptive political like science Spooner, term. Books, Corey. resources, study guides. I'm just letting everybody know. You're using you a, prescri video, a technical term. 900 hours plus. You're using a technical political science term in a descriptivist manner. Okay. Uh, cool. So NITA.ONE for people who are wondering. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, listen, I, I, can't, I, I, I can't convince you of anything. I respect anything. the fuck out of it. I, I can't convince <laughs> anyone of anything. I, I, I understand. Like, it's fine. People do their own thing. I Look, am I, I here to be like, oh my gosh, Kay, you're wrong. I need to convince you. Know, you. I'm right. Like, I I'm know what was, was, You know, how about, how about this? I, I know can I, can it was I, kind of... Can I pause it something? Yeah. Because I feel like this is... You guys are cool, I, though. I, 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 like I, have an, I have an interesting direction that I could take this into. Because what I have a posit is I think... I think my form of anarchism is literally the living embodiment of chaos in your form of anarchism. So then the question then boils down to, would you be okay with that even existing? With the embodiment of chaos? Yeah. Chaos because, is natural. Right. But what I'm getting at is that, like, is that something you're truly comfortable with? Because I am someone no one who can doesn't... Body chaos. That doesn't make sense to Did me. You, yeah, you, have not, you have not read Max Sterner. Yeah. Me, don't me, speak me on topics form. you don't know anything about. Anarchism. I made too I many personal observations to read all these books and scientific. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know. I can see see if you can chew on this because the thing is that like I gave the brass tax of Sterner, but like the consequences of Sterner's ideology, I think are interesting because the thing is that like again, egoism is a completely amoral philosophy. We don't believe in morals. We don't believe in rights. We don't believe in any of that shit. We believe that there is the ego. That is what defines an individual and nothing else. We don't... Essentially, when we say that we believe when the phrase we should comes into politics, it ceases to be an egoist... Uh, it ceases to be egoist politics. Hello? We don't believe in the phrase we should. Sorry, sorry. 
Uh, one second. My audio cut out. All right, for sure. Uh, let me try to fix this. Cassidy? I don't know what happened. Cassidy? My mic or my headset just turned off. It happens. Cassidy, my, my... 100%, by the way. Cassidy, 100% percent all right uh wait do you hear me yes but you're Hello? quieter we continue to hear you we never yes. didn't hear you on? hey you're still talking hello 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 all right I'm just we can hear you i'm gonna Zdravo. output for now on if that's okay all right um let me change my mic real quick yeah, but no, I respect you guys. I'm sorry, I didn't get to hear your amoral thing, but um, yeah. I, I hope people do look into those resources. If you want to explain again, go ahead. I don't care. You guys are cool. <laughs> All right, for sure. So I'm an amoral. I do have to. I do have to give it to Corey. He's much better at making presentations than he is uh, being on the spot. <laughs> He's much better at explaining what he means in a presentation. I there's different communication I styles. take exception with this descriptivist usage of a prescriptivist political science term. I will tell you that outright. I do take exception with that. I do feel like you have co-opted a term that actually means something and twisted it into a pseudo-spiritual cultish sort of thing. Cool. So yeah, yeah, if people want to look into it, nita.oni, I don't care about your belief systems. I seriously think it's irrelevant. I mean, people have to seek out the truth within Dude. their own life. I, that's, I'm dishonest. Like, that's why I don't say, oh, I think my belief. Like, it's irrelevant. I'm sorry. It just is. <laughs> Can you define what truth is? Objective. It just is. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm, that doesn't Epist epistemology so, 101. You know, Damn, truth. dude. Oh, my goodness. This well, is I guess, not good. Well, I guess the question is then, like, how could you know anything that's objective? How, do, how does oh your God. how does your limited it's mind, it's how does graph, your know, how sure. does your limited human conscience actually grasp these uh, grasp these things in an infinite limitless potential multiverse? How does your higher primate brain actually grasp these topics? Because of the neocortex and the human brain, that's what. But it is. It, but it is by definition a limited reptile. construct. What? But it is by definition a limited construct in an infinite existence. Human beings are not perfect by any means. We're always going to have different faulty perceptions. Our, I, our so how goal do you, how is do you, how is yours truth. not faulty? How do you how how are, where is your checksum on this? Mine is, is the truth. I'm saying we need to do a You just favor said that there is an objective truth that can be truth. grasped. Huh? You just said that there is an objective truth that can be grasped. Yes, because. It, Everything is governed by laws. The universe has a blueprint. We know this. How do you test that truth? How do you adjudicate it? Like, look at the body, right? The body is a blueprint. It's got a blueprint to heal itself. When you understand that blueprint, you can can you help can, that can body you, heal itself. Can you can you regrow limbs? Yeah. But, okay. You guys still like to debate. Nita uh, nita one for those of you who want to learn. I'm the. He's been muted. Um, Gus. I'm speaking to yeah. you, speaking to you as his representative at this point on his behalf. Yeah, it's no hard feelings, but if he refuses to actually like address the conversation and just like dance and then plug, I'm not gonna you know engage in that. Um, he's he's just having a hard time. It, 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 you he doesn't do this much. Well, I mean. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, browbeat him, but I mean, I, I think everybody knows that like my reputation is I will hold your feet to the fire. If you come, if you come with some like grant, I do the same thing to a fucking Christian, right? They come in here and thump the Bible and like, well, I know God says because the book says it, right? Like, yeah, we're going to fucking hold your feet on that one. And oh yeah, for sure. The same goes for well there's an objective truth and i know it because you know that's it, it's no hard feelings but this is who i am as a streamer it's who i am as a person that you can't yeah. you can't make unfounded all good. you can't make unfounded claims like that on my uh, on my air without it going challenged not just by me but like literally my community are losing their minds in chat i do i do find it funny that it keeps plugging the website I, I appreciate the just sheer will that he has to make sure that that gets out there. 
Um, so, I mean, again, if he wants to, like, if he wants to, his name is Corey, right? Um, yeah. If Corey wants to prepare and come on, by all means, I mean, it's not like any of us are prepared. <laughs> like, we're flying by the seat of our pants as well. Um, yeah, we're all, we're all spitballing here. None, none of us here have, like, source documents to, like, reference or nothing. So, yeah. it, but, I mean, this is, if you're going to step into the arena of philosophical discussion and deeper, you know, you're going to start bringing up epistemology, epistemological ramifications of your claims, then you better be ready to discuss the epistemological ramifications of your claims. Um, yeah. I, so, I think that he... We've been arguing oh. over whether there's an objective morality since humans could communicate with each other. I mean, we've we've this we've been wrestling with this problem, and David Hume basically said, "Look, I'll just cut your head off every time you try to say that there's an objective morality, because you cannot derive it and ought from it is." It's Period. it's just to make the claim about the the nature of everything in that way. The, that human beings have been, as Swede pointed out, wrestling with for into prehistory, right? This is this is a this is yeah. a thing that we have been dealing with as a species, as an entity, as a conscience and a uh, conscious entity for ever, literally forever. And to make that sort of blanket statement that I have the answer is such hubris that to think that Corey, it w- Corey, w- would not go unchallenged. That it would not go unchallenged is is just it's you know that's the way he, he lowered your volume because he wanted to talk to me directly for a second. Um. Well, it's because he kept not answering the question and plugging the website. Um. Yeah. Um. That's 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 what got the mute actually. Yeah. Um. So. Like, if he wants to stop plugging the website when we answer him uh, when we ask him a question. By all means, I don't mind him plugging his website, but you know that's that's just sort of a weird thing I, to do. I'm going to interject one other thing too. Um, if being a PhD student, I don't think he understands what the word research actually means. But uh, sweet, they're not ready for that. You know, they're not. <laughs> no, well, I guess he left. Oh. But oh, uh, he he really came at it from more of a from more of a spiritual side, kind of like I did. I started how I came to the conclusion of anarchism, basically, is I started out like I was like 16 and wanting to get political just like everybody else, right? I started out with like, oh, Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, and all that cringy shit. And then eventually, uh, you know, I heard libertarianism. I'm like, okay, let's check that out. Because when you're 16 and political, you hop from every ideology to another, right? So I ended up finding John Stossel and another guy, Shane Killian, a while back. And then a smaller channel of ANCAP furries called uh, Back Alley Philosophy. And then they were all... it, It all just seemed too materialistic to me. So I wanted... So in with me being a more spiritual person, it's like, okay... I can get that, you know, freedom is probably the best thing for everybody, but I want to find it on the spiritual half, too. And that's personally what I've researched more. And I'm okay with that. And and that's what what he's gone into more, too, except he's been almost solely on the spiritual side. And he has to understand, anarchism isn't a spiritual practice. He needs to grasp that concept because he's going to find real contention with other anarchists who would otherwise be open to that position to that point of view but that weird okay so look most of my that's why that's why we don't even like using the term anarchist very much is because it doesn't exactly because you guys aren't anarchists yeah like you he has he has not in the same way You're not like, I mean, this is the thing. It's like saying like, uh, look, um, the internet is a thing. Hey, hey man, don't take what he said and just throw it on to me. Well, uh, but I mean, you might be, but like, I mean, that's the thing is whatever he was espousing 
it like it's like me putting a letter in the mail and saying I'm using the internet. Yeah. No. Just no. Yeah. Like that's but, no, not I, what you're doing. I, I was agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. And so like I mean that's that's the pushback that immediately happened was it's like this isn't what that is. And I'm open to it. Dude, I'm as fucking hippy dippy as some of them get. Like I'm a little too woo woo sometimes for my community. I've done a lot of fucking drugs, man. Trust me. Like that that yeah. I knew he was going down the route of Hermes Trismegistus, right? Like how many pe- fuckers that you got you guys talk to actually know who her, the thrice born is? Right? Like I'm I'm in your camp already. Yeah, that's the funny thing. Like me and Kai have gone on, like have gotten into it on air about like, well, this disagreement. Yeah, like I'm already on team, <clears throat> but anarchism is a thing. Like it's a, it's a, it's a thing. Like it's it's like saying republicanism or you know democracy or transfer control protocol. Right. Like if, if you say TCP IP and well, what I mean by it is this, it's like, yeah, but it actually has like a prescriptivist meaning in a technical space of which yeah. we are operating right now. And so you can use your definitional set all you want, but it doesn't actually mean anything here. And it doesn't matter that you pronounced it differently, because, by the way, that 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 thing smacked yeah us. he kind of took that from mark passio yeah that my community picked up on that right away um yeah i pointed it, that out in the chat too um it, it, well he also tried to change the definition of of harm and killing and it, and then also a, use I'm, descriptive terms that are subsets of other actions to that already place its moral stance to it it's I'm, yeah. When you talk I'm, morality, you just can't do that. It's it's just one of those things. And, like, again, I'm not, like, Gus, you you seem, you can do two sentences at a time. Like, I, I got nothing with you, Gus. Uh, trust me. And I don't have anything against Corey. But it's it just, it's like you have to understand. I run a, a, a prescriptivist political science space in which we discuss politics. Right? And so we are firmly grounded in that. And when discussing anarchism, you know, yeah, there are like metaethical ramifications of anarchistic philosophies and uh, tenets. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, anarchism is about a philosophical just, uh, philosophical lens of analysis in which you force systems to justify their existence. It's about a collapsing down of hierarchical uh, orders of modality, right? It's it's this sort of thing. It has yeah. a, a, a backstory to it. It has, you know, theory, hundreds of years, and, you know, depending if you're talking indigenous cultures, thousands of years of history to its practice. And to come in and an attempt to redefine it on the fly like that isn't going to go well at the outset. Um, yeah. And it's like, you know, I, dude, like, rebrand or something like i but i'm i'm down like i'd be down for that discussion i i'd be super down for that discussion and to to speak to somebody else who's like schooled in hermetics and shit like that like how many people have sat down and read the you know the hermetic corpus right like there's not many right okay so i'm one of those dudes dude like i've read the hermetic corpus i'm already so on team and he couldn't get me on team for this discussion. Right. And see, what you people have to realize is that Kai is the good cop here, actually. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I've been known around the community as the debate lord. If you can't get along with Kai, there's just going to be problems here. Yeah, like, that That was, it was starting to get weird that, that like, the, the, the tap dancing and shit like that. And I understand that apparently, apparently that's, Corey works more in a, a prepared format. Yeah, uh, he does. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I, and from what I understand, he mentioned it at the beginning that your guys' community was like, dude, why are you going on with Kai? Like, that was, it was, he was warned to not, to some degree yeah. or another. And he, he did, he did say that he was okay with us holding him to the fire. I, 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 you know, you can't make some of those claims without us challenging them in some regard. Oh, yeah. 
I get it. He's just, you know, when you're making presentations, you're not always challenged on the spot. Yeah. And he's just not used to it. And yeah. I'm not I'm not used to it either because political debates not my thing. I usually watch them. I usually don't participate in them in any way, even it though is. it was hardly a debate here. Yeah, well, we, we didn't really debate anything because yeah. the thing. Yeah, about, I know. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the thing is that, like, it wasn't ever really going to be a debate. It was going to be us talking about, like, ep epistemics. Like, debates only work if everybody is on the same page reality-wise. So what this conversation yeah. inevitably, inevitably would have turned into is us talking about, like, well, the nature of reality. And that's kind of where we were going. That's, yeah, that's kind of what he was talking about, too. He just couldn't, I guess he just couldn't quite word it in the moment. Or maybe he did mean something different. I mean, I can't speak for him, but. Yeah, of course. What, what, I mean, we're, we're, we're all going to start with cogito ergo sum and then go God. from there. Yeah. yeah, let's just all do DMT together. You know what? I'm down. Yeah, like I mean, I'm more of a mushroom guy, but I mean, if oh no, give me give me the fucking DMT. I'll get the oil rig right now down the street. Yeah, I'll fucking. I mean, we've yeah, like Cat and I could make that happen pretty quickly. <laughs> um, like that's the thing is like I feel really bad about it. Like it, sincerely, like let him know. Like I don't know if he's still hanging around or not. Let him know. I'd yeah, he's still streaming. I'll hop back on with I, him and I, talk to him about it. I sincerely feel bad because I'm on team already, and he fucking lost me. Like that's the thing is like I'm like dude, like I'm on team, but like y you're. <sighs> I don't want to. I kind of want to say it this way. I kind of felt dis disrespected a little, you know. I, I kinda, as an anarchist, I, I, right? I'm kind of. I'm just kind of glad that I'm the physical embodiment of chaos to some people that aren't fascists. Um. Yeah, that is interesting, Cat. Um. It, it just. It's like, bro. Like, can you address my concerns here and stop plugging your website? <laughs> Like I have, I have issues. I, I like I'm I'm the dude who tells people to stop talking about philosophy and go feed the homeless dude, right? Like I got concerns for this world, and like you know, there's there's people dying in the streets right now, and that that's a problem. Like that's a big problem. And we could sit here and talk about hermetics and, you know, as above, so below and all of that that we could get into, right? But at the end of the day, you just need to fucking pick your ass up and go make a sandwich and feed somebody. That He entirely agrees with that, too. That's why he, he got inspired by uh, Mark Passio in one of his podcasts. He said, it's like, y if you're not out there doing something, then you need to at least... Uh, you know, start spreading the message around. That's Zimbu. That's I where am. he's coming from. This is this is his action that he's taking. And I respect that as a propagandist myself. I respect that. Um, but in what way is he actually? Practicing anarchism, and I know the like the fucking it, it, we don't do isms and shit like that, right? We can fucking couch and kowtow and dance all we want, but like it's not it's always just easier to refer it to it as an ism. It's not. It it isn't. It's Greek Greek root, right? Like that that provides context for the concept. Yes, anarchos yeah. means without ruler. Yeah, it does mean that. But that's not what anarchism or anarchists or even anarchy is about. And so, like, I, I, I never felt like I... I felt like I never got any of my stuff actually addressed. And I think if you were watching, right, Gus? Like, you were... You were I was... Yeah, I was on there. Okay, so, I like... Was talking to chat a little bit too yeah See, like fuckers like ruined my long con that i was doing there yeah well cat i always ruin your long con um, <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna the... try to trap him in a thought experiment about oh i, I well see that's what i was doing too is that like i want i never to... even caught the uh thought experiment because everyone was trying to talk over well, i didn't other. get a chance to go into it my my thought experiment is this for absolute property rights is say you own an acre and yeah. I buy the eight acres surrounding you. 
and I build a 30 foot wall on the interior of my property that surrounds yours. And I basically cut off 30 foot down so you can't get out. And I starve you out. Now I'm not directly harming you. And in fact, I can say I'm not harming you. You just were stupid enough not to prepare for the inevitable. That's absolute property rights right there. That's that's the eventuality. And if that's moral, and that's the problem. Yeah. It, how I, I can't speak for him, but how I think he would look at it is that would be amoral because even though you're working passively with your property, you were still starving out somebody else. Now, I can't speak for him. That's just what I think he would say knowing him. I mean, like I, would, I do, I would but that's so amoral, really a question so wait, for just, him. So just to be clear, amoral meaning that it's like morally neutral, that it's not right. Or yeah, wrong. it's it it's is. moral, immoral, amoral. Just so we know, immoral. My bad. My yeah, bad. I, I just had to clarify. Yeah, that we were, like, I'm I still like no, kind of no, fucked no, up from Valium because I went through nice. LASIK today and Jesus can barely even think straight. <laughs> Attaboy, Gus. For Gus is Gus is limited. See, this is Gus. You should. That is. Some I, I'm sorry. I sorry. I didn't bring you on sooner, Gus, because Gus could have fucking hung with the uh, Friday good. vibe. Gus. Gus gets the Friday vibe. Gus shows up fucking still, <laughs> still doing some Valium and shit. <laughs> Um, I but the, the, the problem between you saying that it's immoral would be me saying no. It's that guy's problem for not being prepared. That it, and this is what and I, I getting and at, like, how I think in a real world, si real world situation is that wouldn't really happen. Oh, it's it's, it's dude. most it's most, people, most yeah day. no dude that oh I mean like that's a real most, world. most people buy property would try to account for that before buying the property it's uh, what what i just described is called the monopolization of business sectors yeah it's it's like literally a, an everyday thing all across the world yeah, it's, yeah it's, i'm not too familiar with sweets sweets with hitting, that. sweets hitting you with I, a real world economic that. thing like yeah and what'd you say I, was, I just said sweets hitting you with a real world economic thing that's all like yeah, he he is he is a PhD economist by the way yeah like or, yeah and yeah the economics I I used to be into all that but it just the rabbit hole goes so deep and it wasn't really one I was particularly interested in personally oh, it's just, and it's I ended up going boring. down more of a spiritual it's route boring as shit don't blame you. um <laughs> don't blame you at all. that's why we got sweet. <laughs> People always, it's one of two things. People learn, when yeah, people man. learn e econ is just human behavior, they either like eyes glaze over and they leave, which is, you know, 99% of people. Yeah. Or they get fascinated by it. Yeah. And so, some of them get hooked. Think, oh, because, because to me, when I, when I first heard him speaking about, oh, we know these things, there's an objective morality, we can follow it. I went, Holy shit! He's actually making the rational actor explanation, which, which in econ we are like, yeah, we we make models based on rational actors, but we all laugh because we know that humans are stupid, irrational idiots. Well, see, this is what I was trying to get into with my blade of grass experiment there, because the thing is that like, we can find all sorts of people causing like wanton violence over what's basically nothing, even though it is technically violence like it, yeah just, this concept of like this appeal to common sense as if for an objective uh good uh, right and wrong just doesn't exist hmm. it there's he, he's had a different venture than i had i i think that like i mean Fair. it sounds i mean i hate to be i hate to be that dude but it sounds like he's he sounds super sheltered like i'm not sure on that but he might be yeah yeah i don't i don't i, I don't know i'm not gonna speculate like that like i i'm sorry like that's dude like human history like everyday existence teaches me that there is a shit ton of people walking around that don't feel about these things the same way that maybe we feel about it <laughs> like i i oh yeah for sure I, that's, and then there's that's mainly like why he who, streams this. Mm, go ahead right, right. And then there's people like me who have logic brain themselves into those people's position. Yeah, like, so you're, so you're the reptile that's ruling us, huh? Basically. Well, no. <laughs> yes, but I'm trying to be nice about it. Yeah. Cat's, cat's a friendly reptilian overlord. 
Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, like that's <laughs> that, that's that's that was that was the point. The, that's where it went off the rails for me was when he tried to make a claim for an objective right and wrong, right? Like when I figured out he was a moral absolutist, I was like, holy shit, man. Like we've got a moral absolutist. Like that that just human history doesn't prove that out. Like all of human existence proves that that is the incorrect philosophical position to hold. It, it just doesn't yeah, work it, that way. How he sees it, like say that you look through every single like war through every single uh state society whatever through like say the deontological ethics lens it's like you could say yes all those people were wrong but you could also go around the route that they're right but it just depends on how you look at it and what and that's subjectivism yeah that's but human- there in, but some of the deontological parts are objective human human existence is subjective because it's human existence this is the position i will firmly occupy probably until i die this was my point about how could you possibly know in an expansive infinite universe from your limited existence any true truth we don't know <laughs> shit Drugs. We, well but that's the thing is i've done i've done just as much maybe more i don't know we'd have to compare notes as you (laughs) um but i mean i've been down that road and the thing that that taught me was that human beings don't know shit that was the that was the biggest lesson from that was oh yeah we don't know anything like i'm sorry like we don't know shit for shit thousands of years of philosophy amount to nothing after one good dmt trip that's what I tell Corey. I always refer to it as like being in our little third dimension, little dirt planet. Yeah. This is like soul preschool, soul kindergarten, where we're just here to learn how to interact with other people and make the best of what we got, even though the condition is usually shitty. Yeah, and like, then that divides people so much. Like, I mean, yeah, like any good dude, I've, I've done hero doses. I've been there. I've fucking broken my brain on that shit. Um, and th- that's, that is the lesson I learned was, no, we don't know anything. I guess I, I just sent you a video that uh, is a, one of the best YouTubers out there discussing just the sheer massiveness of the cosmic scale. Yeah. Like, it's it's one of the most yeah. amazing things. And if you don't feel small after watching it, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. And that's just it's, oh yeah, we're we're all small but huge at the same time, just in different ways. Yeah, we have such a limited experience. Our senses alone are exclusionary processes. We're swimming in a vortex, a miasma of energies and particles and waveforms constantly that we're not even aware of on any level that pass right through us. But you're going to tell and not me- even just swimming in it. We're just part of it too but we're what we're like you're gonna tell me you under like it's this i have the same qualm with the claim he made that i have with christians so-called christians that come into this fucking channel and make a claim to know god's will how 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 possibly could a limited mortal being know an infinite creator's will that is, uh, because of a book, obviously. And I mean, right. he made the same claim, basically, as you know. Yeah, I mean, except, hermetics except, instead of you know, right, right. Abrahamics. Yeah, his, yeah, his his claim even went deeper. It's literally just my brain, bro. It, it, Common sense, dude. I, I, me knowing him and talking to him, I do see where he's coming from with that, and I feel like it would. I, I couldn't even summarize that in two sentences. What he means there, I. I just you know to, to just make sure like I'm gonna I'm I probably call it right here because we don't need to fucking hammer this nail. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Um, I just you know go over there, let him know. Like, I, dude, I'd love to fucking talk to him behind the scenes and off the air and shit like that. Let him know, like, dude, I'm fucking I'm on team already. Like, he just he lost me with the fucking misapplication of a prescriptivist term in a descriptivist space vis a vis anarchism. And then, you know, the claim to no truth fucking basically 
I was I tapped at that. Um, yeah, the, he's a uh, like normally there's when descriptive like in terms like that come in. He's not familiar, and that they usually come in in debates. Let's be real. They, that's when they usually come in, and he is not a debater at all. I, and I'm not either. And that's that's fine. But I can barely also, put one foot in front of the other right now. But you know what you I are. Feel it's bad. But you know what you are, Gus, is you're a conversationalist. You, oh yeah. Whenever you, I talk to anybody about this, it's always in casual conversation. I'm. I don't want to fucking have a screaming match. You well, know. But that's that's the kind of space I run. And right at the outset. Corey wasn't even prepared to talk about himself, right? Like, it's like, dude, what's up? Like, have a he, Yeah, he was prepared to, to talk about philosophy because I, I think I should have told him, like, hey, watch a couple of his streams. Like, because, yeah, you archive your stuff, right? You keep it up on your channel. Uh, yeah, it's uh, all on YouTube. Literally, you can go to my okay. YouTube channel and catch every episode. Okay. I, I feel like um, I should have told him you go to, to, my, to you... like, watch a couple of your streams and then, like, Get a, get a feel for you before he starts talking. If you go to my website, um, which I feel weird plugging at this point after all of this shit, but um, <laughs> fucking, if you go to kaisthings.com, K-A-I-S things.com, and go to the stream or podcast section, you can literally, literally everything I've ever produced, audio, like video, it's all there for you to like peruse. Um, and it's yeah. all licensed under Creative Commons, so if you want to use any of it, attribution. Um, but you know, yeah, like it's it's all there. Um, yeah, like I I much prefer being a conversationalist, um, and having this conversation like this. Like this is this is my preferred mode of operation. But if you come in and start like doing weird prepared presentations and. 10 minute screeds on shit that make claims to knowledge that I don't think human beings can ever claim to have. Like it's going to get a little, um, <clears throat> interviewee. That's, yeah. That's why I kept teasing him in the chat. It's like, Hey Corey, explain the simple thing. And then he starts talking for 30 minutes yeah. and he really is a talkative person too. I, hey, I mean, I, I vibe with it. I get it. Um, yeah, just have him take over a stream for you a couple times. Like, but yeah, like, yeah, let him know for me, man. It's, it's, there, there ain't nothing to it. And fucking, I got nothing but love for his position. It's just like, yeah, man, that got weird. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely let him know and talk to him about it. And I don't know if we'll come on again or if he'll want to talk offline or whatever, but I'm, I'm sure he'll want to talk again. Because he he wasn't prepared, I, you know. Like if if he's if he's in that like realm, and he wants like if he wants to like keep on a topic or something and just talk to me and be prepared for like one thing and one thing only, so I know like I need to keep guardrails up and shit like that. Like I'm dude, I'm open, I'm flexible, like I, I'm yeah, I'm fine with it. Like just just let me know what he needs to to you know do what he does either way gus enjoy the rest of that volume high <laughs> yeah i'll try but my eyes still fucking hurt yeah jesus lord man <laughs> fucking lazy right. lazy can be a bitch rest get some eye drops in and rest your eyes man dude i've emptied like a whole bottle of eye drops since i got home <laughs> <Good God. laughs> but uh have fun, guys. Right. I'll talk to y'all later. Later, guys. Right. Have a good one, man. You take it easy. Sleep well. Thanks. Uh, it's all three eyes. Yes, Skillero. <laughs> Get all that three was, eyes. That was something. Uh, it's rare that, like, I really do feel bad about that because it's rare I get to, like, talk to anybody who even knows what who Hermes Trismegistus is, let alone fucking has read the Hermetic Corpus. And it, I see. I just wanted to see just like the sheer horror that would have developed if I kept describing egoism. Oh I yeah, just, I'm sorry, school school root. I did a couple of skirt spins already this stream. I'm sorry, Hermes Trismegistus, uh, wither. It means Hermes the thrice born. It, it's basically alchemy.
cat, I just gave you some gold. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hermaphrodite, got it. Um. Um. Yeah. Um. Okay. So her hermetics is the philosophical ba um, balance to alchemy. So the the contention that how al uh, alchemists or hermeticists make um, is that spi uh, science is an unbalanced um, religios uh, religiosity of sorts. It's a religious pursuit and it's unbalanced. Um, alchemy was proto chemistry. It really was. Uh, this is the, the the roots of modern chemistry find their their origins in alchemy. Um, alchemy was balanced against a spiritual practice known as hermetics, um, and it was very often performed and operated by like Venetian princes in suites overlooking canals and white flowing robes and silks and shit like that. Right. His vision of an alchemist and like witchy type stuff really doesn't match up with the history of it. But it is this uh, philosophy born of this writer. <clears throat> and Hermes probably didn't exist. Let's just put it that way, like outright. It's a it's a fiction. But the Hermetic corpus was so valued at one time in in Western development of thought that the platonic corpus was rediscovered and the translation for plato's works was put on hold so the hermetic corpus could be translated first all right this is this is a huge portion of the like sort of philosophical and de thought development in western society and it's sort of this era of development of thought in Western society that just is completely overlooked. He is correct. Corey is correct. It isn't taught um, because of its close association with alchemy and the downfall of like sort of alchemy as a sort of pseudoscience and out practice and that sort of thing. Right. It's sort of the bit, it sort of got thrown out with it. Um, but it has all these sorts of spiritual tenets. And since I alluded uh, before, like, um, as above, so below, so below as above, right? I threw out that when I was talking to Corey, right? Like I did the as above, so below, right? But the rest of that is so below as above. It's a reference to macro and microcosmic reflection. The fact that we can look at a system, uh, look at systemic analyses and, uh, look at and analyze macro systems by looking at micro components of that system, right? Like there's, there's actual science and analysis techniques and real stuff. Like there's real meat on these bones. Like it's not all just woo woo shit. Some of it is just woo woo shit. But there's actual knowledge and philosophy contained within these texts that contributed to a good portion of what Western thought has become in no small part. And it is completely overlooked in society, which plays into conspiracy, con conspiratorial mindsets as well, that this knowledge has been held back. And that then that must mean that the woo shit is true as well. Right. Do you think he was even using the, the term scientism correctly, though? Because it felt like to me he was just throwing that out there to to bash science in general. Uh, probably. Well, yeah, kinda, well, yeah, I mean, he is kind of a propagandist at his core. Yeah. Like, he, he kind of just wanted to, like, shun away criticism that way. Yes, like attracts like, Rev. Law of attraction shit is born of that philosophy set. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it's a really fascinating era of Western thought development. It's a really fascinating text to read. Um, like I said, my magical library is deep. It's it's like 12,983 texts deep. Like I've I've looked at this stuff. Like I'm like I said, like I feel bad about it. Like, dude, you just came into the wrong space at the wrong time and used the wrong words. Like, and that weird spirit science shit that he was doing with the word pronunciation gets under my skin too. Um, that's what, in, that's intentional. The, thing behind that? uh, the words have power, not in the way that like, Oh, okay. So like if you know, you yell fucking gun around cops, they fucking shoot, right? Not, not like that. 
you know how he the, the um, he started talking about the design of the universe and that, that there is that there's a uh, there's a blueprint and these sorts of things, right? Part of that ties into this uh, belief that there is literally geometric sh- patterns that lie at the foundation of existence. That the very nature of creation itself is this sort of born of a, a, a magical geometry of sorts. And that words have power in this framework. That they, they have vibrational frequencies that resonate on a cosmic scale. But you have to pronounce them correctly. That you have to say them in the way that they're intended to be said because of the root words, the origin meanings, right? It's, it's a leaning on an emphasis it's like when that um, fucking dude that was talking about well, a well saying said, you know, I not only understand you, I understand you and overstand you, right? It's this belief that there has been a manipulation that has occurred in order to uh, control the group consciousness of society at an authoritarian spiritual level, and in order, uh, and one of the fundamental ways to do that is controlling the language, and one of the ways that they control the language is giving you intentional mispronunciations or misrepresentations of words. This sounds like the protocols for the elders of Zion. It, See, that, that that's kind of my question is like, so then why isn't he speaking like old Norse and shit? Um, you know? it, Skull Dog has it correct, right on. It is sacred geometry, Occidental high magic, and Song of Spheres. It is all related. It is Skull Dog. Um, Skull Dog knows exactly what the fuck we're talking about here. Like that, straight up. It is. It is. This is. This is what this is. Um, and it is. Um, time, dude. Yeah, it's it's fucking weird as shit. Um, Wither called sacred geometry first. Fair enough, Wither. Wither also knows where we're headed with this. Yeah, it is. Um. Did this lead? This sounds like the stuff that led directly to modern anti-Semitism. Well, yeah, that is exactly well, what it is. No, like no, no, Nazis it didn't. Were it real big. It on didn't the lead to it. They, they, but they were into it. Yeah, they were big into it. Well, I mean, it started with Burke. I mean, modern no. anti-Semitism started with Burke. No, it's um, it's all of these people are into this shit. Um, it, it's not that this stuff created that. It's that this shit, this shit, this shit goes back to the ancient uh, mystery religions of like North Africa. Like this stuff goes deep into human history. Um, here, um, this is we'll we'll do a little fucking um, so you guys can sort of see. Everybody's seen this stuff. Everybody has seen this stuff. Um, here's the seed of life. Right, everybody's seen this geometry, right? Here's here's the uh, here's the seed of life and the vesica Pisces. All right, um, you can also see this stuff in the uh, Kabbalah, right? The Jewish mysticism stuff as well. Um, only theirs is the tree of life. Um, so if you want, um, here here's here's what you'll see in the Kabbalah, the tree of life. Um, Dietrich, the reason I bring up Burke is because Burke is the first person in the world that, that we at least know of that pointed to the Jews and said, there was a giant conspiracy. France fell because of them. Um, so basically, the way this works. So this is a multi-dimensional, this is a two-dimensional representation of a multi-dimensional uh, object. This, this exists in like 11 dimensions, basically, for all intents and purposes. Um, the way this works is you see the circle in the middle, right? You can sort of see that there. Um, the explanation is that, is that is consciousness, that is God. That is the beginning of all thing. Um, so the universe is a dream. The universe is a consciousness subjectively experiencing itself. This is this is the thought process. Um, so it starts with a circle. This is the eye. This is God. So what does a circle do? The first thing a circle does is it rotates out. So now you have two. Now the two cir- and now you have the binary. You have male and female. You have light and dark. All right, you already can extrapolate how this process works, 
right? So this is this is the circles overlapping and in creating this multidimensional plane, right? So as God's consciousness expands out, it dreams outwardly. It creates the the fabric of existence. It creates the multidimensional mathematical construct that allows molecules and planets and ourselves to exist. And we are a microcosmic reflection of that grand consciousness. Therefore, we contain the core elements of all that is pure, all that is true, all that is holy. And it can be tapped using your consciousness, using your spirit. This is where he's coming from. Like, like I speak this language, like this is, I know what he's talking about and it, it's, it's woo woo goofy ass shit, right? Like this is, this is like, you got to prove this. How are you going to prove this? Right? Like this is, yeah, this is, see, this, this is, this is where I come in and I just go, this is fucking insane. It is. Like, <laughs> it's fucking insane. Um, and, but this stuff is carved like, um, here um oh come on there we go um get an example here uh let me try <laughs> he sa- he sounds like a more crazy jordan peterson um oh yeah jordan peterson's into this shit just he he comes back to the christianity so it's like tempered Yeah, yeah. Jordan Peterson sticks in that uh, that arena. Um, here, here is the flower of life, which is literally. So this is this is sort of a uh, you, all of this, the seed of life to the flower of life to the tree of life uh, to Metatron's cube, right? All of this is uh, sort of exponential drawing process. This is on an ancient Egyptian fucking carving. This has been with us for thousands of years this is not a new idea this is not something that is like new agey or this sort of thing they use stuff from the ancient egyptian mystery religions all of this stuff gets lost in north africa we don't we can't follow it further than that we just know it came through there but it's been with humanity since the beginning, basically. Like, we've been doing this shit. The argument to be made here is, is that these geometric shapes and patterns are things that you experience under psychedelica. These are, these are fundamentally, we're wired to recognize geometric shapes and patterns. And so you would experience them when you're tripping balls. So we've been getting high as a species for <laughs> basically since the beginning. And so this sort of stuff reinforces and self-reinforces and becomes cultural and becomes part of the, the lore of the species would be sort of the, the sociological understanding of the contextualization of these uh, ideas. But the belief is that these are the fundamental patterns of existence. This is from which all creation arises. And from this, you can draw truth. You can draw knowledge. <clears throat> and no, no, uh, Tam, not only does it go into 3D, it goes into multidimensional space. Yeah, it, it goes beyond 3D. But I can, I can get you a... Here's a, here's a three-dimensional representation of Metatron's cube. Hold on, let me... Okay, so here's Metatron's cube. As you have seen, here is a 3D representation of Metatron's cube. So, this is what you see when it's laid flat. This is what you see when it's actually in three dimensions. But when you start talking multi-dimensional existence, potentially eleven dimensions, if you listen to like um, uh, the like string theorists. Um, all of these would become like multi-dimensional representations. So the inner portion like down in this portion here would be the 3D. And then all of this other stuff out here would become the hyperdimensional layers of existence, time and the just the very fabric of existence, the stuff that we still are just mathemat- mathematically speculating about. 
and that just plays in further that like if if this is the model if this speaks to this sort of 11 dimensional multi-dimensional existence of creation right and we have known about it since before egypt like before the sumerians right and this has been taken from you it just plays into that conspiratorial thread even further and then you get shit like the protocols for the others of zion yeah it, it's like i said like I I, I I felt bad like i speak this dude's language but do not come at me and tell me you're you're a fucking anarchist <sighs> like because you believe this shit this is this is you are you are something but you're not an anarchist because you believe this right anarchism is a is a political science topic it, it's not spiritual you can create a sort of flattened religiosity a flattened like taoist modality of operation for spirituality and understanding that hierarchies are philosophically unjustified especially in the context of your own spirituality and you can apply it as such but not the other direction <laughs> the other direction's goofy woo woo shit you know what, honestly, I'm just glad that I'm not the wackiest ideology around these parts anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, yours is at least grounded in, like, human, right? <laughs> well, that's the thing, is it's just trying to make the claim that human is, like, something we can't really know. It's kind of just individual, and thus, you know, just go wild. Um... <laughs> well, to me, it's it's this whole thing that people have where they're like, they can act without having a direct impact on other people. Like most things that you do in your daily life end up having an impact on somebody else. Yeah. Uh, uh, perk, 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 perkin, perkin G or whatever your name is. I'm sorry. Your fucking name is kind of weird to pronounce. None of this is what I actually believe. <laughs> Yeah, we're, I, we, we were talking with someone that believes this shit. Yes. What I am attempting to do is provide contextual information for somebody's belief system that I happen to be fairly well read in um, to my community at large because it's it's weird and it's difficult to grasp. And like I, I just happen to like have studied this stuff to an extent, a much further extent than most people probably than basically everybody. Um, so do not, I'm not like, you know, how would you explain these non tri I wouldn't, I wouldn't. All I'm doing is providing context for somebody's spiritual beliefs. That's all. It's um, a fascinating thing. It's like the occult. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like Dietrich, uh, Dietrich said, you know, I just think it's neat. It is. And that's why I studied the shit out of it. It's fucking fascinating. There's all sorts of really cool drawings and some amazing writing and fucking there's just so much cool stuff attached to it that like it's really fucking neat. I don't I'm I'm with you, man. I'm with you. It is fucking neat. It's neat as shit. And if you get into some of the mathematical sciences where they get into fractal design and how they're using fractals to discover new particles you know, the subatomic particles and stuff and filling in some of the gaps of that stuff. You get into that, this repeating shape circle thing. Oh, that, yeah. Who the fuck is Mark Passio, by the way? Like, he kept fucking dropping that name and everybody was like, dude, he's a grifter. Um, and he's about to die. Up and he looks pretty dying, Beginning the process of dying. Okay? It then also, whether that is theoretically possible, it's just unbelievably cursed. Oh, I know this shit. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Oh, he describes himself as an anarchist. That's why. Mark Passio is an anarchist, independent researcher, mm, public speaker, radio talk show host, conference organizer, and freedom activist. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me slapping my head when, when you said independent researcher? Yeah. Metaphysics, occultism, spirituality, symbiology, and consciousness studies. Um, 
the yep natural law the real law of attraction and how to apply it in your life um new age bs and the suppression of the sacred masculine streetwise spirituality demystifying the occult um uh, oh survive and thrive i know those guys um lead founding member and lead vocalist of the philadelphia based anarchist hardcore punk band the founders oh what is it with all these punk rockers being fucking insane oh Thanks. this is this Other is hemisphere, and therefore this is the death point of the sun okay so the sun is at 23.5 degrees south the lowest it's going to go its lowest strength and love them all and visually visually you doing, man? it it um uh, visually, the sun um, stops moving with respect to Day and war, man. You know I'm at in Gainesville, man. <laughs> Streaming for ten viewers. Um, Jesus Lord. Yeah, I know. I know this type of some audio. I know this type of fucking dude. Um. Oh Jesus! His fucking latest presentation: fake ass anarchists. Please tell me Vosh is in that fake ass ad. Welcome one and all. I'm Mark Passio of whatonearthishappening.com. It's great to be part of the Seed 4 virtual conference here today. I want to thank Brandon Martin. Why it's so not harmful behavior? Oh, okay. Um, not why so many false forms of anarchism exist and how to, di uh, how to distinguish inauthentic anarchists from the real thing. Hold on. Natural law. This is what he couldn't do. All right. We've got it right here from the source rather than fucking being filtered through somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. Apparently, um, yeah. Natural law is a set of universal, inherent, objective, non-man-made, eternal, and immutable conditions which govern the consequences of behavior of beings within the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful and non-harmful behaviors. The understanding of natural law is centered upon bringing our own conscience into alignment with objective morality. This means definitively knowing... And this is all capitalized. This matters to these people. Which behaviors are rights because they do not initiate harm to other sentient beings. And which behaviors are wrongs because they do initiate harm to other sentient beings. This is their definition of natural law. That's so fucking stupid. Jesus Lord. That's an egoist saying that's crazy. Um, it's, it's, it's not even that it's crazy it's just fucking dumb um here is so you know sort of what we're dealing with here here's one of the promo like the one of the uh, uh piece pieces of artwork on his website <clears throat> I told you these motherfuckers always go back to the ancient e egyptian mystery religions 100 every fucking time yeah. I love Ark. Ark is a great game. Don't don't <laughs> ever say that around me ever again. What? Ark that is, is a great game. Don't, no, shut the fuck up. Don't you don't even don't even say it joking. <laughs> I love Ark. Ark Get awesome. out of here. Um <laughs> So here here you go, folks. This is this is this is what he's about. In this empowering presentation and on this website, the following concepts will and ideas will be deeply dis, uh, explored. The components of our own consciousness. How to recognize truth and deception. The emotional polarities we experience in our lives. The differences between magic and sorcery. What a healthier, destructive worldview looks like. The basic nature of good and evil. The basic nature of the problem we collectively face as a species. The forces of dark occultism at work in our lives. The multifaceted methods by which human conscience is manipulated on a daily basis. The underlying agenda of those performing the manipulation. What natural law is and how it contrasts with the law of man. What sovereignty and anarchy really mean. 
grassroots solutions that anyone can empl- be employed to begin to turn the tide and heal the damage that was done to ourselves and our world. <clears throat> You're going to love this part, sweet. Oh, and he says tapestry, um, just like he did. He really was just spouting off Mark Passio. Um, the scope of this work is, I'll, I'll let you know when you're going to fucking lose your mind, sweet. Just, just so you know, to like hold on to the chair. If you say con science one more time, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Um, well, it doesn't look like it's in this any further. So you're good on that one. Um, the scope of this work is enormous in scale and a wide variety of seemingly unrelated topics will be covered. Each of these topics are large enough in scope that they could be considered separate studies unto themselves. The intention is not to cover each topic exhaustively, but to present an overall tapestry from which a larger picture may emerge in the minds of viewers and listeners. Get ready, sweet. Rather than absorbing this information from a a purely analytical point of view, it's suggested that one would benefit much more by simply going over the material with an open mind and an open heart and try to feel the information that's being presented from an intuitive point of view. Ask yourself if what you're hearing resonates with your inner knowing. Fuck you. (laughs) Just... See, and, that, and that's why I wanted to keep talking with him because I could literally just honestly say it's like yeah none of this on any level in any capacity vibes with me in any capacity oh. am I the am I the human embodiment of chaos in your mind <laughs> so oh. did, like Kai did you catch it when I like defined truth earlier tonight you tried you tried real hard <laughs> like my, my, my definition of truth is that which describes reality, but it has to be able to be adjudicated by predictive power. Like, you have to be able to test something yeah, to prove that it's real. Right. And, and this is basically saying, ah, feelings over facts, man. All is love. Fear is illusion. All beings are free. Truth can never be destroyed. Mark Passio. I've, I've, dude, I've known this guy. Like I Mark Passio, but I I've known this dude. Like I I ran in these circles. I know this dude. Like I speak this fucking language fluently. Rev speaks it too, by the way. Rev fucking speaks this fluently as well. Um. But yeah. Um. If you can't test it and it doesn't describe reality, what use is it? This is are you are you um. <clears throat> Again, Swede, just bear down. I'm broken. You broke me. <laughs> um. Finally. Oh, oh, actually, you know what? <clears throat> As a matter of fact, the absolute worst thing that could happen is that you leaving here believing anything you've read without seeking to verify it through your own research and in your own experience. The whole purpose of this body of work is to encourage others to seek the knowledge that can lead them to a better understanding of themselves and our world. Finally, I would ask you to consider that regardless of the circumstances or events that led you to this site, it is not an accident that you have found it. We are led to certain experiences for a reason. Oh, so we're in determinism now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like hardcore determinism. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking... Like, I am a determinist. <laughs> like, I full on am okay with even up to hard determinism a little bit. But Same here. That's, like, that's kind of what I was pointing out, though, is that, like, with his, like, definitional set that leads him towards truth, air quote-unquote, anyone can just define whatever the fuck truth means on any level, and you couldn't really argue against them. I, I just... I love... Um, good Estrella, God is dead. God's dead, so we need to resurrect them to kill them again. <laughs> Um, we already killed him once. Nietzsche told us. How you doing, nonsense? I'm doing oh, great. Happy, happy Brinicles, thrice reborn tonight. <laughs> Our boy. Oh, I can't believe it. Fucking <laughs> that dude just like didn't know how to read the room either. I tried to keep him off of that shit. 
And I was like, I've been trying to ask you about him forever because these guys showed up and I was like, what the fuck is going on? I couldn't even, you cracked the code a little further for me and God bless you for doing it because they keep popping into my mind. I'm like, what the fuck are up with these guys? And this guy was in my in my room because I was showing like a Michael Malice thing. He's like, you got to watch this Mark or Mark Paseo clip. And I played that clip that you played a part of that was fake ass anarchist. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand what was going on the entire time. I just felt like he was yelling at me and I'm like, I need clarity. And then I think it was Reverend Meat Toad saw that he has a Twitch channel, this Mark Paseo guy. And I'm just getting yelled at for an hour. And they're like, it's much better than the, it's much shorter than the nine hour video, <laughs> which explains everything. And then so I went over to his Twitch stream and it's just the earth. And he's like yelling at the earth. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh because oh here's the thing here's the thing if you get really deep into this shit the earth is um actually a prison it's a spiritual prison it's oh, a planet did xenu put us here it, well it is it is sort of in that fucking xenu vein of thinking like but it is in xenu but yeah no the third dimensional realm is a, a spiritual trap that multi-dimensional higher dimensional beings get locked into if they start experiencing fear too much fear is a lower vibrational energy and as such will lock you into a lower dimensional state and if you release your fear and you embrace higher dimensional energy such as love then you can uh, you can transcend to a higher dimensional plane let me guess the anunnaki are the higher dimensional beings i mean they they count amongst them yes Okay, that might that might answer a question for me, because uh, Paseo kept saying, you know, th these natural laws govern uh, people, uh, uh, humans with their you know level of consciousness and higher beings, and I'm like, who? Who are we talking about? Yeah. Introduce well, me. That, what well, the that's fuck? what I kept trying to push him on. Is like, where did these natural rights come from? And he just kept dodging. Dude, because because if he dropped the truth of the fucking this is what if if he were honest with you like I'm being now like about what this shit is about that he was talking about it's like you know you're not a fucking anarchist bro like you're not an anarchist that's not what you're about I know this dude has taught you to use the word anarchist but you're not an anarchist what you are is a crazy fucker <laughs> you're, in a, you're in a cult you're in a cult. To be fair, Kai, you're not an anarchist. You're an anarchist. <laughs> that, okay, that is true. <laughs> That's well. Uh, that that brings me to the other bit of it too, because that that lets you know that he's like just talking a load of shit. Because like, if he really wants to go all in on that, then like, why is he speaking modern English? Modern English yeah. is like possibly one of the most air quotes fabricated languages you could possibly speak. Like, full stop. It has it's like it doesn't yeah. resemble its well, old forms at all. Non. Anglo-Saxon, it's Norman, it's South Germanic, but the <laughs> nonsense. It's like everything. It is like the most man, air quotes manipulated language there is. Full see, stop. See, see, um, fucking cupcake. This is this is where, dude. He's he's been doing this for five years. I I started researching this shit in like my mid twenties, right? Like I'm I've got like a decade on him on this shit. Um, cupcake said, go back to Proto Indo European. My my name is derived from a, uh, a proto-indo-european root word meaning wholeness or of good omen Shut the fuck up yes see <laughs> this is this is the thing like i can fucking dick slap these people like i honestly i speak this language i'm schooled in their woo woo shit and like that's dude yeah like when he started leaning on syllables like at first i was like why the fuck is he pronouncing this word and then when he did the con science sorry swede when he did when he did that one i was like oh i know what's up i know what's up like i know these guys this dude's spirit science yeah i i had no idea what the fuck these guys were talking about and it's like I was just it's trying to discuss dope. something or, or something like that. And I was like on a three day long fucking wild goose chase, just trying to get one example on what the fuck they were talking about in terms of moral objectivism. I didn't know how they meant it. And I was just trying to get an example. <laughs> see, and in, that was, that got all fucking weird. And then I stumbled into his room just to kind of see what was going on. And he was entertaining a flat earther. And I'm like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And then I gave up. Next thing I know, he's on your show. <laughs> 
Yeah, some Dude. sense. It's funny how they tried to Trojan horse the woo-woo in. See, that's the thing is like they really they're they're slow. We, we saw that shit from a mile away, and that's why they kind of defaulted to like being mad that we were trying to air quotes debate them. It's like, no, dude, we're just asking you questions about well, your ideology. <laughs> technique is used by the uh, the ancient aliens people, too, which I oh, think yeah. this guy is just going to just no. try to yeah. snuck in, too, because the ancient aliens people use that to s sneak in racism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's yeah. it's all fucking dude. This, this shit has been used by everybody. You fucking show me somebody who's done some horrible shit. This stuff has been used by them. This is this is this is like fertile ground for crazy. Um, you know the, the 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 pyramids could not have been built by black people. You know they had to have alien help. Clearly, clearly. But all, I, all those I, massive megalithic structures where white people were that was built by humans. I mean, th th this is exactly what these people peddle. I, I feel like you guys do that. This kid is he's largely innocent, very sheltered. Uh, he doesn't quite know shit. what's going on. Very, very passionate. But it was funny because I found out that he's 21 because I hopped over. Thank you. On there we were, we were wondering. Him, right? And Telling then, yeah, he's 21. He's a nice kid. I, he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about on any basic level. <laughs> He's gonna be he's gonna be an eco fash. I have to fight in like ten years. <laughs> I hope not, but I, I it was so funny. Fucking, I, dude, I know my generation. I'm fucking telling <laughs> you. <laughs> I went I went in there. I went in there and then his dad walked in while he was streaming and started oh yelling about how we're all a bunch of assholes. <laughs> Jesus fuck man. And I was like, he's just trying to have a conversation with you, bro. He was hearing you out. I mean, it's like uh you just gotta, you just gotta fucking make your point. <laughs> um, yeah, like that's that's I, I you know, I know. No, that. he's not going Ampre Viva. I'm fucking telling you, give him ten years, he's gonna be an eco fash. I'm calling it now. Detrius, you know, Detrius said prison, a uh, prison planet guard. Um, <laughs> they have been so on my mind that I saw um Kai talking about the Anprems the other day, and I I don't really know anything about them. And then I was like, they popped in, and I was like, oh fuck, is that the <laughs> No, these aren't amprims. Amprims are very simple. They literally just despise technology and like mm. the society we've created off of it. Yeah, that's that's a very simple set of beliefs. It's yeah. fucking insane, and the justifications yeah. behind it are pretty insane. Yeah, but that's all it is. Amprims are just fucking. like you shouldn't be in charge of me, and we should return to monkey. Yeah, the uh, fuck. Like they go, they go far as far as saying like farming yeah. is too technologically advanced. We should go back to hunter gatherer. Yep, that's amprims are simple. These fuckers, these fuckers are a whole other... So they're like in the CrossFit. Yeah, Pretty much, yeah. Basically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love you nonsense. Um, <clears throat> and Prim's, and Prim and Ecofash have, have overlap, but these fuckers are, are going to be something else entirely. Because they will... I'm telling you, I think he goes Ecofash, though. Um, they will believe that what's stopping them, I mean, Tam, the need for, like, food... <laughs> because most of the fucking anprims can't hunt. <laughs> they well, don't know. Yeah, that's the thing is that like if we go if we go hunter gatherer, that means like destroying everything. Which I mean, yeah, and would you even like begin to do that? Sticks? Like, how do we get rid of the knowledge of farming? Yeah, you gotta you gotta go live in a cave and like not teach your kids anything. Basically, you gotta grow up in the suburbs. Um, that. Yeah, this 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 is this is something else entirely. Like these guys, these guys are peddling some shit that honestly, I. <sighs> it's I'm dangerous. Th I'm thinking. I still really want one example from them about moral objectivism. Oh no, dude, bro. See, that's the thing is they're not going to give it to you. This is this is honestly the the fairest comparison actually is Scientology because they're not going to give you like Really? Oh yeah, 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 because uh, okay, so what they're trying to do is slow roll the crazy. They're trying oh. they're trying to couch their language in terms of philosophy and in terms of political science, right? They're taking these very real tangible fields of academia and they're co-opting the terminology. And so they're trying to hide behind this artifice uh, of, of like academic speech. But one in fact, what they're actually talking about is aliens and shit. And so yeah. just just like fucking um, the Scientologists, I just speed ran you guys basically 
Like that's that's all I did. Like you're like, holy shit, there's aliens behind this. Yeah, I just I just saved you five years. Like, so are you so? Uh, one one thing. You, this is a this is a major cult tactic is to change the language which people use, which isolates them from other people. Mm -hmm. So that they have to run in the same circle as where that language is being used. Yep. It isolates them. Right, and which is which is yeah. why I was testing the bounds of like what is like self defense. That's why I brought up the blade of grass thing because it's like. Oh, see, here's the thing: they don't really believe in self defense at all because you're a multi dimensional uh, spiritual being who is a projection of the one consciousness. So really, it doesn't matter if you die. Right. I actually bought, brought up the moral objectivism thing with something that Mark Paseo himself said in that in that video where he's screaming his ass off at you and you don't even fucking know why. <laughs> but um, he's talking about, he's like, uh, there will never be freedom until the last king is strangled with, with the, the entrails, entrails of, of the, the last, last priest. priest. And I'm like, okay, is that morally objectively okay? Um, yeah. yeah, it's utilitarian as fuck. <laughs> it is! It is, and I'm just—I just want them to give me something. Just they don't even try, though. I mean, like I can't even blow up what they're saying because they don't tell me anything. Yeah, baby, Scott, get the <laughs> fuck in here, Scott, please, for the love of oh, God. Oh, you get missed in it, here. Scott. Your shit was boring. Our shit was crazy. <laughs> you, You're gonna love this shit, Scott. Dude, get Scott, in. you fucking missed it. You were you were busy <laughs> fucking diddling with fucking dude. Honestly, we we had the evening. So let me ask you another question. Are they really into aliens? Because they yes. keep saying that human consciousness is yes. higher, but they never say who. Yes. They really are? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, this isn't. Alien. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, yes. If, if you want to know in what way they're into aliens, you have to go back to, I think, Zachariah Sitchin. Oh, it, it goes. For, but yes. Go back. Wow. So if you get into Zachariah Sitchin, I believe, uh, Kai, before you go. Oh, oops. Uh, I believe the book is called The Twelfth Planet. The oh, I think I'm familiar with... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. those guys? Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> if you get into that... I totally fucking forgot about that. Oh, good. wow. Good, boys. What's up, man? Assuming everyone here is, is boy. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, don't worry about it. I, <laughs> my, my shit's I'm complicated a, these days. I'm a man. I'm 40. I decided that I'm as poly as poly can be, and if you want, to yo, me, what happened? What happened tonight that was so interesting? Holy what, what shit, oh, man! Kai, Kai. <clears throat> okay, so um, for the record, Has was reasonable as fuck the entire time. It was wild. Yeah, we, it's scary. We, we 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 had people keeping an eye on it, and we were just like, "That's boring." Um, so also apparently you sound like Pen Gillette, uh, Scott, according to Tam. Who's um, Penn Gillette and who's Tam? How do you not know who uh, Penn Gillette is? Tam's a chatter. I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, there's a lot of things Pen I don't fucking know. Penn and Teller. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Penn Gillette. <laughs> um. Okay. So there's this other fucking streamer who is in an anarchist. <laughs> Sorry, there's so if much. I hear you say there's so, science. I'm gonna kill you. There's so much, Scott. You missed so fucking much. You're, be, you're being very fair. You're being very fair. Um, okay. well, I mean, it is I've how he would describe it. Times. It is is how he would describe it. It is. I'm using his own verbiage here. Okay, so there's this other streamer called Cuckoo Nut TV, who describes himself as a like spiritual, uh, an a anarcho spiritualist or something like that, right? Um. <laughs> Scott, I can hear your brains licking out your ears. It, this is, dude. This is gonna get bad. This is gonna get bad. Um, so he's okay. been he's been wanting to have a conversation with me for a while. The first introduction to him was like I don't know, a couple of months ago or something. He apparently was restreaming me, and I was like, you know, hey, bro, ask first at the very least. Um, and so like he got contact through fucking apparently somebody else like put him in touch and he was like hey you know i'd love to talk to you because he came into nonsense his channel and nonsense and i go like nonsense is og scott way but, back yeah yeah like we so like you know nonsense like hey you know fucking okay so there's there's interactions on some level right so he gets into fucking contact with me and he's like you know hey i'd love to blah 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 F fine send me a dm you know, we'll, we'll make something happen. I've kind of just kept him on the back burner for a few weeks, whatever. But he was like, you know, Hey, I stream Tuesdays and Fridays. And like, you know, and I was like, eh, you know what? It's Friday. Fuck it. 
right? Let's let's do something. Why not? So we're talking. We're like not him. Like we're having a good <clears throat> good time. Cats on the air and like, like you know like we it, it, we oh. were having a good Friday, right? We're having a yeah, good yeah. good Friday. Bad movie night. Like let's let's relax, right? Yeah. We, we did. A, we even did an education se- segment on charitable remainder trusts. Yeah, like we we just you know quick. We, we were shitting on Hassan. We were shitting on Hassan. That's what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. That, that was the way that we got our rocks off today. Yeah. It we, was we, very much we shit spent, on Hassan. Yeah, we spent like 35, 45 minutes literally just tearing Hassan a new one. Um, and, I like it so far. Let's go. Yeah. Like, and we even, in, we even insulted his legs and the legs lost us like 11 viewers. Um, <laughs> not kidding you. Um, so eventually I'm like, all right, you know, he's tagging me in fucking voice chat and shit. And it's like, hey, fucking, all right, fine. Let's talk to this dude, right? I have no idea who he is, but somebody like described him as potentially ANCAP and something else. I forget what they described him as. I'm like, oh, fucking A. This the is anarcho-spiritualist or some shit, right? Well, you know, we didn't have that description yet. Um, okay. And they're like, I think he may be an ANCAP or something. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, cat, cat, do you want in on this? Like, you fucking yeah. get in, get in here and we'll fucking, you know, like this is going to be a thing. Right. All right. So he comes on and he immediately like, I, he, 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 you know, the dude who has the card in front of him and you fucking like, you know, he's going to read the card no matter what you fucking say to him. Right. It's, it's that vibe right out of the gate and i'm like dude it's friday we're just trying to fucking chill and hang out like tell me about yourself like fucking tell me right. something like yeah, he wasn't speaking to us he was in just, any capacity no no there he, was he he does that on his feet so i mean he'll even like bend into what you're saying and then you're thinking you're getting some sort of answer but then like no. 10 minutes later it's like what the fuck just did anything what happen happened? nothing he 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 literally spent like i was like tell me about yourself he then spends like 10 12 minutes literally telling us nothing literally nothing like there there's 10 minutes worth of word salad that is just being spewed about like natural law and shit it's like bro and i'm laughing i'm laughing like i'm literally just losing it over here and i'm like because chat's fucking blowing up they're fucking just eating this shit up they're like this is crazy as fuck like you know i'm like bro t- like tell me about yourself He's yeah, like, we're not, fucking, like we're not we're not fucking stupid church children. We can we can see what you're doing, you know? Like say something. Like say actually something. And he, it's it's like, well, you know, you, you didn't like he said something like, you know, you you didn't, you know, say anything about yourself and you haven't done any sort of introduction. I'm like, all right, so I fucking gave him the rundown. I right? fuck from from age four to now. Right? I'll tell you all about myself. I'm like, I'm a fucking open book. Like, let's let's talk. Like, this is who I am. Who the fuck are you? Right? Like, what are you about? What's your fucking deal? And he just does this constant dump of word salad. And we notice along the way that he's saying words weirdly. Uh, he's not an anarchist. He's not an anarchist. He's an anarchist. He, 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 that, anarchist. That human beings have conscience. Not conscience. Right? Like he's doing this. And fucking mm-hmm. a lot of our ears are perked. Like there are people in chat, Rev especially, myself especially, who are schooled in this shit. And we're, 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 tar- we, we have ideas. Rev is yelling, ask him about the law of attraction. Ask him about the law of attraction. You have to ask him about the law of attraction. We, we pretty much knew fairly early on what we were dealing with. But we kept exploring and we're like, okay, you know, like we can't get any straight answer out of this dude. Every answer involves like a five to 10 minute speech about something, but not really anything, right? Lots of, lots of terms, but none of those terms seem to be being used in the way that those terms should be used. Right, right, right. And so we're like, there's a lot being 
spoken, but nothing being said, really. He's making a lot of, like, weird overtures to, like, natural law, and I'm about nature, and this is how I came into uh, anarchism, and it's just sort of like, what, what the fuck is going on at this point? And we're starting to have this conversation, if it can be so described as such. And he says something about right and wrong. And finally, it got my attention. I'm like, wait, are you a moral absolutist? Well, I don't know what that means. But, <laughs> like, you're talking about philosophy. You're talking philosophical topics. And you don't know what moral absolutism is. So we yeah. <laughs> we go in, we would just quickly describe what moral absolutism is and he's like yeah there is a there is there's a real right and wrong there's a there's a provable right and wrong how do you prove that oh common sense it's it's just it's common sense it snapped off it fucking snapped off dude we're, we're just like all right it's time to hold your feet to the fire man like we were right, gonna, right, right. we were just going to have a conversation. We were just going to fucking hang out and be like, hey, you're an anarchist. I'm an anarchist. You know, it's fucking vibe on a Friday, right? No, motherfucker. We're doing this now. And then we brought up Hume's guillotine <laughs> and that like derailed him even further. <laughs> and then I, and then I tried explaining egoism to him. And <laughs> we basically, fucking- yeah, basically in an attempt to prove that there is no intrinsic right or wrong that this concept is a foolhardy concept at best. Swede went with Hume's guillotine. Cat Cat went with Sterner. And I just went with with basic human existence teaches us that humans are a subjective creature. And that I tried right and wrong throughout all time, different peoples, different cultures, different places, different times has been defined differently. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm I'm a functionalist. Right. Because that just seems to make the most sense to me. So, like, I mean, so, but no. Because I don't disagree with that in any way, shape, or form. But it's also like, okay, well, how do we, how do we create a, a meaningful, well, that's, like, how do we that's interact, fine. right? He believes, we have to be he, functional be, in he some believes capacity, there like, is a universal. Killing people, not very functional. You know what I mean? He like, believes there is a universal right and wrong. And so. Delivered by who? Well, we'll get there. Um, so like we're, you know, we're, he's got this, it's like, uh, this problem was solved, uh, by ancient Greece with Euthyphro's dilemma. Like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, you um, don't <clears throat> like the Greeks so, figured this out. Like, so you're wrong. He, he's got his buddy fucking who's been like in, waiting in the wings for a while saying like, Hey, this is why I wanted to come on. I can explain what I mean in like two sentences. And you know, like every time we ask him a question, there's like 10 minutes of word salad. And we're just like, what the fuck is he talking about? And it's just, it gets goofier and goofier and goofier. And then he fucking, he, he said it and he fucking, he, 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 I was like, oh, now I know what's up. Like straight, straight up. He said hermetics. Fuck is hermetics. See, this is what Uh, I'm telling, this is what I'm telling you motherfuckers. Like, this is why you got to keep me around. Um, Hermes Trismegistus. This is this is the philosophical balance that went against alchemy. Oh my god! I'm looking it up now, and it is just wild. Okay, Dude, it's right. a rabbit hole. So I am like I yeah. speak these motherfuckers' language. Like I I studied this shit. Like I've read the Hermetic Corpus. Um, and so like I'm like, oh, we're deep in the woo woo. We're deep in the woo woo shit. And so we eventually, basically, he just starts plugging his website over and over every time we ask him a question, right? Like at this point, like Kat is asking about whether I can turn somebody into a red mist if they steal the fucking blade of grass out of my hand. Uh, fucking <laughs> sweet. Yeah, right. Yeah, because he kept me. Because the thing is that he kept going back to like violence and trying to prevent violence. That's like the core of his ideology. So my thing is that, like, okay, so I asked him, like, he believes in self-defense, right? He believes in property rights, being an anarchist, air quote-unquote. So I was like, okay, so if I have a blade of grass, this is my property. I call it my property. We don't don't claim him, for the record. I I know, but I'm just saying, like, so I have this blade of grass. This is my property. If somebody fucking takes it, can I just turn someone into red mist then? Because his, like, one of his moral axioms was that hurting people is wrong. So... (laughs) 
The minute I asked him if I could just red miss somebody if they take a blade of grass from me, he just fucking he just go he just fucking starts plugging his website. Yeah, <laughs> he fucking just dodges the question entirely. We yeah, he did it. He did it twice. Yeah, he and did. and so at a certain point, I muted him because every time right. he. I mean, like that's that's wild. Every every well, the, the other thing mm. was is that he didn't want to agree to the fact that like words like murder it already imply a certain moral stance to what happened. Like murder means it was wrong, right? Yeah, killing. There's a difference. You use murder versus homicide, or right. murder versus because you can have unintentional kill. homicide. Yeah. You can't have unintentional yeah. murder, or or even killing. Like b- because that that was the point I was trying to make is is like murder implies immoral, but is it wrong to kill someone? Well, you know, you can think of 14 different ways that killing someone might be the moral position. And well, I mean, that was the thing. He asked Cat and I before Swede was even on the line. Um, he asked, like, would you, you know, well, would you harm somebody? And Cat and I both are like, yeah. Like, yeah, bite that bullet. Yeah. Easy. No problem. Yeah. All day long. Yeah. And it, it's like, it just, you know, it's like, well, harm reduction isn't pacifism. It, it just, you know, you know he, what I mean? Like, that makes no sense. So, like, so I end up muting this dude and he eventually drops off and his buddy's on the line. Like, I've I've brought his buddy on by that point. And, like, we have a lovely conversation with the other dude and we start to, like, understand where he is coming from and we start exploring. And I'm like, oh, okay. So after that he left, I did a little education for the class. So this motherfucker that claims to be an anarchist who is attempting to co-opt prescriptivist political science and economic terms under the guise is actually a front for basically a cult. For all intents and purposes, they are a cult. This Mark Passio dude is one of these fucking, like we would call them basically new age, but they separate themselves from the new age and the new age are demonic. Basically the fact of the matter is, is that you are trapped in a lower dimensional frequency state that is prison planet. All right. You, this is this term you've heard before, right? Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Okay. You are trapped in a lower dimensional frequency because of the fear that inhabits your, uh, your, your psyche and your soul. And if you alleviate yourself, if you associate with higher vibrational frequencies, such as love, then you can expand your consciousness into these higher dimensional planes. It's, it's ancient aliens, ancient Egyptian mystery religions and fucking woo woo ass shit right like this is this is what it's about and they literally like Passio on his own website says like oh you shouldn't analyze this information you shouldn't th- you shouldn't think about it you should just accept it with an open mind and see how you feel about it which is right what you need to understand wanted. Kai what you need to understand Kai is is people like Hillary Clinton and and people like Nancy Pelosi all right they're smoking the DMT and when they smoke the DMT they're 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 talking to interdimensional space demons all right these interdimensional space demons are telling them how to run the country all right these fucking neoliberal interdimensional space demons are giving them all the information they need all right and if you and if you just focus on love if you just focus on love you can you can get past that frequency and not be down into that low barrier with the interdimensional space demons and anarchism is the way to go to get that to get that taken care of Clipped. All right, someone clip that. I already, clip it. I already clip, got it. Clip it. I, I got, I got the Twitch clip, and I got the make, uh, make, uh, make echoes. <laughs> Which is right when you walked in, Scott, when we were talking about the whole where does this come from and the Zachariah Sitchin twelfth uh, planet book, you know, where he talks, you know, the the uh, the Anunnaki coming down from the twelfth planet to mine gold on the planet, be, you know, so that they can suspend it in the air so they can save their planet and shit. And, this is where all that shit comes from (laughs) um yeah no like straight up like these are like this is cult shit and so i did not do the alex jones impression um so there is there is a channel on this fucking network who are claiming to be anarchists who are actually a front for a fucking like spiritual new age cult dude i went into akashic records for a while I went into that phase. Like I didn't believe in it, but I I definitely like read like Irvin Laszlo's um, book on Akashic memory field. It was yeah. wild. It was interesting. Dude, I don't know if it's true. Yeah, dude, that's the I thing. It's it. like all of this stuff <laughs> is super interesting. It's really fucking neat to read about this shit. And like, it was it was like it was like wow, this is this is a cool theory. Where do you get this information from? Trust me. Yeah, like <laughs> that's you know. It, uh, <clears throat> 
Paseo has a nine hour video that I guess explains everything. And yeah, I was talking that. to the kid before because he keeps saying that he has like this scientific basis of morality. And I'm like, well, it, 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 where where's the studies? I'll just take a look, you know? And he's like, well, Mark links him to, to his site and everything, you know? And so I'm like, okay, well, I'll go see what he's up to. And he's got a list of topics and everything. And they're just saved Google searches. You just click on the thing and it just Googles whatever the thing is. My God. Dude, dude, this is, yeah, like it's straight up fucking like, um, I mean, so much shit has been derived from this vein of bullshit, um, you know, cabalism and fucking Nazi shit and fucking like uh, fucking Zachariah Sitchin. And there have been so many that have harvested from this arena. But I showed like on stream, I showed a fucking like some of what they I explained, like how how these fuckers think all of existence, like the pattern of creation works, the, the, the God eye and then expanding out into the seed of life and the tree of life and Metatron's cube and how this represents multi-dimensional multi-planar existence and these sorts of things and how these guys think about stuff but yeah like this motherfucker like thinks he thinks i'm a, f a false anarchist basically set forth like he's so he is basically tanky version of the spiritual woo-woo side of uh, how they feel about anarchists, right? Like, because they have claimed the term anarchism for themselves and that we are false anarchists because we operate in a lower dimensional frequency. Therefore, we are tools of the system, whether we know it or not, whether it is intentional or not, much in the same way that tankies believe we're CIA agents. I, I mean, unironically, I want this guy for an interview now. Go go get him. He'll, he'll talk to you. <laughs> He's just, easy to get. Here's, here's the, just to here's, fucking just here's, to fucking like just look at him and go the fuck. Here's here's the just, thing, Scott. You can't interview him. He doesn't. Yeah, answer, good luck. He doesn't answer questions. I'm not. No, oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about just putting him up and then laughing. Oh well, then you'll be fine. Yeah, just poke at. <laughs> you know what just, I mean? like just, just asking yeah, just, questions and then just listening to the goop.com just, answers. Just I guess. Poke, just, just whatever poke you him do, a little bit. Do, just do. Don't ever in any capacity make it seem like you're going to debate him because that that's that'll trigger the red flag and a fuck off. Yeah, like um, yeah, just poke him a little bit. Ask him about fucking like you know where he how do you like how do you get your morals where do the morals come from like what what is truth they're part of you it's reality mm. right just start playing like californication in the background <laughs> <laughs> i think under the bridge would be more his speed considering oh. his like speaking cadence no no i just meant because of the the reference to the anunnaki and that's yeah. oh right um yeah questions are just an excuse to pluck his website said beast um dude they, they got weird they have like a, a network bit. they have like a network they got like a whole network he's yeah. in a network they they do this thing like i guess they have this thing every year like called a narco polco or some shit i don't know i don't know anything about it except for it looks like they do have like several different contributors i can't remember what the network is though i went you know there. what though unironically that is a great fucking grift Right, because you, the anarchist community is full of a lot of dedicated activists and stuff, but like everyone in the anarchist community that I've ever met is someone that has been wounded by the system in some regard, right? Oh, he's sheltered. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like shit. Yeah, he has no fucking wounds. This dude has no experience in life. But I'm just, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, I think like, he's really. Like, I think too. it's a great grift if you think about it, because. I'm sure there are a lot of people within the anarchist community that found anarchism because they are searching for like answers to why this world is so fucked oh, up. Oh, hey, right? um, one of this and like it's a great place to just fucking pull people into your cult. One of the yeah, you uh, can really destroy people's minds. One of the like speakers, um, I recognize some of the speakers here at Anarcho Polco. Um, <laughs> Mike Adams. Does anybody know who Mike Adams is? Nope. Sounds like a really generic name for a white guy. I mean, that's because it is. Health Ranger? Health Ranger. Nope. Anybody in chat? Any bells. No idea. This motherfucker. A fucking Health Ranger. Oh, not this guy. There we go. <laughs> there it is. Oh, this is my wife's arch enemy. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is a registered dietitian who does like 
major food education. Are they, are they like are they like a raw food person? Oh, or are they way, like raw way, meat? They're no, a clean no, no. food person. Way worse oh, than that. God. Way worse than that. Yeah, he's he's dude. I I recognize some of these names. Um, yeah, they're like all th vegans. Th this is they, a, this they is tell a me they're like all vegans. Tap water in a McDonald's and say it's different than a tap water out of your house because McDonald's does something to it. These are, we're talking oh, God. we're talking deep level conspiracy theorists here. Like we're talking deep level. Like, like the globalists are here to get you with the heavy metals in the water. Okay, so like Alex Jones cubed. Like Alex God, Jones yeah. is probably just a grifter at the end of the day. I don't buy and, it. And remember globalist See, is always Q or what? See, I'm not sure I'd call any of these guys grifters because it seems to me that whatever it is they believe, no, they no. really fucking they're, believe it. They're cult, as as like, they're cult members. This is why I'm saying like Alex Jones Q. You like, asked him the Jewish question? No, we didn't even bother <laughs> fucking. I wasn't. No, I, the if, answer is. I would, if they gave me enough time, I would have tried. Um, but and, it, it's oh, Jesus. because he, the way he was spouting things off, it was all going to go back to the protocol so, design. Yeah. Oh, here's here. Oh, they've got Max Egan as well. Uh, oh, Cubos, globalists are the enemy of the right because global, because right wingers are nationalistic. Um, for, for those of you who don't know fucking Max Egan, he runs a thing called the crow house. Um, the illusion of freedom will continue as long as it's profitable to continue the illusion. When they say illusion, they mean magic. I mean, oh, like they're like they're not taking like some heady like uh, like Maya from like Buddhist philosophy, but like legit magic. They mean a third dimensional projection into your spirit. They mean it like they mean that you have no freedom. It is not a thing. You are one of the greater whole. You are existence experiencing itself subjectively, but you are an extension of the great one. There is no such thing as freedom because there is no such thing as separation. There is no such thing as these, uh, as these illusions. And if you They're like emanationists? Dude. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight up. They're fucking emanationists? <laughs> Fuzzy's fuzzy slippers. Thank you for the for the fucking sub. Like these people are like I I know these people. Like, and this is this is yeah, I had no idea what I was stepping into. I had no fucking idea that that's what I was gonna encounter tonight was this shit. Um, and of course it's, it's always like, yeah, it's always tied to the like global corruption system, but it's, it's always like <clears throat> these people have knowledge of these deeper systems because they're tied to higher dimensional entities because Annoyed you, everything is tied to anti-Semitism on this shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, fucking. And this year it looks like the, the anarcho poco people are taking up the, the opportunity to use COVID because covid is a lower demand. why not oh, oh yeah they're harvesting fucking medical tyranny and corrupt systems who seek to further control the human population mm. the mrna technology will lock your spirit into a lower dimensional frequency as your dna is this is okay so i've taken what they've said on this website but this part i know so your dna is actually an antenna that resonates with the frequency of of creation of existence those higher dimensional frequencies resonate through that dna and it's through that resonation that you experience the higher dimensional frequencies the spirituality that entheogenic experience of dmt like states and this MR mrna technology will alter your dna and further limit your experience and your ability to access it all right i'm sold let's go you Poor can't child. argue with science <laughs> yeah, the, argue with <laughs> this poor child didn't even have a chance if he's already on this deep he's, he's in a call is, is, is mrna jew science as, as hitler was yes saying? yes <laughs> well, he's, I think most science is jew science just given the amount of nobel prizes awarded to them uh, um yeah he's <laughs> just he's throwing that out there this dude's in a cult like he he does he doesn't even know like and that's that's the thing it's like man See, that's why i'm so against like that attitude against debate because 
Holy fuck, it is so easy to create echo chambers given the right conditions. Oh. Yeah, I mean they're all they're all talking to each other all the time and I just found it bizarre. I'm good at getting anything out of people, right? I could not get shit out of this kid and I couldn't the whole time and he seems like he's just sort of like into it. Like he's it's, just he's it's, just so into Mark Paseo, even though he says like, Yeah, I, you know, Mark Paseo is cool, you know. It, it, but like it's because how just, would you go crazier? So like when the flat earth people come to me, I'm like, Oh, you believe the moon is real? Oh, how yeah. do you Take this guy's thing and make it stupider. Um, yeah, I believe his dad is into this too, based on his reaction after um, he was on Kai, and I hopped over that channel. His dad was fucking. His oh, dad was wait, up. he was live that whole time? Yeah, he was. He went. He went live there at the end. I know. I saw him go live, and I went in there, and it was funny because he. You could hear Kai, but Kai already turned him down, and. Uh, I was gonna tell Kai, but it wasn't working out well for the kid at all. <laughs> even oh. though Kai couldn't even hear him. <laughs> um, what was he saying towards the end there? What what was the hidden so, piece of lore? So then his dad walks in and he's like, "They're th he's yelling like, talking to a twenty one year old kid like that, <laughs> sons of bitches, <laughs> like he's all fucking pissed off." But his dad he's is no, like typically really right? cool. I, I didn't know he was 21. I've been wondering how old he is. I know he's not a teenager because he doesn't look like a teenager, well, but he looks really young. Thing is like, I'm 21, so it's like, I'm, the, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm in the clear. Here I'm, told by, <laughs> I'm, to <laughs> it, I'm told by Estrella that um, apparently the, the family has money, too. The sister came on stream and promoted her channel, and her big thing was that they she had just bought a Tesla. What? Every time. Every fucking time. His sister? Mm-hmm. Is she at least hot? I'm telling you, like I when I when I asked if he was sheltered or not, like yeah, I knew. I'm like this dude is like upper middle class white kid. Dude, just the way he was talking. Yeah, like he, he didn't he, he didn't realize that he was kind of getting sh shit talked a little bit there. Like when he bit, when he was talking about like objective morality and a, a an intrinsic good and bad. And how um, we know this because every human being has a conscience. Look, I'm sorry, um, Swede, the alternative pronunciation of a conscience. Um, on science. Uh, I'm sorry, Swede. Uh, it, he, um, and I was like, dude, have you ever, like, talked to a murderer? Like, do you, do you know anybody? Like, have, like, I don't know. I'm like, yeah. See, here's the thing. Like, there's a lot of people who exist throughout the world d don't operate by this rule set yeah and yeah, then I, mean, you, I could i could show you a fuckload of them uh, i train with them on the regular yeah I, and <laughs> then crazy. you said and then you said you know well you, you think you're a little sheltered and he's like well i you know i don't think i'm sheltered and it's like the kid doesn't even know what he doesn't know yeah he's the def he's a walking definition of dunning kruger yeah uh, i it was I just wish he had examples. If he had examples, I could help him. <laughs> he, I mean, it was... Well, he's relying on people being rational actors. That just doesn't happen. I, I, I mean, and I mentioned that. I, I called into his show once, and I mentioned that, and um, it just, it got squirrely. You can't, you can't pin him down on anything. No, because he doesn't... You don't even have to go speaking. so far as to say murderers. You just go, go, go look at your average consumer in the supermarket. They're idiots. Speaking <laughs> yeah, I mean, of uh, Dunning-Kruger, I actually... A, a neoliberal on fucking uh, on the on the panel tonight <sighs> accused me of Dunning Kruger because I m dared suggest the idea that Democrats and Republicans use wedge issues as a means of distracting us as uh, as they make their corporate buddies rich. And he tried to tell me that uh, that the Democrats and Republicans don't work together in that regard. And then, like, it went over his head that I said that you don't have to have a conspiracy if you hey, have like-minded interests. Hey, Cyborg. And he was just like, and then he accused me of Dunning Kruger. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's Carlin's old quote. There's no need for a formal conspiracy when like interests converge. Yeah. Um, Cybot, do you know what anarchy is? Is my first question. Because that's the one thing I don't get with anarchists. You can't assume people will act rationally and not murder you, but you still want anarchy. You don't know what anarchy or anarchism is, do you? Because we're 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 prepared for that. No, it's not a lack of governance. It's a lack of the yeah, state. We, we're, yeah, we're into a government. We're just not into the state. 
Yeah. There's a political science distinction between those two Ladies concepts. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. Yeah, we got Alex radical. Jones playing. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now... I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Isn't Cameo amazing? Um, you know what, Master Debater? Yes, we want Mad Max World. Yeah, 100%. That's totally what we're about. It's not about, <laughs> it's not about heterarchical organizational structures or direct democracy or consensus decision-making or federation of affinity groups and mutual aid. It's totally about Mad Max. For sure. You got us. Yeah, Look at that. Damn. I want I want a water lord to rule at, rule over me and use me as like a blood vial mm. to like fuel his like clone demons that um, like go around just destroying everything. I mean, if we're going to like do the Mad Max world, can we, can we do water world instead of Mad Max? Just saying. That's happening well, anyway. Water world implies that we lost the fight against fucking global warming, so let's not. I mean, I just you know we can, like it, according to the like the basic in in universe lore for water world, we'd be living in a higher elevation. We know higher elevations create uh, uh, create saturation <laughs> levels for oxygen that are advantageous for um, actual extend extending lifespans. Um, so like we could potentially as a species be healthier in a water world scenario. So I'm just I'm just spitballing here. I'm just saying if we get to choose our apocalypse. Um <laughs> Oh, the master debater. Gills for the win. Exactly, Kodoshiku. Um I feel Waterworld is too hopeful. Feels Tank Girl's more real. Well, you know, maybe at least if, if it's Tank Girl, we can like have an option. Like we at least there's an option that maybe you'll run into some like manic pixie girl who has a tank and is shooting like random corporate overlord types. Um, you know, that'd be a good afternoon. That's a story you take back to the hovel and be like, oh, you know, share that one. I want Cuckoo to explain to me and prove to me that this is a, this isn't just some simulation. I mean, you, that's, you wouldn't get an answer. No, he, <laughs> you get fucking ten minutes of tap dancing with non sequiturs and uh, fucking word salad. You gotta believe. You gotta believe me, bro. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's science. It's science. My cortex, pay man. no pay no attention to the science behind the curtain. It's well, that's they have they have an intrinsic distrust of science. Yeah, it is. It, but at the same time, they like cite it all the time. They're well, like, because of science, we should do this. Earlier in his broadcast, he had up the definition of solipsism, and I'm like, how does he know? How how can he test that we're not in the simulation? I mean, we all just assume that we're not, but you can't really test for it. Nobody wants your... F Wait, is this in voice chat? Hey, what's going on? Uh, he's putting c his content in voice chat. Who the uh, fuck's doing this? Let me see this. Cuckoo. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, Ending sweet. slavery one mind at a time. <laughs> <laughs> that Gus dude was solid. Yeah, I like Good Gus. Gus. Gus was chill. Gus, Gus, Gus I, could I, hang I, and smoke some weed and fucking we'd have a great conversation. I mean, he was already high as shit on Valium. Yeah, so. right. Like I'm down with Gus. Gus is fucking chill as shit. He can come. To, he can come to the cookout. Gus gets a Gus gets a plate. <laughs> Barry and leave them alone. S Scott, I the see fact, you here. Scott, the fact that you giggled at that shit fucking tells me how many black cookouts you've been to. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to quite a few. Yeah, <clears throat> and they almost—they're—they're—they're they're, they're really cool. They're really fun. The food's really good. Um, it's a little bit scary because you become the uh, the, the the center of attention you do. throughout the entire process. And then at some point, 
someone starts telling you the wildest political shit you've ever heard in your entire life about like the gays and like the Illuminati yep. and like the fucking penis envy of whites and like all kinds of shit. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? And then the black girl that brought you there is like, no, oh, that's just my uncle Ray. Don't worry about him. And then you get marched off and then you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Did I, ever, did, I ever, did I ever tell you the reason that uh, the reason that uh, whites are so uh, jealous of our uh, our penises is because they're genetically inferior, and that's what led to the global homo conspiracy in order to steal all of our black men and turn them into fucking fags. Oh yeah, yeah. every single yeah. fucking time. There's always one at every black cookout. Straight up, and my response is always the same: is like, well, I came with her, yeah. so yeah. And then they right. just look at me and they get so angry and they walk off. Yeah, I my my previous boyfriend, my partner, like fucking dude. That that was his entire childhood. He fucking hated, like he hated that shit. That's why I, that's who schooled me on all that Welsing shit. It, yeah, like, like yeah, like that that yeah, it's fucking toxic as shit. But yeah, the cook the food's good. Food is good. <laughs> food's good. Food is good. And you become like the resident taste tester as the white stranger at the cookout. Just in case you're curious. Like if you're ever going to go to a black cookout and you get invited and you're like the one, like mm -hmm. not like up north or something, but like in a deep south, like black cookout, right? Like up yeah. north, there's going to be like 10 other white people there. It's fine. But like down south where you're the only white person there, everyone is going to give you food and ask you to eat it and, and ask what your opinion is and just... Just, just eat it and say it's all good. Hey, 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 Mama, Mama, get the hot sauce. Get the hot sauce. Put it on the mac and cheese for him. See if he, like, see if he, see if he can handle the hot sauce. Get the hot sauce. Yeah, I've been, the, I've been that white, boy, I've been that white boy a few, a few times. Ah, uh, ah, uh, we all, been, we've been there, we've been there. Um, I'm sure there's some like, we, there's some like Asian version of this as well for like there is you know yeah i'm sure there is yeah there is i, I, can, I can tell you straight out although although it's not just white people they fucking they extend it to like all races yeah i've been the token mexican and at like a thai cookout 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah although v see, the thing is that they actually bring out shit that does kick your ass that hot the hot sauce they bring out doesn't fuck around <laughs> uh, blue well okay i'll tell you about myself my name is kai here you go um. Uh, I, My favorite okay. part about the Thai girlfriend I had back in college was that when we went out to a Thai restaurant, and you know they would only have like three spices on the menu, like the one, two, three for how spicy it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, she informed me that there's stuff not on the menu that goes up to six. <laughs> I I, yep. I learned I learned about spicy food for dude the, and agreed uh fucking Aka love, th Thai spicy I love that the rich white guy had a Thai girlfriend in college I fucking did. love it I wish <laughs> um Thai spicy it's next level spicy dude that's how I learned about fucking spicy like I lived in the deep south and shit but no when I find like hanging with the uh the fucking Thai family that ran the restaurant fucking like there's there's Thai spicy and then his mother like straight up like I'm like ah uh, you know like a like maybe a four she goes Thai four or white four i'm like yeah there's a difference she's like oh yeah there's a difference like straight yeah. up there's a difference like when you white boys come into the restaurant like we give you a different scale than we give our people like, when i first learned this was happening at a, at a lot of the restaurants around where you know you'd get good like authentic like mexican food or asian food or something that like you know go ahead and give them the hot sauce we don't give to white people is what they would say and I was, it blew my mind because I'm like, oh my God, they might have put it on the table at some point and I fucking almost I killed a white killed dude. Some people. <laughs> and they're like, this is too dangerous. Dude. <laughs> I remember the first time I actually had like some like legit, like authentic, t spicy, like Thai curry. I fucking, I, I, I kid you not, I sat there for like fucking like an hour straight just fucking like just blowing out my mouth just like fucking straight up mouth breathing while just like guzzling water i fucking s yeah. i'm pretty sure i sweat off like fucking three pounds that dude day. don't guzzle it's water so that's that's yeah. literally what that's literally what a thai iced tea is for yeah um you right like thai yeah. iced tea is there because it has sugar and it has the fat in the milk dude right? well see i didn't know back both then. of those things help counteract the spice right look, thai look, iced tea look. is literally the best thing you can drink to get rid of the spice the ties look, the ties you know right leave yeah. me alone the ties take <laughs> spicy to a different realm um they they're, they're playing in a whole they're playing a whole different game 
Yeah. <laughs> like, no, they know. Yeah, I don't go too deep in the Thai shit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's fucking great. And I love spicy food, it. but it could, yeah. You'll be tripping and shit. Yeah. If you just if you just know how to ha like you just need to you need to just build up that tolerance. There's really no way around it. You just condition yourself over time. Yeah, the more it's, you eat it's it. an addiction. You get used to it, and you fucking eventually the receptors burn out. And, and you condition both <laughs> yeah. of your. Oh, really? That's what you're doing. It's like shin conditioning. You just it j eventually it just stops hurting. Trust the process. And remember, you're conditioning both ends of your GI tract. Yes, you are. Yeah. If it burns going in, it's gonna burn coming out. Um, Astral, thank you for the thank you for the sub, Astral. Um, it's bad when you go to a restaurant, get intense, and only have hot tea to drink. That's when things get real. That's right, my boy. <laughs> uh, scientism, atheism, moral relativism, Satanism. Oh, oh God. I told you. He was, oh I told you. So good. I told you. He was, dude, he's goofy as fuck. It's fucking. Yeah. I mean, his name is Cuckoo Nut. Yeah. Like. It's like. <clears throat> so he says like atheism, Satanism, and it, and all this say like you know, well you know we're not religious, we're anti-religion, and we're not really about God, but we're about God. And it's like, what are you? What's going on? He doesn't pick some dude. All cult, man, all cults speak in that same same way. They're all that way. It's a cult. I'm not kidding you. It's a cult. Yeah. Um, they all speak that way. They, as Swede pointed out, they redefine language for you. So you can't actually converse with the externalities of the world any longer. And they all use that sort of Orwellian new, uh, new speak that like nothing means anything and everything means nothing now. And so, you know, freedom becomes, uh, becomes uh, a fucking prison that you're entrapped in. Right. Like this, well, it's, it's more about, it's more about. It's more about opposites, right? It's about tying opposites together, right? So then that way, when you're confronted with new information, like your brain no longer flows in like a specific direction down like a rabbit hole or a, tra or a train of thought, right? So if, if, I can, if I can get you to believe that we're about God and we're not about God, then like your, your ability to critically engage with new information is hampered by the fact that you think of paradoxes as, as real truths. And then when someone says something that's counter to the, to the cult indoctrination, it's just another example of a, of a, of a paradox, right? And so now that you're already engaged in this lane of thinking that opposites can be the same thing, when when confronted with new information you can literally take that information and it doesn't matter how you process it because it could just be another form of an opposite and you can like engage with the truth and falsity of it all and just like disengage with it Dude, yeah that, that that happens a lot in mainstream politics too but it's like it's really interesting because i'm like you know these guys are going to be they're going to find a lot of really ignorant people who want to sound kind of smart and they kind of have a vague recollection of this and so they latch onto it and i'm like well at least they're not violent they claim they claim non-violence oh, <laughs> if geez. they can get a bunch of ignorant people to not hurt anybody then i don't see the harm <laughs> oh that's that's amazing but, that's amazing but the underlying Caboose. fact is that they, they will be violent eventually because it's always rooted in anti-semitism well it's they're not even going to be cleansing it's not rooted in anti-semitism at the end of the day but you better believe they'll end up there and i don't think they'll get to the uh to the jews first usually they get to their own cult members first yeah yeah they yell at each other a lot i've noticed that um yeah caboose that was dude that was fucking sweet Cab caboose fucking hits him scientism atheism moral relativism satanism not looking so good you guys <laughs> so, so but so be it the knowledge does its own justice caboose comes back and goes what about autism <laughs> <laughs> um is an and cap i feel personally hey, attacked <laughs> oh jesus christ um we got a few canadians below <laughs> we were talking about it the other night but i will tell you we're, we're having a good fucking riff right now um yeah no it's they usually fucking end up harming their own people first um they fucking they start with that like what seemingly innocuous but shit like love bombing and shit like that where you know oh straight up gaslighting what i'm doing is actually love it's like no bitch what you're doing is emotionally and uh emotionally and psychologically abusive and manipulative 
Um, hey, Cuckoo just sent me a DM. Do you know anything about Law From Within by Ken Bartley? Oh, Jesus. Goddamn Christ. <laughs> Is he still watching? Story time. He's, he's is, sending is he me still, direct messages. Still watching? Story time. Cuckoo, come on, buddy. I don't. I've never heard of that. I thought I'd ask it. Yeah. I'll just. <laughs> I'll just. So, he's well, sort of upset that nobody seems to respect his 400 plus. Yeah. Uh, video content. Okay, so here I'll just I'll just give you the the back of the book on this one, knowing what we know about them now, right? All right, so you know, yeah. like you sort of know how they talk, and you yeah. know what they mean. We're we're just gonna we're just gonna, we're just gonna we're gonna read the back of the book on this one. <clears throat> okay. Mankind is centuries overdue for a sharp mental and moral shakeup. Men and women know nothing but servility, slavery, and unceasing tyranny. What else can there be but bloodshed when society authorizes a state to make laws enforceable by gunpowder, or when government rules morality despite that rule is immoral by nature? Natural law answers those questions, but who knows what natural law is? Kenneth E. Bartle's law from within f reveals the principles of natural law. Astounding revelations offer a new appraisal of man's nature, consciousness, subconscious mind, free will, conscience, emotions, ethics, morality, and justice are explored in a loving manner for thinking minds. 40 years of research and study challenge several uh, uh, several olden day ideologies. Human and social science is tried and found wanting. Diagrams help explain 20 natural laws showing the creator's bountiful invitation to truly live. These rules of process exist for our benefit and joy, free will upheld unreservedly. Grasp these vital natural law principles as law from within, and you will see how virtuous nat natural law belongs to all of us may forge a free moral and just society for you and your children one never dreamed your life and their lives are in your hands seems kind of alarmist yeah <clears throat> i'd what never heard of it he's trying to he's trying to talk to me he also sent me okay Oops. guess what what he kept going just check that out sometime Oh, he's going in the voice channel still? No, 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 no. Just, I, just, I, I sent Kai some. Cool. <laughs> just the. It was, it was, it's funny. Just it past the three thirty, three hour thirty mark. Oh my god. Were you skipping around in the Peruso video or whatever? He actually sent me a. I just saw this, because uh, we we're kind of saying some of his slides. Okay. Um. Holy shit. Uh. Oh my god, it just keeps, keeps, keeps. Wow. All right. Oh no, I've, I've pulled it from like my mix down oh uh, i can i can make it so i can hear things without broadcasting it or you guys hearing it i uh, really need to get around to doing that yeah um just mad that this guy gets slightly more views than me that was holy shit <laughs> crazy isn't it yeah he's oh, doing way better than me <laughs> Um, I, see, guys like this make me want to stream more. Jesus Lord. Oh, Lord. Is it him? Are you guys looking at him? Yes. Should have asked if he thought Jesus was a higher level being that tried to reach us. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. 
that's that's usually that's usually part of their their stuff yeah um yes uh subsets yeah usually that is a thing as well um the the prosperity gospel people do that as well but uh these these whack jobs do it as well as too um that having right. we wealth is used as confirmation that the person is li in line with their uh, idea of morality yeah right but you also have to make sure that you sacrifice your wealth to those people so that you can cleanse yourself of your of your lower frequencies nice um yeah Balloon. That lead. fuck off <laughs> all this cat has done is show uh, show off his painted nails okay do i need to do anything more than that i mean he could show off a few other things are you sure are, are you asking for that yeah what are you what are you what are you trying to get out of me what what is the what is the end goal of this parasocial attention that you're seeking you want him to show off more um, someone else was obsessed with your nails tonight too yeah, well. it's it's the weirdest thing that gets people riled up i i think it's great oh, well there you go um fucking scott. scott coming in clutch <laughs> fucking scott <laughs> yeah well you know as the people demand it uh, scott curtsy for you scott mm. this is directly <laughs> <laughs> there's my boy yep. you can give you a curtsy uh, put in the extra effort yeah yep <clears throat> yep, yep. Uh, rate of virus they to follow. Um, let's see. Spammer got banned. Somebody got that banned. was a terrible curtsy, but you know, I'll allow it. Nice. Um, oh god. Oh god, he's put real anarchy Larkin Rose videos. He's talking about Larkin Rose. Do you know anything about Larkin Rose? Oh, fucking. Um, I know the basics of who the fuck this person is. Um, and like he's um basically okay so larkin rose usually how most people find larkin rose is um fucking income tax he's oh yeah oh yeah he's one of those people like he he believes that like he's sort of sovereign citizen plus this spiritual weirdo shit okay like it, i get that yeah, like that's basically somewhere on the internet is me doing curtsies in a skirt. Um, get to know that you've left that hunt, you, you've left the the uh, source of that hunt out for us. Yeah, there you go. Somewhere on the internet is me doing it, in 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 a in a camping trip for Capital Swing when I was in show choir. God damn. Um, there you go. Yeah, he, um, yeah, Larkin Rose is one of those proponents of, um, like, you know, don't pay your income tax and, like, you might be able to get away with it type. Um, good luck. Um, I think he's got, uh, like, one of his more infamous blog posts is, like, Christmas in prison or some shit like that. Um, so, yeah. He seems to be a huge fan. Of Larkin Rose specifically, I'm not. Maybe even surprised. more than Mark Paseo. Um, I'm. You know, I'm not. I mean, at this point, I'm not terribly surprised at any of this stuff. Um, Blue. Well, maybe like, I don't know. Observe. Maybe ask questions. And. Then try and make critiques about something you don't understand maybe the fact that you're coming in towards the end of a stream on a friday after a long week of streaming and we're heading into bad movie night and that maybe a strictly you know political arena in which people have high level discussions oftentimes are attempting to decompress a little bit after having some very weird conversation with somebody uh, earlier in the stream <laughs> Um, who makes claims to political uh, foundational theories that they have no claim to whatsoever. Um, and in fact are gra grounded, are rooted in um, very weird woo-woo spiritual shit. And we're trying to just get a grasp on reality again after a very odd conversation. 
But hey, you know. Or you could just, like, say that all this dude has done is show off his fingernails. And, okay. Um... Nah, it's not you, Floyd, at all. Oh, he's playing victim. Who is? Uh, Kukunat over in voice chat. Basically, quote, this guy is very weird. Don't trust his stuff. Don't look into it for yourself. Take my opinion about it, unquote. He's playing victim. Okay. Where are you guys looking at this? Come on, kid, over? toughen up. Toughen oh, up. Voice chat, God, yeah. like uh, look, above on air. Look, look at, look right above in voice channels, where it says voice ch hashtag voice chat right above on air. You'll see. Bitch, the amount of shit that has been thrown at me in this fucking channel, and I'm still on air. Like, calm the fuck down. To yeah. be fair, we like you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't. I don't think you're. I don't think you're an anarchist, but I love you, Scott. <laughs> um, I, I, I like you as a human being and you definitely get a plate at the cookout. Um, yeah. but you know, yeah, like this motherfucker, like this motherfucker. Yeah. No, nobody, I, yeah. Mm. yeah. Nobody wants to throw you in the communally built gulags. <laughs> yeah. Like this motherfucker, you get a plate to the cookout. <laughs> like I'd be, I'd be worried about Dude, all we'd hear all night is about how like did like is the food of a like who who picked the food and is did, were they like spiritually grounded or centered when they picked the food because their lower vibrational frequencies might have been transmitted into the food and lock us into a third dimensional plane of fear and hate. It's like, all right, bro, you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> he, he seems to be upset, and he seems to think that you know. Uh, everybody here wasn't very nice to him but like you know when it gets to the realm of like any intellectual or any political discussion shit gets really nasty and i think everybody here has been really really kind you know i i don't know what he's expecting i mean do we all just go hey you're absolutely right uh, uh teach us we're just going to just like forego all of our fucking experiences for our entire lives and just accept everything that you say i, I don't i don't know i don't know why you would expect it Dude, I'm looking through the VOD. His chat was terrified of me. <laughs> oh yeah, no, dude, you are you are chaos incarnate to them. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, like and, and, and apparently, then, apparently, Haz's chat was all about me all night. <laughs> dude, ha I, I know Haz would like you if he just had more time to talk with him. And by <laughs> like, well, I don't know if he'd like you like openly, but I know he'd like recognize you as a good like content farm public. Uh, public said if you don't agree you're the asshole just them's the rules yeah. um yeah it's about right it's about how it goes it's it's sad to that's me though because he, it's like well, that's I mean, like the attitude but it's like what am i even agreeing with <laughs> well, i mean that's the thing is that he came to proselytize <laughs> yeah he didn't come that he didn't have he didn't come to have a conversation he didn't come to like discuss his ideas in depth he just came to well, he basically just wanted to propagandize, and, and, and apparently else. his chat warned him. Like he said, yeah. like it was, it was brought I mean, he, to the his I mean, attention that like if you go on Kaiser and you do this, he's going to have he's going to do what he does. And and that's the thing is he told us up front that he was cool with us holding his feet to the fire. So it's like we we can't like do we have to be sympathetic for someone who burned themselves on the stovetop? Yeah, like, f bro, like you bought, you brought some crazy ass shit to the party, and we said we're gonna, we're gonna question crazy ass shit if you bust it out, and he busted it out, and then got butt hurt that we questioned it, questioned it. Cuckoo, I know that you can hear me. Everybody was really nice to you. I mean, like, you can go back and look at like all of the epic takedowns that have happened on this channel, where people were like really kind of mean, and nobody was mean to you, bro. Dude, Squee has the most, like, in a realm where Squee exists, and he's, like, one of the most ardent supporters of the channel, and, like, just honestly is filled with nothing but love. And after the shit that happened to Squee on this air, oh, shit. take it down a notch. <clears throat> oh, no. Well, look at that. Um. Fair call, Kai. Okay, so if I do this, 
All right, first. We, Fli we, flip a I'll, coin. I'm, I'm cool with bouncing. I'll let you have them. Flip a coin. Tails. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm going to have to fucking clear house for this. All right. <laughs> All right. Good, goodbye, everyone. I, I'm being forcefully removed. This is statism, people. This is statism. Yes, we're we're, engage, we're engaging in authoritarianism. Bull structures. Yeah, look at shit. this hierarchical fucking bullshit. Fucking, fucking fake fucking anarchists. Hypocrite. <laughs> fucking. Uh, um, Don't do any of that moral relativism. We're uh, we're we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna gulag chat. We're gonna we're gonna keep. Feel free to jump over to voice chat though. Um, I will jump over to voice chat. We're we're gonna I keep we're well. gonna keep this short. Um. Oh, you bitches went to the beach. I shut shut the, the shut channel. the fuck up. All right. Um, and they're going to the wrong place. <laughs> um, all right. So hang on. Um, there we go. Come on. Uh, they're doing a thing. They're doing a thing. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back and then we'll do this. I'm two gummies in. Respect, boss. Respect. Oh, Jesus, it's 11 o'clock already. It's 11 o'clock already. Hey. Welcome back. How's it going? I just uh, said, I asked them a favor. I was like, hey, could you send me your resources, all your books and stuff and links? Because I still didn't get any resources from anybody. And I was like, darn it. Um, that's all I care about is like the textual material and I, I agree with you. I don't want to make this too long. I just want to chill. Um, I ended my stream already anyways and uh, not a big deal, you know? I mean, all of our resources are actual political science texts. Okay, cool. Congratulations. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to also disprove that, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not like offended or anything. You guys didn't offend me at all. <laughs> I don't care about like the whole political science thing because I don't see it as a political science. I told you I see anarchy as reality, and it's a totally different view from yours, but that's okay. That's okay. I mean, here's the thing, right? If we agree that we both want freedom and that statism is a problem, then we're okay, right? We don't have to really worry about it, but we do have to agree that it is, you know, <laughs> a, a system based on violence, and, you know, we're trying to create a freer world and in order to do that we have to free ourselves right is that is that correct am i getting you wrong am i, I you guys said i'm super rude in the chat like i'm just just talking you don't hear yourself what do you mean oh you're being rather dismissive snarky and sarcastic oh okay i'm sorry i didn't i didn't mean that um and many people managed to read it. All right, cool. Um, if that's the case, so be it. I'm sorry, I can only do so much. You know, 
do my thing. Watch my streams if you want. I mean, I'm not like that, so. How about sure. I come onto your air and do a takedown and be dismissive about all of your cult level bullshit that you spew? How'd that feel? That felt good? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so this is this is your oh well that doesn't really matter. So fuck your space, fuck oh, what you're that. saying, and um, you know, hey, why not? Like I, I know we we disagree, but agree to disagree, and basically your definitions don't matter to me. So dude, like that's literally how the how you came out of the gate right there. Well, yeah, no, if you do want to do a presentation or whatever, uh, I'd always be open to that. I'd like to actually be able to have a conversation with you as a human being for once. Not no, not like listen to not. 10 minutes of word salad every time we ask you a basic question. Okay, I'm sorry that you see that as word salad. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, man. Like, you, you preach this ideology. You preach this ideology. method of being. Leave it at the door. Yeah. Leave it at the door, bro. Enough with the con science and the anarchy and shit like that. Be real for a moment. Be real for a fucking moment. All right? Leave it at the goddamn door. You preach this shit, but you come at everybody from this holier than thou, higher than you. You're lower than me, and everything you believe doesn't actually matter because the only thing fundamental in this world is my belief. It's That's really not. fucking offensive, and it undermines your own position. Ooh, you are getting offended, aren't you? You are getting so insecure right now. Listen. This, I'm not here to. This to is the conversation. This is the conversation with everybody in your, on your side, isn't it? See, this is this is the issue. You can talk to them. There's a lot of people. A lot of people. I hope they're better people than you. Okay. Because man, you do your own cause a disservice. I'm fucking red in this shit for fuck's sake. I immediately went into all of the ancient uh, ancient mystery religion roots that you're you're pulling from. I know who your people are. I know these fucking terms. I've studied this stuff, and I've probably got a decade on you at least. So the fact of the matter is, is that you being condescending about these topics to me is a laughable concept to start with. But the, but you don't meet anybody in the middle. You're not having a conversation you're proselytizing you're nothing more than a mormon at my doorstep i was trying to find common ground in the beginning of this call and the call before you are just jumping to a dot of attacks and i'm not doing that at all so if anyone's at fault gaslight you're showing yourself right gaslight now. yep it's just that's putting a label on it good job you like you like labels don't you <laughs> very good very good Yeah, what was the deal with the glasses? Um, well, to show that you know there is a left brain imbalance present within uh, society. I was just ha having fun. I had nothing mm. against you guys. <clears throat> sure, sure, sure. Because you're better than that, right? Well, I like to have fun. I told you that I like to have fun with this stuff. So, um, I oh, just like to this have fun. this stuff. What's this stuff? You got to be a little trolly too sometimes, and you're doing it to me too. I'm cool with it. Um, what do you mean? What did you say? I'm sorry. This stuff you said? Mm -hmm. This stuff, I mean like this knowledge. Like, There's nothing wrong with just having fun with realizing that you're free and that everybody else is, you know. Live free, y'all. Who... Live free. You speak you like mean? a neoliberal. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, we're all free by God's creation, by nature's creation, however you want to see it, universe. Prove it. I can choose to do whatever I want. Can you? Free will. Can you fr Can yes. you fly? No, as long as human ability, of course, you're limited to the laws of nature. That's oh, okay. So you are law. you are actually a limited uh, you are a limited being with a limited set of senses and experiences, right? Of course. Everything so you make claims limited. to understand the ineffable. Do you might do I make claims to understand the inevitable? Ineffable. Ineffable. What do you mean by ineffable? I'm sorry. I need to. I need you to break some things down. You use common sense language sometimes for me. I'm sorry. The unknowable God. 
Okay, so do I believe in the a god? Is that what you're saying? How do you make claims to know the nature of existence itself, the fabric, the blueprint, that which underpins I'm all? I'm not saying that. I'm not claiming that. Then how do you know truth? Because it's present. Even if I don't understand it. <clears throat> Even if I per believe one thing or another thing, my belief is irrelevant. So my perception has to do its best to try to align itself, but it's never going to perfectly align itself, of course. <laughs> I'm glad, by the way, we got away from tax. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Um, when's the last time you fed a homeless person? That's irrelevant. No, it's the most relevant thing possible. When's the last time you created real good change, actual tangible well, change in this world? I try to do my best. Isn't that make sense? No, no, it doesn't. Not when you're spreading woo-woo shit to the wind. What matters is that there's probably somebody starving down the street from you. What it matters woo -woo, but is to someone else it might not be. What matters is that there is actually an authoritarian police state. What matters yeah. is that there's actually people being beaten in the streets. What matters yeah. is that your representation as a white, probably heterosexual, cisgendered male in this society is overcompensated for, and you should be using that representation to speak. Oh to be a social justice warrior? Oh, love that. No, no, yeah. I'm not a fucking social justice warrior. <laughs> uh, you want to roll out Pepe next? Yeah, I don't know, it's funny. It's just, you know, I, I have fun with the world, you know? I don't, I don't, I don't take things so seriously. Uh, so. I do when people are literally dying of preventable illness around me and that people are starving to death and people don't have houses. You yeah, know, that's very real and very that. serious. Yeah. And the I fact that like you make fun it. of it and you joke about it undermines the entirety of your position of love and consciousness and greater understanding. I don't, I don't make fun of it. That's what you literally I just did. Out of my heart. I don't make any money off of anything that I'm doing, dude. And recently, I mean, I just got the sub button, but that was that's something separate. I just, I I never even knew about that this whole thing. Um. I think it's it's cool, you know, Twitch, the whole Twitch thing. But but yeah, I never never got paid for any of it. I do it all out of my heart. Over 400 videos, over hundreds of hours, thousands of hours. If you look at Mark Passio, I mean, he's got hundreds of thousands of hours, podcasts and presentations and. You know? mm -hmm. um, and when's the last time you volunteered at a soup kitchen? Makes no money. When's the last time you were at a I don't know a BLM protest? When's the last time you did Why anything? Why would I go to a protest? I don't see that as a way to effectively create change personally. That's why. Um, but of course, I support all peoples and what they do and why they stand up for what they believe in. That's fantastic. Um, but, but yeah. Kind of funny, uh, Zippy mentioned ego. I know he, <laughs> he likes talking to me, but you got, he's called yourself an egoist. No, you guys I did Cat did. And the fact that you can't differentiate between two people is a little worrisome. What do you mean differentiate? Tell the difference between. Between what? Can you please finish your sentence? Catacillo and myself are not the same person. At no point did I describe myself as an egoist. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought... So he was talking to me before. I wasn't sure who was talking to me. I'm sorry. You guys sound similar to me. I'm sorry about that. Um, I, I didn't know. <laughs> Various. But uh, Cat was cool. That was that was pretty cool. Uh, I appreciate him talking to us as well. And um, yeah, is there anything else? You're the one who wanted back in. 
Okay. We were, well, all, I mean, we were already... I said I'm here. That's all I said. I just said I'm here in case you wanted to talk because I heard you guys said, well, he's not going to talk to us again, blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to back out of it. I don't want to give up on you guys. I'm not about doing that. But the thing is, I don't want to... I do want to just make the statement clear. I don't want to be the victim. I'm not trying to make myself the victim. I never felt... Um, attacked in a sense um you guys are always respectful and i appreciate that and if chad and everybody else can do their duty and look up this information i think that speaks for itself right and stop being so really prescriptive as it. an anarchist you're really being prescriptive anarchism isn't a prescriptivist set of I'm ideas sorry, coach that's what i <laughs> i'm used to Talking about action steps. I want, I'm all about action, action. steps. Oh, action steps. Like, oh, I don't know. Contribute to a charity that makes sure that people don't have to ration their insulin. That should be something a lot of people do. Everybody does. Hopefully. Do you? Yes. Mm hmm. What do you mean, uh huh? I can show you like different soup kitchens I've worked for and different churches I've helped out in and all these different organizations I've been to throughout all my life. And yet I moments think, ago, you couldn't I, come up I with love, any of that. I love, like, I just, I have a care for humanity genuinely. And that's why I don't give up on people. I don't, I can see this feud and it's regardless of what it comes of it because I just care for you guys as human beings. I don't care about these ideologies at the end of the day. And I know you guys want to focus on that perhaps, but... Just, it doesn't matter to me. I just want us to realize that you literally we're free. just pivoted on a dime and changed everything that you had said in the previous few minutes. What do you mean? I, I'm just promoting nature as the answer. It's the idea that you know we're inhabitants of this world, and you got this. World you know what? To be respected Ren and understood. Renovirus. Maybe you are no. right. Maybe I should. I'm calling your bluff. Show the receipts. I want them in DMs in three hours receipts yeah when's the last time you donated to a medical charity that helps somebody is that even any of your business anyways nobody believes you <clears throat> cool so what because we think that you're actually a narcissist who engages oh, in a self masturbatory exercise oh, amazing like it's the whole act of doing charity anyways is to be selfless i haven't done it that recently but i've done it before these days, you're more into the self-masturbatory exercise of producing spiritual videos. Hey. And misappropriating terminology in a prescriptivist I format. I don't that often anymore, actually, to be honest. Uh, it depends, but I'm doing a lot of in-real-life stuff, so... Because I'm always out there with people and talking to people, and there's nothing wrong with that, I see sharing ideas and opening minds and that's what i do in my channel everybody has a good time we have fun bring on my family we're all close to each other and not a lot of people have that i'm very grateful for what i have and so all i can do is you know help share that with other people in a sense and say you know this is in a free world where people will be more responsible for themselves and care about more about others it is actually a scenario that lines up Yes, but if anybody actually has the philosophical underpinnings to talk about mutualism in any level of academic regard, you dismiss them immediately and say that that's not really important, though. I don't dismiss them immediately. You dismissed it immediately when Kat and I both tried to talk about it. Well, I don't want to debate about it because it would last hours, and I said that. I don't want to be on here. It's like it would take stinking years to describe anything, and that's why we have hundreds of hours of content and why we put out content to begin with. You don't come exactly. on somebody's show and say, listen to my back catalog. You come on somebody's show to have that conversation if queried. Okay. I go, I if I go on somebody's show, I expect to be to... able to discuss anarchism at depth and length because that's sorry, what they have me there for. You also said it was a Friday. You didn't want to talk too much serious about it. We didn't want to, but then you went on a 30-minute diatribe. So, I mean, that way I could describe my, at least my intentions and then leave with information so people can look into it. So you were here to proselytize, not have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, because I want to share knowledge um, and have a conversation in the process. Sure, but it's ultimately always to share knowledge, right? <clears throat> I'm not here to like make friends or be popular. I'm, I'm here to share ideas that can potentially change the world.
Um... So, I mean, you judge of it as you wish. People can take it out of denial. I mean, we adding more focus to me actually gives me more attention anyways. And it's like, you know, and I, I know so it is about you. Music content too, so okay. I don't know, maybe it helps you too, but cool. like, I just wanted to do that and, and leave. And that's why I said originally my messages to you were, I want to share natural law. I didn't have to do it on air. I didn't have to do it off air. I just wanted to share the ideas, like the links and stuff. And I didn't know the best way to go about in doing that. But coming on mic, sure, you arranged it. I said, okay, I can do that, and I'll talk a little bit about it. But I didn't expect anything of it. I just take everything as a conversation. I don't take it as an argument. It's not a big deal to me, you know? You're pretty good at gaslighting people, aren't you? I guess if you say so, man. Whatever you say is, uh, I guess, the truth, because truth isn't a thing, so... <laughs> You're up, you're decently leveled at fucking narcissistically styled gaslighting. I gotta give you give you props in that regard. Like it's it's rare that you meet somebody on Twitch that's actually that uh, decent at it. You you play a decent game. Yeah, right. I, I I I'm mildly impressed at it. Now, what I'd love to know is if this is handed down, whether this is environmental or whether this is actually an intrinsic skill that you have. Um, but ultimately, I'm not going to dedicate that time to it. We have bad movie night to get to, and we'd much prefer to be watching. Uh, um, uh, fucking Scott saying he's not good at it. He's just actually has a narcissistic personality disorder. It's a defense mechanism. Um, and that somebody's actually schooled in these but sorts of things. But you might be practicing solipsism or nihilism. Define nihilism. Well, by not really accepting any objective standards by that regard, I'm just saying you may Define have Define nihilism. To Define it? Well, look it up. No, you use you. the term. I just told Demonstrate you. your knowledge of the term. I just told you the, what it meant. Oh my gosh, you don't listen. It's and, and that's you the thing. didn't like, define it, and now you're pretending like you too. did. Define if solipsism. They can watch the VOD for the other stuff I said. Um, and if you don't think that's evidence, then I'm sorry. You don't think conscience and using internal, innate, I'm, universal... I thought, you didn't, I thought you didn't like labels. Huh? What? You criticized the use of labels. And you, you, you sarcastically... Imp oh, you labels. really like your labels, don't you? I mean, every word is technically a label, but I'm oh, saying not... Oh, interesting. So now that you're using them, every word is technically a label, but my application of them is to be derided. ...specific, singular thing, whereas an ideology can be many different things. It could be very generalized. So it depends on, of course, the phenomena that we're referring to. But again, I don't want to turn this into a debate. So, like, I say that on purpose because... What is, I don't what is a debate to you? A debate is, like, I don't know kind of wasting my time in a sense because we could be doing more productive things like you said feeding homeless or being out in real life or putting together presentations more formal fashions that last forever conversations go they they not a debate isn't a conversation nor is it mm -hmm. an argument but i do like having conversations in real life of course but just i'm just saying for the sake so of refresh my memory what is nihilism again Nihilism, I mean, it's talking about like the denial of sort of uh, objective standards in nature as a whole. Okay, cool. So we don't know. Um, could you got, you got solipsism for me in there? Yeah, solipsism. Um, and that is pretty much one's own mind is sure to exist. I could break it down as well in like Latin. Break, like break it down for word. me. Okay. Um... Well, solipsism, like I said, is one's own mind is sure to exist. So pretty much everything revolves around the self. It comes from like Latin solus, I think, which means alone, and ipsi, which means self. And you can look that up, and you can go to etymological dictionaries and find the roots to words as well. Um, Greek suffixes, prefixes, Latin prefixes, suffixes, and all that. Um, but and it's pretty late where I am. I don't know where it is with you, but honestly, I'm trying. Um, the it's like. 
you know, you, you only your mind is pretty much sure. Everything else outside of your own mind is unsure. And so there's no such thing as objective truth. Nothing about the world around us can be known. That's ultimately solipsism. And it's, it's a trait of both left brain and right brain imbalance. So you can look up right brain, left brain imbalance, left brain authoritarian type of type brain for the ruler. And right brain is very slave type of thinking where it's like, I'll just go with anything. Um, and there's uh, different ideologies and mental conditions that can take place in both sides. But regardless of like all the science and ideologies, and again, like you said, labels, we can understand just the concepts um, themselves. Because some people are going to, you know, obviously debate on these topics all day, all day long. It's... And certain things are always going to be debated. Other things should be known, such as the fact we own ourselves, you know, such as the fact that we have the ability to choose right versus wrong for ourselves, such as the fact that, you know, murder is wrong. And if you want to call it killing, regardless, I'm saying the intention, the the actual act. So uh, of taking someone's life, a form of theft, it's it's you have to break it down. And it's a tapestry of knowledge that must be looked at as one whole. Because there's too many aspects to this, I would expect someone to ask questions about it, as I did myself, mind you, right? Just as people be who become anarchists, they say, well, how will the world work without this, and what will happen about this? It takes a level of understanding to know how things actually will work. Because, you know, at first we all ask those questions, and those questions are natural. I'm saying the same thing for this. We ask those questions, and later on, as we explore it, we come to understand everything comes full circle. Uh, we I understand everything uh, in its whole. <laughs> Wait, uh, I don't hear you. It's because chat has kicked off a song instead. Okay. It's called Coping. Haha, ha, Copium. Do you know the emote on Twitch? We, we have a... Mem community member who made a song. You guys um, use Twitch someone. emotes? Are you guys even like in with the Twitch scene? <laughs> like, there's an emote called Copium. We know. You know? Okay. <laughs> I don't see it. Uh, I'm gonna go to bed anyways. I already made my case. People can check it out if they want. N-I-T-A dot o -N -E. Bye. <sighs> and he signed off a fucking ad. <laughs> like a good, like a good fucking capitalist he is. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Dude. He, kno fucking, he knows he, nothing. He, go he googled the definition of solipsism. He knew nothing. And then he just fucking goes off on this tangent. Just... Um, <sighs> okay, so... Um... Okay, so forgive me, but I'm going to prioritize. Hello. Uh, um... S Scotty boy. Okay, so yeah, there's the guy. Scotty boy. So there you go. Now you get to witness what we were talking about. That's at, at a certain point. I just like it. Like, yeah, I was like, why? Why am I bothering like any emotion into this? Fuck. Well, look, <clears throat> fuck you this. should never ever. I'm I'm preferencing this. Right? Yeah, I just never ever ever armchair psychology. Okay, you need multiple sessions with an individual before you can diagnose them with a mental disorder, and that is not what I am currently about to do. Even if it sounds like 100% what I'm about to do. <laughs> the level Machiavellianism. And the level of narcissism that was displayed, which are two of the three major traits of narcissistic personality disorder, right? The dark triad, it, it, you can't really see psychopathy like in a conversation like that, right? <clears throat>
but the Machiavellianism of like constantly having to plug his own shit and like, like seeing the relationship that he's creating here as transactional, like what can I get from this and like, how can I explain it in that such a way? And like the fact that like his worldview is challenged and he feels a need to like slip into new manipulation tactics as a means to avoid those conversations are like fucking hallmark signs of narcissistic personality disorder i mean and he didn't do it like once or twice like it was clearly woven into the very identity of who this fucking person was right you like, should see the the reason why i i asked kai to ask him about the glasses is because well check that vod that i sent you after the conversation ends yeah okay <clears throat> yeah. um yeah. he was very much hurt and offended <laughs> that was dude Honestly, dude, it's exactly what I expect from a cult member. There was a shit ton of gaslighting. There was a shit ton of pivoting. There was a shit ton of, like, you know, redefining of terminology that is fundamental to our everyday experience. It was, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, no, no, but to the narcissist, the world around them is malleable until it fits their inner narrative. Yeah. Right, so like none of that shit matters. I can just redefine all of those things until like it works with my own thing. That was that was that, now. Just imagine like an hour and a half of that. <laughs> straight up, that was fucking wild. Yeah, no, like straight up. He he just stri I, you know I will say though I do respect him just straight up biting the bullet. Like yeah, I didn't really come here to have conversation. Didn't really come here to debate. I just came to proselytize. Yeah. Although two seconds later, he said that he treated it as a conversation. So, uh, no, yeah. everything, nothing means, and nothing means anything to him. He is, he is perfectly able to criticize you on one hand and then do the exact same thing the other hand. Right. That is, it is just hallmark man, emotional manipulation. See, ironically Ooh, enough, like, it's honestly, the most, sorry, uh, as I'd say, it's like, ironically enough, it's the most authoritarian thing he can do. Yeah. I just want to say this to you if you're, you're like it looks like you're still here trying to pimp out your content cuckoo nut you if you don't get a handle on this you are going to find that that modality of like going through life of of, of treating people transactionally and and saying like just live in my own space and shit you are going you're going to find that you're going to have to hopscotch from relationship to relationship with people and your ability to network in in systems is going to be highly fucked up right like you're you're not going to be able to maintain long-term relationships with anyone if you continue down this path and it's really going to fucking hurt your life and it's going to hurt the people around you and if you have any care or any love which if you're a true narcissist you probably don't but if you do have those 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 any little bit of empathy in you, you need to run to a fucking therapist, and you need to tackle that shit. Because if you if you don't get a handle on it, you're you're gonna be 35, 40 years old, unsuccessful, and 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 hate the way you look in the mirror and blame the entire world around you for it. And it sounds like you're already fucking doing that. Yeah, dude, um, controlling controlling reality. Which is ultimately what you're trying to do with your ideology. It's authoritarian as shit. Stop it. <laughs> um, I, it's like meta authoritarian. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing is that like <laughs> what he's basically trying to do is he's trying to justify like freedom by like defining it as like the natural state of like reality, and then like essentially like casting anyone who doesn't follow that to the wind. You know. Also, I know Kai saw this, but like dead ass, like this kid has never done any fucking mutual aid, has never fucking helped a, a, a homeless person, has never he, done fucking he, meals on wheels his or wheels, a food banker. His wheels spun hard. His wheels spun hard on that one. Like you could, and then he just could, redefined himself. You right, could, that like yeah. classic narcissist. You could like, feel well, that's him scramble. Psychopathy. And, yeah, you could feel him scramble and then pivot. And then, you know, then double back and gaslight. I also found it funny how he was like so dismissive of both protest and like concerns about like social justice. Oh yeah, the like, fact that he rolled out. Oh, so you're an SJW? I thought like you know that's my thing. Is like I thought you're supposed to like care about people, dog, right? 
No, it's it, all it's it, all love. Well, but by by love, I actually mean something else. This is dude. This is that cult bullshit that they redefine the terminology on you. They don't mean love the same way we mean care, compassion, empathy, kindness, sympathy, right? Like this isn't the components of love that they mean. They mean love is an entirely different thing. Yeah. The same way that when Christians preach about um, liberty, they mean basically accepting Christ and doing what the church says. Yeah. It's, dude, I've seen this shit fucking plenty of times. Pissing in the lake. Chapo bully. Um, yeah, all Darvo all the time. Yeah, straight up. Um, what's Darvo? It's a, a it's an initialism. I can't always run it, but um, I'm sorry. It's actually an acronym. Um, it's a uh, fucking uh, deny, attack, reverse victim offender. So yeah, I thought you were going to bed. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's he didn't he didn't do it. Um, but you're doing it, and I'm not. You are, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Bavaria said, so my ex-girlfriend, um, that fucking, I just, I, you know, I, what's so funny is he was about to tear me a new one thinking that it was you. But the minute you informed him that, it, that, uh, we were two separate people. He like, he backed off right away. Um, I mean, I wish you'd have just owned it just because I don't think he has just, any idea. What just fuck it. I'm cat. I know. <laughs> I know. I know his positions well enough by now. Fuck it. <laughs> He's still shilling in voice chat, apparently. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm fucking saying. He's posting videos right now. Fuck. Um, fuck he it. said he was going to bed, but you know, hold on. Just gonna... I wish he talked shit about me. I wanted to know what he really thought about me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Chapo, it's kind of a long story, but um, cult member claims to be an anarchist and then shills cult. I think that pretty much encapsulates it. Um, I can give some input on that. The reason he fell back into personal jabs by calling Kai an SHW based on experience before I learned to how to reform my secondary psychopathy into something that teaches people how to prevent being manipulated is because when someone who is narcissistic manages to get caught slipping, they default to snarky little insults in an effort to try and one up the opposition in a conversation slash debate. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, he could, dude, he came out, the first words out of his mouth were snarky and sarcastic. Literally, the first words out of his mouth were snarky and sarcastic. Like he came in combative and then was like, it, chat was calling him out left and right on that shit. And like, he's like, well, I, I you know, if they think I'm being sarcastic, then I suppose, you know, it's like, dude, you don't hear it. Like that's, that's more concerning that you don't hear it. Like I'd be, I'd be happier with the gaslighting, but if you really don't hear this, that's even more concerning. Like that's that's a level of uh, unawareness <laughs> that's even scarier. Um, and yeah, fucking Swedes had run it through the uh, the bite model. Um, fucking for like it, bite model is for authoritarian control, influence, thought reform, brainwashing, and control. Basically, um, has a lot to do with human trafficking and shit like that too. Um, and, but yeah, you could run you could run him through the bite model pretty uh, extensively. Um, it's behavior, uh, behavior, information, uh, thought, and enforcement. I think. Um, Something to that effect. Yeah. Uh, no. No. So, um, shit. Um, emotional control. Emotional control. The E is emotional. Yeah. Rev just right there with me. Emotional. Um, yeah. It's a. It's it's emotional. Um, yeah. It, it, it's it's one of those things and yeah you, i just want to send oh sorry no go ahead i just want to send this guy with like professor sam vaknan videos at this point do it like <laughs> hey this is your wheelhouse cuz i'm just i'm like i'm just throwing one in voice chat right uh Matt. here here's 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 a good one for you buddy right tag like the, the myth of him. the fearless psycho Ta tag right? him tag him on it too okay all right yeah hold on let me edit that um 
really hope he grows out of this. I don't. No, you don't grow out of this. No, this you is all, no. This is something you. This is like alcoholism. You are this, and you learn to control it and maintain it and deal with it. You learn stratagems. It's it's to be a self aware psychopath is an incredibly rare thing. Um, it is. It has one of the worst fucking uh, efficacy rates in terms of treatment. It's very unlikely that you can ever cure yourself of, of a narcissistic personality disorder. He's he's essentially just a danger to society. Fun. Well, you know what? He seems pretty ineffectual. So <laughs> <laughs> he's an he's an ineffective psychopath. Um, yeah, no, I, I'll I'll take that. Fuck it. Most psychopaths are. It's very rare that psychopaths are successful. Um, but yeah, that's this isn't something you 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 care. This is just might just be shelter are. though. If he goes out and does some things, maybe it'll clear up a little. I no, mean, that's the hope. No, 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 no. These these tendencies are no. Yeah, this is this isn't touch the, nonsense. This isn't a touch grass situation. This is a for the love of God, don't go touch grass because I don't want you to be exposed to somebody who might be touching grass situation. Yeah, yeah. The, the issue with the psychopath, right, is that they have constructed an inner the, the narcissist. I mean, has constructed an inner world narrative, right? Um, and so once they have this inner world narrative, like real amounts of uh, introspection are essentially impossible until you can break the inner world narrative, right? And so when you're dealing with a patient that has NPD, right, it's incredibly difficult because they're like gaslighting and manipulation is is literally ingrained to who they are as a person right any challenges to their world narrative immediately requires them to to change that back to the person this is why kai is like wow you're really good at gaslighting and manipulation right it's not because he's talented at it and he's choosing to do it it's because that is literally his mode of being in the world he gaslights and manipulates every single person he comes into contact with and likely has an inability to even view his own inner his own inner thoughts and feelings and instead constructs a world narrative and then uses those as defense tactics so that his inner world narrative is never challenged and that nothing is ever changed inside where he is where he is either a special victim or that he is greater and grander than the people. And if he is challenged intellectually in some capacity, you see him revert, right? He reverts from an intellectual conversation when challenged intellectually to like, oh, I'm just memeing. I'm just trolling. I'm just having fun, right? It's not because he's not passionate about these, these, these topics. It's because if I can say I'm just memeing and trolling and having fun, then the real reason that I'm not intellectually butting heads with you um, and the real reason that I'm not like, you know, so much better at you than this isn't because I'm not smarter than you, isn't because I'm not better than you, it's because I'm not really trying. It's because I'm I'm just having fun with this, right? And so that that's where that comes in is that he's still preserving the, the fact that he's special and smarter and better than Kai could ever hope to be but the fact that Kai's called him out on his bullshit just means that, oh, we're just having fun. We're, just, we're this is all love, man. Yeah, it's, it's, this is, this is not, this isn't your typical bad faith actor that we deal with. Honestly, y'all just got exposed to somebody who really is a mess. Like th these are the kind of people that fuck up a, 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 a program, a project, right? You're working on something, you're working on some mutual aid. This is the kind of person who can like make that a problem. Um, this isn't just a bad faith actor. This isn't just somebody who's like, oh, for the lulls sort of shit, right? Like, he legitimately is fucked. Um, and as Cup Cupcake was pointing out, um, apparently his family is also, like, this way. Um, apparently, like, they're in on the cult. So, like, there's a self-reinforcing mechanism going on in his household. Where do you chatters find these people? Um, uh, so, yeah, um, sorry to take over. I just wanted to like, get no, the no, that's, that's out. fine. Um, yeah. Uh, what type of cult? Um, basically, um, oh God, 
Yeah, basically, like, I mean, most people would identify it as new age, though they make the distinction. It's a high, uh, uh, it's basically a bunch of people that believe in this sort of multidimensional space and that uh, the third dimensional realm of Earth is essentially a spiritual trap perpetrated upon us by a set of higher dimensional entities. Um, and that the um, the controllers of this realm are in touch with what some would identify as demonic entities, but are actually higher dimensional beings who utilize fear and hate, since they uh, they uh, contain lower vibrational frequencies that then trap your spirit essence in this realm. And that if you only learn to elevate your uh, your essence, utilizing higher dimensional frequencies that are associated with such things as love, though by love they don't mean love the same way we mean love, but if you use uh, these higher dimensional frequencies that are associated with things such as love, that you can escape this trap. Yeah. This is... I about, why are you so hung up on the nails? Oh, is there somebody who gives a shit about the nails? It's still Cybot. The same dude. Oh. Introspective penguin. Holy shit. Yeah, it's it's like that. It's like that. Yeah. Um Also, hey Kez. Oh fuck. Nah, I'm good. I swear to where do you f I'm good. Where do you I'm fucking I seriously would want to know how do you where do you find these people? How do you <laughs> How, how long do you all just scroll sweet, through Twitch? Sweet just, just, fucking... sweet just replies to all of that and goes, sounds like capitalism to me. Yeah. Um, it's bullshit. Yeah, of course it is. Um, if you watch the nine hour Mark Passio video, it's because you weren't allowed to leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I just, you sweet. know, yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing fucking pog right now, cuz although I'm tired of shit, this I mean, fuck. You need to okay, Kevs. Do me a favor. When this stream ends, watch the vod. You just gotta you watch the vod. It. Yeah, Kez, it's fucking weird as shit. And then you gotta like, it's broken into two pieces, Kez. It, we're talking about yeah. one dude in particular. You're gonna want to listen to the first part of the conversation, but he comes back back for a second part that is way more revealing than the first part, really. Yeah, yeah. Skip the skip the skip like the like the what was it like 40 40 some odd minutes where we just like shout on hassan look for when i join the call and then just skip ahead a little bit you'll yeah. see yeah because like it's yeah it's good memes it's good content um <laughs> okay so i <laughs> just that was dude that was i didn't i didn't plan on like talking to somebody of that caliber of um how would I describe that? Maligned personalities. <laughs> uh, that that was. Um, what's what's the complete like uh, couched language for describing somebody like that, Scott? What do you mean? Like if I like, um, I don't want to say he's fucked up in the head, but he clearly has some uh, um, messed up disorder of some sort. Like how how do I just describe that in like one or two words? Like what is that? that I just interacted I mean, with. I mean, it, that yeah. is, that is, in, that's a, that's very debatable. There's actually a lot of conversations about medicalization and, and psychiatrists and like that, that is, there's not really like a, a, a right. You could say neurodivergent. Sure. That's fine. But like you get, you start getting into the, like the, 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 the social workers and the counselors and the psychiatrists and the psychologists all have different shit that they want and they're all arguing different things in that regard there really isn't an appropriate term okay so i'm just gonna go with brainwashed cult member <laughs> um, i mean neurodivergence a good one yeah i liked mine better um I, mean, I, I am with wither here delusional is probably like the best way to roll with it a dysfunctional personality might i i, I could get behind that zippy yeah. Um, can we just call? Well, him it might be functional. This so that's what the problem with all of these, right? Like uh, delusional. Yeah, we're terms. we're rating out. None of this matters. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, none of this fucking matters at this point. Um, and yeah, Pookie, if you just want to call him a prick, I could get behind that as well. Um, yeah, now that is accurate. Yeah, that one's actually accurate. Um, so yeah, Lost all works too. Leave your leave your politics at the door. Um, I'll tell you right now. Um, like a few of us are mods on public. 
if you fucking stir the pot on public, you'll just catch a ban. Like, oh, yeah. No, fuck. Uh, public is good people. Apolitical. Fucking yeah. chill. Relax. Leave it. This is... If, if you guys can't leave the politics talk, ditch and go to another channel. Yeah, do not do not follow this raid out if you can't leave the politics and the drama. Public is, I, I love public, and but I am a mod on, on their channel and I will ban your ass, right? Like I, I will fucking just ban hammer you if you s just even start some shit on public's channel. So there's your fair warning. Everybody, catch you on Monday if you're hanging out for bad movie night. That'll be in a little bit on the Discord server. Love y'all. We are clear.